After dying the boy's soul entered another body to be reborn. But this body was sick and ill. Looking at the glamorous world in front of him the boy couldn't help but sigh. Hearing the boy's praise for this world an old man appeared what? This world is so beautiful ha ha ha. Young man your understanding of this world is still very shallow. The old man took a deep breath. Calmly looked at the boy and continued in this world there are not only people. There are ghosts and immortals and there are even more terrible presences. That's the devil before he could finish speaking. The old man's eyes turned red his face purple. His mouth gaping trying to swallow the boy. But the boy had gone through many horrors so he was not afraid. He bluntly poked the old man's eyes with two fingers. While his mouth did not forget to scold who are you fooling. Immediately after that intense pain came. He opened his eyes wide his slender fingers left two imprints on the wall. He was in so much pain that he gasped and sat up. It hurts so bad looking up with a sigh. Realizing that it was just a dream. Turns out it was just a dream there are no ghosts or monsters. It's nonsense I've been transported to this world for three days now. But I still don't know what this world looks like. What I do know for sure is that I have a very weak body. And it seems my family is also poor. Although he did not believe this world really had ghosts and gods. This was the third day since his rebirth. And he was still confused about the world he was in. He only knew that his soul had entered the body of a sick child. And the family circumstances were also poor. With no decent clothes. If this continues he will die of illness or starvation. He dragged his heavy trembling body to the window to look out at the world. Seeing his reflection in the mirror he realized his current appearance looked normal. Suddenly he realized something was wrong. Because ancient windows only had paper not glass. No that's not right this world doesn't have glass on paper windows. After all who was in the window he panicked and suddenly stepped back. Before he could react the figure in the window turned into a ferocious ghost pouncing to attack him. A ghost broke through the window and rushed to attack the boy. He panicked and retreated but the opponent was lightning fast. One hand gripped his neck tightly only then did he realize this world really had ghosts. So this world really has ghosts and they have terrifying power so that he can't escape. Just a simple stranglehold but it easily lifted him up. Having just arrived in this world and about to die again do I really have to die like this the ferocious ghost opened its mouth wide ready to swallow its prey. The choked boy's tears streamed down his face. And blood kept pouring from his nose. Unexpectedly having just been reborn for a few days and having to die again. Useless tears rolled down his cheeks. Although very unwilling with this weak body he could do nothing. Only waiting for death that was slowly approaching. Silently thinking don't in his heart as it was about to put him in its mouth the old creaky door was kicked open. There was just a loud bang. Followed by curses and a heavy punch straight to the ghost's face. Turning it into black smoke that disappeared. The boy was also thrown outside because of that. Glancing around he found no trace of the ghost the ghost was gone at that moment a muscular man appeared before him. With fists as big as sandbags and a large scar on the bridge of his nose. His hand still smoking kid. Are you okay the boy had just escaped death. His mind was still in turmoil but seeing the man defeat the ghost with one punch shocked him even more. His eyes bulged as he kept looking at the man. He thought to himself one punch kills ghosts. Is it martial arts hearing the commotion. His parents hurriedly left their farm work and ran home. As soon as they entered the house they kept calling their son NHINHAC. Are you okay son you scared me so much. Seeing him safe and sound their hearts relaxed. Seeing them he quickly called out mom dad. The family of three then hugged each other crying. He said mom dad I am fine his mother kept crying loudly from worrying too much. That's good I was so scared to death his father also kept nodding it's good to be fine. It's good to be fine the man from earlier seeing this scene turned to look at them and said don't worry. It was just a small ghost actually as long as the kid is brave enough. It can't do anything to him. Later he found out the man who saved his life was actually his uncle. Who was currently the sect leader in Tan Ha Town. NHI Nyak's father led him to his uncle and started introducing NHI NHAC. This is your uncle Min working in Tan Ha Town. He's very capable you know NHI NHAC obediently said thank you his mother still couldn't help but scold this kid is really. Meeting such a big ghost yet not knowing to tell his parents. This time thanks to Aunt Luke next door who knows a lot. Seeing the boy's unhealthy complexion she reminded them. 
His worried father then invited Uncle Min home. Otherwise, the boy would have suffered terribly from the ghost. He was also very curious why his uncle was so powerful. Able to destroy the ghost with one punch. Uncle Min looked at him satisfied that was just a small ghost. Just focus your inner strength into your fist and you can defeat it. He didn't understand much but knew that without his uncle's timely appearance, his life would have been gone. He realized that to survive in this world of ghosts and monsters, he had to learn ghost slaying skills. Seeing his uncle about to leave, he knelt down, Uncle. Please teach me martial arts. The boy's sudden action greatly surprised his uncle. Because practicing martial arts was extremely arduous. Ordinary people could hardly endure it, let alone a frail child. But seeing his determined nephew, he decided to give the boy a hand, introducing him as a disciple to the Li Diang Bang sect in Tan Ha Town. Martial arts were the secret teachings of the sects. Teaching outsiders would violate the Zhang Hu Code and could even result in expulsion. Even the Li Diang Bang sect leader was no exception. However, he had three introductory quotas each year. He could nominate the boy as a disciple. But practicing martial arts was really arduous, always at risk of death. His uncle told the boy to discuss carefully with his family before deciding. Hearing her son wanted to practice martial arts, his mother strongly opposed. She knew Li Diang Bang was a vicious place. As Tu Min's younger brother had been beaten to death there, she didn't want to witness another loved one pass away again. Moreover, he was her only child. His father hurriedly comforted her, Dear, don't be too sad. In this chaotic society full of ghosts and monsters, Although arduous martial arts allow self defense, our son has grown up, he has his own thoughts. As his parents, we should support our child. Although very reluctant, his mother reluctantly nodded in agreement. The boy lay alone on the bed, tossing and turning, unable to sleep. He didn't expect to be transported to this chaotic world of ghosts and gods. But since heaven had given him a chance to live again, he had to try his best to survive. He was determined to seize this opportunity as a disciple. Diligently practice martial arts to destroy all evil spirits. His fists glowed faintly blue again. The next moment, a mysterious system appeared. Congratulations, host, for successfully activating the soul power system. The boy looked at the transparent attributes appearing before him speed, strength, physique, martial arts. Soul power behind them were plus signs. The consecutive numbers confused him. He tried clicking on soul power, but the system didn't change. Next, he clicked on the plus sign behind strength. The soul power number decreased from 15 to 14. Strength increased from 025 to 026. He suddenly felt a strange energy flowing through his chest. He realized that if strength could increase, so could speed and physique. He clicked on the two remaining attributes in turn. His sickly body suddenly overflowed with vitality. Light as a feather looking at the remaining soul power. He guessed it was absorbed by the system from the destroyed ghost. To test this hypothesis, he was eager to find an opportunity to experiment. The next morning, the sunshine was brighter than ever. He got up early, packed his luggage, and prepared to head to Tan Ha Town. His parents stuffed the last of their money into his hands. We can only help you this far, son. The rest you have to walk on your own. He reluctantly embraced his parents, then set off to meet his uncle. When he arrived, two young friends were already waiting. His uncle hurriedly introduced him as young master Tu Lap. The shabby boy was Zhang Kwok Nia. Seeing everyone had gathered, his uncle immediately led the group on the road. Along the way were winding roads, steep mountain cliffs, and small streams. The young master was used to a luxurious life, so after a few miles he was panting heavily. In contrast, the two country boys, despite being drenched in sweat, still walked steadily. His uncle reluctantly said they had to try a little harder because this road was often patrolled by the Kai Do Tri bandits. Hearing Kai Do Tri, the boy shuddered as he had heard villagers talk about them. Uncle Min carried the young master and said, We have to run on this road. Keep up after half a shichin of full speed running. They finally escaped the bandits' patrol area. The three boys collapsed on the ground, panting heavily while resting. Two NHAC asked his uncle about martial arts knowledge. Seeing the boy's interest, his uncle began explaining from the basics. Martial arts are divided into external training and internal cultivation. External training strengthens muscles and bones, internal cultivation nurtures the viscera. After that, as the qi realm, once qi is generated, strength will increase exponentially. Before he could finish speaking, ha, 
With a shout, his uncle spat out a blue flame from his fist. Inner strength surged, strength exploded, creating a tremendous force that blew two NHAC far away. His uncle said, just emitting such aura, small ghosts would be blown away instantly. His uncle's formidable power stunned the boy. He immediately asked what level of martial arts his uncle had attained. His uncle confidently told the kids, I am only at the internal cultivation realm now. Not yet a supreme expert. Hearing this, the boy's eyes widened. If internal cultivation was already so formidable, the Qi realm must surely be grand internal skill. After three days and two nights of continuous polishing, the group finally arrived at the bustling Tan Ha town. They were on their way to the Li Diang Bang. Coincidentally, they heard someone was about to be beheaded in public. It was the vicious Kai No of the Kai Do Tri bandits. Uncle Min felt very surprised. Because Kai No's strength was surely not ordinary. How could he be captured so easily? The boy thought if killing ghosts could increase soul power, surely killing the villain would too. Although it was just his own baseless guess, he still wanted to try it out. He unhesitatingly suggested to Uncle Min that they should go out and broaden their knowledge. Uncle Min had a similar intention. On the execution stand was a long bearded man holding a huge blade. His appearance was handsome and dignified, like the reincarnation of Guan Yu, explaining to the people this villain dared to rob Lady Li Pawn Shop and was captured on the scene by Li Er Gongzi. Lady Li Pawn Shop encountered the hero Li Er Gongzi. It was this scoundrel's bad luck. The Kai Do try kill and set fires. Their heinous crimes demand extermination long ago. The watching crowd sang praises enthusiastically, cheering to behead the villain quickly. The white haired old man with long beard saw the execution time had arrived. He raised the precious blade ready to send the criminal to the king of hell. Unexpectedly, the villain didn't care at all. Before his death, he still sneered mockingly, Ha ha ha, you can behead me. Before he finished speaking, the mons muscles started bulging. His arms bulged with green veins like a maddened elephant. Eyes shining wildly, mouth grinning insanely. The criminal ground his teeth. His powerful body continuously erupted with tremendous energy. Enough to tear apart the sturdy ropes. The frightened crowd feared the villain was about to escape and fled in panic. But the white haired old man remained calm, slowly raising the blade, saying, Karmic debt has owners. My duty is to follow orders. You offended the wrong person. Then, with one slash, the world fell silent. The noisy crowd earlier stopped to watch. The bloody scene before their eyes satisfied them. The old Mont's performance made Min Tu shudder. He didn't dare imagine if it was himself a young demon clan master who would be beheaded like that. The lucky boy watched the head fall down. Eyes wide open in surprise, suppressing the horror in his heart, then slowly opened the system. The soul power number that appeared made his eyes dazzled. It increased straight by 800 points, killing small ghosts only gained 15 soul power points. But this Kai No had over 800 points. If he guessed correctly, the amount of soul power the system absorbed depended on the target's strength. He was very curious and asked his uncle about Kai No's strength. Wanting to know how strong 800 soul power points were. Does Uncle Min know the martial arts strength of this Go Luang? His uncle had a serious look. Thought for a while then said that guy. I heard three years ago the Iron Fist Go Luang had broken through external training entering internal cultivation. His strength now is probably greater than mine. Hearing this the young master's jaw dropped in shock. Stronger than uncle then the three Kai no leaders of Kai Do Tri must be invincible. His uncle smiled martial arts have no limits. Hurry the sect entrance exam is about to start. Don't be late for the important event. Hearing exam 2 lap panicked again as he had never passed any exams relying on his own abilities since childhood. This time with no help. He would surely fail but his uncle told him not to worry. Because he had arranged it with the person in charge already. As long as the three kids did all right on the exam it was fine. But the official examiner wanted to make things difficult. So he made the test twice as hard as expected Uncle Min was trustworthy. Making the young master happy to have a free pass. Only two NHAC felt something was wrong. He still had doubts about some things. Everyone went from the West District to the North District. Admiring the prosperity everywhere. Talking about the Great Tang Dynasty's rule. The Li Diang Bang was located in the center of the North District. Shortly after they arrived at the exam site. 
Uncle Min left the three kids at the exam site, then went to meet the examiner alone. Right after Uncle left, groups of examinees flocked in, disrupting the quiet atmosphere. The boy saw a beautiful girl, so he went over to greet her. Are you also here for the exam? But the girl seemed cold. The girl coldly ignored him. Just as he was trying to handle the awkward situation, Uncle Min timely appeared to the rescue. Uncle approached with an awkward expression. The information gathering earlier probably didn't go too smoothly. Uncle felt very guilty breaking the bad news to everyone. The original examiner suddenly had something come up, and was replaced by someone who had a grudge against me. Still, Uncle was assured the kids would be fine, because with Uncle here, the man wouldn't dare do anything to them. But the boy had already sensed the serious problem. If he knew they were acquainted with Uncle Min, he would definitely deliberately make things difficult. While thinking of solutions, a shrill voice suddenly shouted from behind. Manager Zhang is here. Everyone immediately moved aside after the barking stopped. Three sinister-looking men appeared. It was none other than Zhang Ba Guan, the logistics manager of Li Diang Bang. Seeing Min Tu, he flared up because Uncle had taken the harbor manager position from him. That's why he now had to be in this lowly position to not affect the main issue. Zhang Ba immediately announced the start of the exam. Knowing there were three examinees introduced by Min Tu, he decided to get revenge. He pointed at the 100 jin and 50 jin heavy rocks and said, "Whoever could lift and walk 10 steps with them passed this round." Hearing this, Min Tu pointed at Zhang Ba nose and scolded Zhang Ba. Last time, my son could barely lift 40 kilograms. Using the standard for formal sect disciples is going too far. Zhang Ba stroked his beard, face cold as ice protector Lu Duang once said, "Better few, but good." I am responsible to the sect. Do you have any objections? Min Tu was grinding his teeth furiously. He didn't expect the other to use the elder's words to pressure him. He could no longer avoid it, having to lift the 100 Jin rock. Tu Lap hugged Min Tu, bawling. Seeing his scheme succeed, Zhang Ba continued shouting, "Want to take the exam? Then take it. If not, then scram." Min Tu was being bullied by the opponent, but couldn't do anything. His fists clenched tightly, about to explode. When everyone was at an impasse, a sturdy young man appeared. Let me try, Uncle Min. Tu N H A C Tu Lap and Min Tu all turned around and saw it was the shabby boy who came with them. He walked towards the rock, his arms bulging, green veins ready to punch a cow to death. He gripped the 100 Jin rock tightly. His muscles tensed and strained painfully, but he still used his strength to lift the heavy rock. From one to ten, he walked ten steps carrying the heavy rock. Zhang Ba expression was unfathomable. Thinking this brat has some skills, although the movements were crude, he still passed this round. You pass, go stand over there. Seeing the boy pass, everyone wanted to try too, but the examiner hurriedly stopped them, telling them to take the exam in order. Not to be noisy, a series of examinees after that tried their best, but no one could lift it. The examiner started losing patience, telling those who failed to move aside for others to try. Two lap had no choice but to surrender, seeing only one person could lift the rock. Zhang Ba wanted to quickly end this and go home to cook for his wife, but just as he was about to order the rock removed, a suicidal examinee stopped him. Wait, I want to try. Two N H A C stepped out from the crowd. He emitted the aura of a hungry tiger. In front of the 100 Jin rock, he pondered. He had painstakingly come to Tan Ha Town to learn martial arts. No matter what, he had to win this exam. He unhesitatingly opened the system, planning to use all his soul power to increase his strength points. But when all attributes reached 05, the plus signs disappeared. That meant he had reached the current maximum limit. Then the only way was to risk it all. He gripped the rock, his bulging veins even more terrifying than the shabby boys. A tremendous strength suddenly surged through his body. Before everyone's shocked eyes, he carried the huge rock, walking ten steps with each step nearly a meter long. Putting the rock down, his tremendous power cracked the ground. Thanks to the soul power system, he passed this round successfully. For the first time, he felt the joy of victory. Although Zhang Ba had increased the difficulty for revenge, two disciples of his enemy still passed. He angrily turned to his subordinate Wang Jian, "Take them away!" After that, Zhang Ba left, telling them to quickly follow Wang Jian. Wang Jian took them to the teaching manager Qian Ming. He couldn't help but wonder, "Elder brother Wang, did you make a mistake?" 
Why only these two Wang Jian shouted don't ask what you should nt. Mind your own business it's always been like this. He didn't let them register as disciples but directly arranged them as the lowest handymen. After registration the soldier led the two to the HR department for training. First the two new recruits had to introduce themselves. The two stood straight hands cupped junior disciple Zhang Kwok Nia. From Bok Tu village requests to join Li Diang Bang. Junior disciple Bok Tu Nhac from Van Deep village. Requests to join Li Diang Bang. After the two new recruits introduced themselves, the scarred soldier began teaching them the sex rules. He warned if they violated the rules they would not only bring disaster upon themselves but also affect their families. Next he explained the organizational structure of Li Diang Bang. Disciples were divided into outer and inner disciples. Initially they would be outer disciples only demoted to handymen if they committed a major offense. Uncle Bak and Gao thought they must have done something wrong to start off as handymen. Seeing the two pitiful kids he told them they still had a chance to be promoted if they did well. Bok Tu Nhac didn't care about promotion. He only asked if handymen could learn martial arts. Uncle Bak and Gao said Li Diang Bang valued martial arts culture highly. Anyone could apply but with this much work it would be hard to find time. The two didn't care at all about the cleaning. They applied to learn martial arts this was the first time he saw disciples so enthusiastic so he agreed to help them apply. But they had to finish work first. A few days later the two worked hard. But to learn martial arts even greater hardships must be endured. Finally they received good news. That night Bok Tu Nhac tossed and turned. Eagerly anticipating witnessing the martial arts secrets. The realm that the four camp lords of Kai Do Tri had nearly attained. And the one who could capture the four camp lords was Lu Gongzi. There was also Zhang Ba who mentioned Lu Duang Bang sect leader. They were all stronger than Min Tu. He believed with the soul power system support. He could surpass them. For now he had to strive to become an inner disciple. The next morning before sunrise. The two ran to the martial arts field. But when they arrived panting. They saw a handsome young man with eyes closed in horse stance. Brow furrowed alone in the cold wind. The young man practiced devotedly. The handsome young man remained calm. But his body shuddered from the cold. Zhang Kwok Nia was about to approach and ask but was stopped by the boy. His intuition sensed the young man's motions contained martial secrets. The two immediately turned around to imitate those motions. But no matter what they did they couldn't attain his state. Clearly his motions were not deliberately posing but as if something inside was controlling his body. The two closed their eyes to adjust their breathing and feel the changes in their bodies. But after half a shichin there was still no result. Just then the young man opened his eyes. Wiped his sweat then approached. You won't succeed practicing like this. You two are new disciples right? I am Tan Thu Bin he smiled saying I am practicing Hot Tan. You have to practice meditation stances first before Hot Tan. Hearing he had high level martial arts. 2 Nhac promptly introduced himself and asked for guidance. Not only did Thu Bin not refuse he enthusiastically explained the essence of Hot Tan. The key to meditation stances is the word Ding. Ding doesn't mean standing motionless. But spurring the inner strength to move within the body. Training the physique to enhance blood and chi. He simply extended his palm. Suddenly a faint blue aura erupted. Then he fully unleashed a few punches in a stance. He could clearly feel his strength increase. Every martial arts move was swift and powerful. Mightily imposing Thu Bin said his foundations were still weak. Not qualified to teach yet he advised them to ask their master to teach. Because their master's meditation stances were consummate able to correct Chi from afar. The two listened with mouths agape. Not expecting there were so many mysteries in martial arts. After thanking him the two ran to the martial arts camp. Although Thu Bin said they didn't learn anything. Among the disciples perhaps no one was better than him. While the two were engrossed watching the seniors practice suddenly a shout rang out Master Hong Kuang as here Bok Tu Nhac and Zhang Kwok Nia turned towards the shout. Following the greetings was a fat man smiling merrily. It was the fat uncle who came with Zhang Ba on exam day. The two looked at each other worriedly. Master Hong stood before the students. Asking those who hadn't learned meditation stances to leave the line. He arranged the new recruits in a line and carefully explained relevant knowledge. 
The fat uncle clenched his fists tightly, standing firmly as his whole body emitted a faint blue glow. Meditation stances are the basic external training of our sect. However, foundations are very important. It helps you strengthen blood and chi. Unify inner strength before he finished speaking. A tremendous power erupted from within him. His fat round body transformed into rippling muscles, like a fierce beast emitting a hint of killing intent. The two were stunned this was just basic meditation stances yet already so formidable. Thu Bin's stillness power must be much more terrifying. After the demo for the new recruits, he proceeded to transmit inner strength to the students. A young man frowned worriedly because this was the third time he received inner strength transmission. If he failed again, he would be demoted to a handyman disciple. The faint blue aura blazed in the fat uncle's hand. He lightly struck the young man's chest, transmitting inner power into his body. The young man collapsed, trembling nonstop. His body's reaction to the change in inner power. Next was Zhang Kuak Nia and Bak Tu Nyak's turn. The fat uncle immediately looked at them disdainfully. Aren't you the talents recommended by two men? Manager Zhang wanted me to take good care of you without waiting for them to react. He doubled his inner power and struck their chests forcefully. The two were blasted away, tumbling to the ground. He excitedly warned, "Remember, when doing meditation stances, you must stand motionless. Sweat must condense into beads. This is the entry criteria for meditation stances." The rest coordinate with the inner strength I transmit to practice the stances. Pass the 10-day initiation to become inner disciples. 30 days for outer disciples. 30 days still not initiated will become useless disciples like those two. Go be handyman. Having said that, he left satisfied. New disciples also had rules. Passing the 10-day threshold became inner disciples. 30 days outer disciples. The rest became the lowest handyman. Having absorbed too much inner power, their frail bodies struggled to adapt, lying limp for half a shichen before breathing normally again. The boy felt a force moving within him, blood and chi circulating according to the meditation stance. His palms emitted faint rustling blue aura. Suddenly, the system window automatically appeared. He was overjoyed. This meant as long as he trained martial arts reaching a certain level, he could use soul power to increase his strength. He dragged himself up, determined to practice meditation stances to pass the threshold as soon as possible. The next morning, he got up very early to practice before work. He remembered Thu Bin's words. The essence of meditation stances was the word Ding, not stiff stillness, but stimulating inner chi circulation within the body, training the physique, circulating blood and chi to enhance the body. Zhang Kuak Nia came over, saying, "Manager Qian is looking for us." Probably to instruct us on handyman matters, the two hurriedly ran to the scarred soldier's office. He casually asked if they had any backers in Li Dying Bang. Though unclear of his intention, the two still answered they were introduced by Uncle Min. Hearing that he had a pensive expression, then it's easy someone wants you two out of here to another branch. But using two Min's name, I can help you stay. The condition is five liang of silver. Seeing they were poor. He said three liang would do, but two nhac coldly refused. They didn't have that much money. Manager Qian needn't make things difficult. Just arrange it however you want. He had no choice but normal arrangements. Zhang Kuak Nia was dispatched to the Tui Wei flower boat, while two nhac to the Min Chao restaurant. Then he told them to pack up. People would come get them. The two were sad to part ways. Zhang Kuak Nia thought this must be Zhang Ba doing. Or they would have stayed safely, but two nhac didn't think so. He had heard many people talk about the greed and lust of that scarred soldier. He often abused his position to extort money from disciples to escape his control. He decided he could only rely on himself. Evening at the Li Diang Bang Pier was still bustling with boats. On the river, countless boats came and went busily. Disciple Duong Lu Hua was sent to hand over the two. After a while, the Tui Wei flower boat arrived. Lu disciple respectfully greeted the lady on board. This is the handyman disciple assigned to you, Senior Zhang Kuak Nia. The beauty before them was the owner of the Tui Wei flower boat, Wa Vo Kuyet. Her appearance gave two nhac a chill. Zhang Kuak Nia was immediately surrounded by a group of beautiful girls. After taking him away, Lu disciple prepared to take two nhac to the Min Chao restaurant. Along the way, he advised him. Even as a handyman, he had a bright future. 
Because the Min Chao owner also started out as a lowly disciple. Currently, the restaurant was very popular, with long lines of guests waiting to enter. The Min Chao Tavern was still packed with guests. First time guests would receive a complimentary specialty dish. Lu Disciple brought the boy into the noisy tavern. The splendor around dazed him. Seeing them, two waiters immediately came to greet. Lu Disciple said the boss sent him then left. The waiter named Lin Yi Kao was in charge of pouring drinks, making tea for the guests. He led the boy running around the tavern, then took him to where the new disciples worked, planning to give him a special gift. Lin Yi Kao slowly pulled the curtain open. Inside was a chaotic scene. You just got here, so should rest first, but there's too much work. So do your best. The tavern gradually emptied with just a few people left cleaning up. 2 NHAC was busy in the kitchen until late. He still had to wash piles of dishes for over two shichens. Dragging his tired body back to the Van Long dormitory, his roommate was snoring loudly. Unable to sleep, he decided to practice meditation stances. He closed his eyes, standing firmly, regulating his breath. He suddenly felt a circulation of qi and blood. He tried to adjust the circulation speed with his breath. This was an extremely tiring process. Following the inner qi circulation rhythm, Sweat on his body started condensing as if coming alive. This was the sign of reaching the first threshold in meditation stances. In meditation, his mind was like a calm lake, with continuous dripping sounds. As he slowly opened his eyes, the lake in his mind started swirling rapidly, forming an energy sphere, then quickly absorbed by his body, transforming into a smooth qi flow. He immediately felt the change in his body. He nervously opened the system. The meditation stances martial arts showed past threshold, unable to increase to reach threshold, but could increase. He was overjoyed to pass the first threshold in just five days. Learning this fast must have reached the education level. With the system support, it was even more perfect. He unhesitatingly clicked increase. Immediately, a thin yet powerfully strange blue aura erupted around his body. Under its control, his chi and blood circulated rapidly. He clearly felt his physique continuously increasing. The Soul Power System accelerated martial arts training progress, equivalent to skipping tortuous training time. He felt his whole body full of strength, clearly much stronger than before. Opening the system again not only had his basic attributes increased greatly, but his meditation stances reached minor success, what others took three to five years to achieve. He only needed an instant. He grinned from ear to ear. Reaching minor success in meditation stances not only increased strength but also unlocked many surprising secrets. He was very curious about the effects when meditation stances reached the great success stage. Without hesitation, he spent 400 soul power points to upgrade. Now he was like undergoing arduous day and night training. His basic attributes were continuously enhanced repeatedly. The feeling of overflowing strength made him elated. Finally, he understood the joy on the martial arts path felt by predecessors. According to Li Diang Bang rules, handyman disciples reaching minor success could apply to learn self-defense martial arts. But he had now reached the great success stage—a level others took three to five years to achieve. Anyone hearing this would be suspicious. Tall trees attract wind like a hidden dragon. To ensure safety, he decided to keep the secret. The next stage of meditation was consummate, but he lacked soul power points to upgrade. Though unable to learn martial arts, gathering soul power was easy by absorbing it from corpses and dead objects. So he applied to be transferred to the slaughterhouse. The man before him was Tun Nong, in charge of the kitchen. Not only was he amiable, but his butcher skills were also extremely superb. As he was once a top expert, but got injured and had to work behind the scenes. He was very happy to have a helper. Every morning he went to the market to buy ingredients. Very glad to have help. He wanted the boy to come along, but was afraid it would affect his work having to get up early. The boy said he could get up early and wanted to come learn. Seeing his sincerity, Uncle Tun reluctantly nodded. Early next morning, the sky was still dark. The cold wind howling to NHAC ran to meet Tun Nong at the meeting point. He was already prepared, thinking the boy was joking, not expecting him to really come. After half an hour, they arrived at the slaughterhouse. The pig's pitiful squeals triggered the boy's system to start absorbing soul power, gaining a total of 34 points. After Uncle Tun loaded the meat onto the cart, they headed back, 
With extra help work efficiency increased significantly. He felt confused how such a smart, capable boy ended up a handyman disciple. Upon hearing the truth, he sighed feeling it was better at Min Chao. With less grievances and infighting seeing him sad. The boy asked if he could come to the slaughterhouse with uncle tomorrow too. He readily nodded without you boy going up this slope would be truly difficult for me. Halfway the two stopped to rest. Uncle Tun wiped his sweat and told the boy go rest a bit when you get back. Come to the kitchen before 10 a.m. He felt guilty but uncle said he had some power there. As they prepared to continue the silent sky suddenly erupted in a miserable scream. They looked towards the sound. Just as it seemed an illusion the terrifying scream rang out again kill them all leave no one. The boy sensed trouble. As the voice came from behind the Lee pawn shop. It could be the Kai Do true camp lord coming to take revenge on the Lee for the two Duong families. He wanted to yell for Uncle Tun to run but no matter how he called there was no response. Looking back he saw Uncle had scurried off on all fours. Truly human potential was limitless. A crippled man running faster than a rabbit. In panic he darted into a small alley but could still hear screams everywhere. At this rate disaster was certain. Suddenly he saw a pile of discarded wood planks. And had a brilliant idea to hide here. He hastily squeezed into the corner. The cramped space was perfect for him. He held his breath luckily there was a gap to observe through. Two people were intercepted by a gang. In the silent air thick with the smell of gunpowder. The man was Li Nhi Kong Su who once captured the four camp lords. The old man was Li Lao Jia the Li family master. The ones seeking revenge were terrifying. They were the second camp lord Lu Kai Bin and third camp lord Go Dung. Nhi Kong Su humiliated the Kai Do camp. Now they wanted to destroy the Li. Mr. Li sternly told them Lu Kai Bin. Let me come deal with you seeing the Li father and son intercepted. He decided to avenge his clan on the spot. Lu Kai Bin arrogantly challenged him to a duel. He ordered the third camp lord to watch Li Nhi Kong Su. While he would face Mr. Li himself. Seeing his disrespect Mr. Li stabbed his spear straight at his chest. But Lu Kai Bin swiftly dodged with ease. Seeing his fatal blow dodged. Mr. Li smiled coldly turned out he was prepared already. Immediately using Long Tai Thien as his opponent landed. But Lu Kai Bin still deftly neutralized it. He sinisterly laughed then unleashed a force sucking Mr. Li blood and chi into the Tan Thien sword in his hand. Mr. Li tried to dodge but his foot was too slow to react. Lu Kai Bin waved the Tan Thien sword. A blazing red path appeared in the sky. He used Bat Tian Din Dia Tuyat to slash down creating a terrifying explosive force. Luckily Mr. Li was no ordinary man either. Easily blocking it with his spear. Li Nhi Kong Su realized their strength was equal. But old age would disadvantage his father. He wanted to rush up to help but was stopped by his father. Whose intuition sensed the enemy was very dangerous. Perhaps stronger than them Lu Kai Bin was still calm. Treating the father and son as prey in hand. Next he used Thien Long Dia Vong. Creating countless explosive forces erupting from the ground. Mr. Li could only panic and flee but his opponent gave no respite taking advantage when Mr. Li dodged. Lu Kai Bin closed in and used Ba Vong Sat Thien too. Lu Kai Bin pounced up using Inner Chi to slash at Mr. Li position. Mr. Li had to muster all strength just to block the blow. At this rate the father and son would certainly meet a tragic end. Lu Kai Bin curiously wondered how long Mr. Li could endure. He continuously waved the Tan Thien sword. Smoke rose everywhere. Mr. Li could barely withstand it. He told his son to flee. Then blocked the enemy himself Huck Nhi. Run quickly Li Nhi Kong Su prepared to flee and find reinforcements but was chased by the third camp lord. Mr. Li wanted to help his son but the enemy had already jumped before him. His imposing manner like a war god descending. The explosive force shattered Mr. Li spear. The Tan Thien sword slashed heavily into his shoulder causing him to spit blood. Extremely painful even now. He still acted out mock sacrifice for the enemy trying to kill him. Seeing this the pervert became even more thrilled. But Mr. Li was determined not to surrender. He stomped on the shattered spear remnants. Mustering his remaining strength to kick it towards the third camp lord chasing his son. Just then he was unprepared. 
As the spear tip shot at him in a flash, he showed no fear immediately using Bat Dong Thang Bai. An invisible force shrouded his entire body. Just as the spear tip was about to pierce him, it was pushed back by the energy. Flying straight back at Mr. Lee the hard spear tip was instantly deflected back. Shattering into pieces Mr. Lee sacrificed himself for his son's escape. The Tan Thien sword immediately pierced through his chest. NHI Kong Su seized the chance. And fled desperately without looking back. Seeing his prey about to escape. The third camp lord angrily yelled. Liu Kai Bin just saw Mr. Li off to meet King Yama. Now free to deal with the mastermind. Never had any prey escaped his palm. Liu Kai Bin raised his hand towards NHI Kong Su. A blazing red circle formed around his arm. Then a blood red chi beam shot out at the speed of light. Just about to leap over the wall and flee, Li NHI Kong Su was struck down, spewing blood. He flew back like a ball, slamming into the wall so hard it crumbled. Li NHI Kong Su lay unconscious amidst the rubble. No longer moving, two NHAC hiding there witnessed this scene. Liu Kai Bin ordered his men to take Li NHI Kong Su to heaven. That Liu Kai Bin said he would chop his head off. He thought playing dead would let him escape. Not expecting such cruelty. Seeing the blade swing down he mustered his strength to punch the ground and leapt up using Vo Luke Hoi Thien. Sending the disciples flying back unconscious. Li NHI Kong Su took the chance to flee. Liu Kai Bin had never met anyone so durable. Involuntarily feeling some affection for him. He ordered them to chase and capture him. Only after they were gone. Did 2 NHAC breathe a sigh of relief. He was lucky not to be found thanks to great success meditation stances concealing his breath. He stuck his head out and only after making sure no one was left. Did he dare step out from hiding. Seeing the devastation around 2 NHAC didn't dare linger but immediately left the scene. But after walking a stretch. He discovered a mysterious package in the rubble. He picked it up guessing it was a valuable left behind by Li NHI Kong Su. Without further thought he stuffed it into his shirt pocket then headed back to the dorm to open it. Being near the tavern it only took him a moment to get back. Just as he was sneaking into his room he heard Xiao NHAC. He turned around it was Uncle Tun acting as if nothing had happened. He asked if the boy was returning just like that. Confused he didn't understand his meaning uncle looked at him pensively then warned he should learn to protect himself. If others knew he witnessed everything. It would cause unnecessary trouble. He finally understood uncle's good intentions. And begged for guidance uncle said to just act normal. Ignore anyone asking and claim ignorance. The two went back to the scene to retrieve supplies then returned. Hearing he liked martial arts uncle curiously asked if he had started meditation stances. Afraid to boast he said he just started. Uncle stroked his chin lost in thought. It had only been seven days since transmitting inner strength. If you were an outer disciple of our Li Diang Bang this speed would be enough for you to become an inner disciple already. Feeling guilty about earlier he decided to impart the family saber arts to the boy. He was very happy as what he lacked most now was martial arts to learn. On the way 2 NHAC ceaselessly asked about martial arts. He was curious what level one had to reach to attain external training. Or how to train to achieve internal training. Uncle Tun said external training was training the body. The tendons and bones needed a firm foundation. External training tempered the tendons and bones. While meditation stances were just the base for external training. He kept asking about external training methods and various techniques. Despite patiently explaining. Uncle still said inner power was needed to move when training external skills. He waved his arm and inner chi flowed like a mouse within him. He said one had to reach this level before being able to train martial arts. However not everyone could train external skills. As those were the secret methods of each sect. In the entire Tan Ha town. Very few people knew external training. Like the Li Diang Bang's Kim Kwong Toa Nak Kwe. Or the Thiet Bo Sam of Vo Quan Thiet Y. Luke that Tung Wan of Vo Tiu Do. He reminded the boy that martial arts and skills were two sides of the same coin needing balance. Good martial arts allowed the weak to defeat the strong. He recalled his superior sect leader Lu Dong known outside as Thien Trian Tu. Having mastered a hundred martial arts. Hearing this the boy was eager to become like senior Lu Dong. 
Uncle said to focus on getting meditation stances to minor success. Then he would impart the family saber arts. Back in his room, he opened the system. Already having over 600 soul PowerPoints. Despite the horrific morning, gaining so many points could be considered benefiting from adversity. Moreover, he obtained a treasure from Li Nhi Kong Su. Something from the rich must be valuable. He nervously opened the package inside were two old worthless looking books. Looking closely, the titles were Tu Ki Quan M Fap Kian Mo and Bok Fu Du Luk Kian Thuong. The name sounded like secret manuals for cultivation, not martial arts secrets. He eagerly looked at them. Normal martial arts could also dispel demons and monsters. Let alone cultivation techniques, if he could learn them, he would surely become the top expert in Tan Ha Town. The cock's crow pulled him from his fantasies back to reality. Currently, he had yet to perfect meditation stances. Recklessly learning cultivation would be very dangerous. Two NHAC decided to put the books away. To take out and study when the timing was right. Then he started regulating his breath. Taking advantage of time to practice before work. He recalled uncle's words that reaching great success allowed inner chi to control the muscles like mice running under the skin. He had now reached that level. Thus his inner chi started flowing madly. Making his arms shake like mice. Next, he needed to learn external training. For example, the Thiet Bo Sam of Vo Quan Thiet Y. He could sneak in and steal their manuals. Or the Luke that Tung Wan of Vo Tiu Do. But those were the private methods of each sect, so couldn't be learned. The easiest way now was to report to the sect that he reached great success in meditation stances. Then directly learn the Kim Kwong To A Nok Kwe. Suddenly, he recalled the system owner's childhood story. The neighboring village had a famous prodigy. Crawling at half a month, walking at three months. Speaking at five months. The owner of this body was very admiring then. Believing the child would grow up to be an exceptional figure. But unfortunately, the child destined for a bright future was deemed a monster by villagers. And taken away to be burned alive like a grim fate. Ideals were ethereal while reality was bitter. The owner's memories reminded him that to survive, he must conceal his strength. Min Chow Tavern was packed with guests since opening. He was in charge of clearing dishes, weaving through the crowds with trays. Taverns were always places for exchanging secret news. Last night's events quickly spread everywhere. He overheard guests saying Li Nhi Kong Su was chased down and killed by Kai Do Tru Camp right before reaching the government office. Truly a pity for Li Nhi Kong Su, who still died while fleeing in the end. If not for this unlucky fellow, He wouldn't have gained soul PowerPoints and the two cultivation manuals. The convoluted events made him lose focus at work. Li Nyi Kao came out and scolded him, telling him to hurry up to NHAC as too slow quickly prepare the dishes. The two were busy until late afternoon. When the tavern was emptier, Li Nyi Kao took him to the market for more supplies. On the way, he saw a wanted notice. Going closer, the two fugitives were Second Camp Lord Lu Kai Bin and Third Camp Lord Go Dung. He overheard people saying Li Tan had sold off all the Li family assets after returning to arrange the funeral. Looking at the two wanted notices, he felt very stuck. Even if those two were standing right here, it was uncertain he could recognize them. Wondering if Li Tan would seek revenge, he heard someone call from behind 2 NHAC. You're here, Li Nyi Kao told him to hurry back. The tavern guests had continued arriving. However, at the market, he heard a horrifying rumor that the Tang residents nearby had recently been haunted by ghosts. Seeing his confusion, Li Nyi Kao explained that was the Tang family. Tang Li Tam of Vo Quan Thiet Y. Even more powerful than the Li. Hearing the words Vo Quan Thiet Y. 2 NHAC was taken aback. He didn't expect this place to be Thiet Y's headquarters. He asked more about Tang Tam Li, but Li Nyi Kao didn't know much. He only knew the man was a supreme external training expert. Two maid servants of the Tangs were bizarrely attacked last night. Drained of essence until dead. A very horrifying scene. He was shocked that even a peak external training master couldn't deal with a beauty ghost. Now that beauty ghost had her sights on Tang Tam Lin's daughter. So he impatiently sent people to invite the Five Elements cult leader. Two NHAC was very curious who this Five Elements cult leader was. Why he had such powerful magic. After hearing his question, Li Nyi Kao was surprised. Not believing there were still people who didn't know the fame of the Five Elements cult leader. 
Seeing Lin Yi Kao so shocked and panicked, he also felt a little embarrassed. He really didn't know the Five Elements cult leader was an upright figure in the cultivation world. Not only was he skilled in many magics, but also very dedicated in helping others. Li Yi Kao believed with the cultivator's strength. Just a flick of his finger could eliminate the bizarre ghost at the Tangs. Because cultivators were best at dispelling evil spirits, he also heard the cultivator Vo Thong had persevered in cultivation and was now ranked among celestials. He was stunned, speechless. Becoming a celestial, this was truly unbelievable. Just as he wanted to ask more about celestials, Li Yi Kao hurriedly hugged the groceries and ran back to the restaurant. It had been a while since the incident with the little ghost. At first, he thought only rural villages had ghosts making trouble. He didn't expect it to be the same in this bustling city. Moreover, the story of the cultivator successfully attaining immortality that Li Yi Kao just told made him more fascinated with this world than ever before. Afterwards, two NHAC rushed back to Min Chao. As soon as he stepped inside, the manager scolded him loudly, telling him to quickly take the groceries to the kitchen. He nimbly ran towards the kitchen, though the path ahead was difficult and dangerous. He remained carefree and steadfastly moved forward. At this time, his mind was only on martial arts and mystic arts. The curses around him were like background music, heightening his fervor. How much difference was there between martial arts and cultivation? He swore to uncover the truth after half a month's efforts. He finally attained the consummate stage of meditation stances. At this stage, one could adeptly manipulate inner chi, hearing that departing chi could tear paper. Two NHAC curiously focused energy into his palm, then swiped at the paper. The paper immediately shredded to pieces. In just 30 days, he passed the first checkpoint of meditation stances to become an outer disciple. While now he was qualified to be a martial arts master, when he didn't know what to do next, he suddenly remembered there were still two cultivation manuals under his bed. Meditation stances were cultivated, while he had no chance to learn martial arts yet, so the only thing left was to study these two books to pass time. Tu Qi Quan and Fap discussed cultivation methods, while Bok Fu Du Luke taught how to make talismans. Both books were very beneficial. However, following the talisman creation guide, the needed ingredients were all extremely rare. Clearly, this was a book of leisure for the wealthy. For the poor boy, he could only study the free sections of Tu Qi Quan and Fap to cultivate his mind first. The ancient, unfamiliar words made him dizzy. Moreover, many conditions in the book were too harsh, nearly making him give up. But suddenly, some friendly lines appeared. The main technique was breathing exercise. Then the body becomes clear and smooth. Vigor and energy combined could also generate numinous chi. On the right were ancient cultivation methods. Modern cultivation could eliminate most of the useless, complicated cultivation methods. Embryonic breathing was what Tu Qi Quan and Fap mentioned, using morning yang chi as the material. When the body was unblocked, it would generate personal chi. Just then, the system opened by two NHAC appeared. Congratulations, host, on successfully unlocking the cultivation section. Next, the Tu Qi Quan and Fap section appeared on screen. He was extremely excited and determined to cultivate it to proficiency. Behind Min Chao was Mount Trong Nian, famous for watching the sunrise. He worked early morning, so it was very convenient to practice. Though the scenery along the way was superb. He didn't stop, but headed straight up the mountain peak. He used all his speed to climb the mountain, only making it to the top just before sunrise. Hearing a boom, he sat down to meditate. Eyes shut tight, sensing the stillness around. The sun gradually rose, warm dawn light spreading. He absorbed the warmth on his skin. Each strand of golden light transformed into spiritual chi, enveloping two NHAC. Suddenly, a strand of chi entered his body. Unleashing an extraordinary power, the sun's energy was madly absorbed by his body, while simultaneously expelling toxins outward. With sufficient chi, the mind opens, just needing to purge all impurities to attain the state of a clear, unblocked body. But now the sun was quite high, the glaring rays like flames. Tu Nyak's body temperature suddenly rose. He could get heat stroke any moment. Sensing the imbalance, he opened his eyes. Right when absorbing the sun's energy, all the accumulated energy in his body was now transformed into the sunrise fire chi about to erupt. He had to stop cultivating; otherwise, he would have almost ignited and burned himself. 
Luckily, he adjusted in time and stabilized the inner fire. Though interrupted midway, he could still feel the changes within. 2NHAC nervously opened the system, indeed, all stats had increased. No wonder most chose cultivation. After a few more times, his stats could skyrocket. What's more, the system unexpectedly gained a spirit stat. He immediately pressed increase, spending 55 soul power points to double the spirit value. Instantly clearing two nyak's mind everything within miles appearing vividly. All things seemed to slow under his gaze. Two NHAC could keenly sense each trembling leaf as it fell. The birdsong and insect cries echoing all around. As if the sounds of the whole world were contained in his ears. Truly the spirit stat had an astonishing effect after just a little increase. Seeing Min Chao about to open. He ran down the mountain back to the dorm to bathe purging the toxins his body had expelled. Suddenly hearing someone call his name. He turned around in the original owner's memories. This was his father's sister with her daughter. She married a bricklayer and lived in town so they hadn't met for a long time. The two chatted while walking down the street. He couldn't help patting his cousin's head. She was so obedient and cute that he really liked her. But the girl had no reaction surprising him. At first he thought it was because they were distant from not seeing each other for so long. But looking closely her expression seemed to have a problem. So he asked about his cousin's condition. Hearing about her daughter. She immediately became sad with tears welling saying the girl woke up crying this morning then became like this. She was going to take her to see a doctor hearing this. He sternly said with a cold face that she didn't need to take her for an examination. Hearing this she was startled and asked what he meant. 2NHAC explained he could sense the aura next to cousin Nak Mai. Perhaps she had encountered something unclean already. After listening her expression changed. Though she had heard of ghosts possessing and harming people. She didn't expect it to be her turn moreover the burdened one was her own daughter. Looking at her daughter next to her she still couldn't believe she was possessed. 2NHAC told her to feel her daughter's back to see if it was cold. If cold then she was haunted by a ghost. Needing someone with abundant inner strength and blood essence to come. She followed his words slipping her hand behind her daughter's back making the girl tremble. Indeed Nak May's back was icy cold. She panicked because her husband was building houses in another town. While she didn't know any martial artists to ask for help. 2NHAC reassured her that he knew an exorcist expert. He would ask him to help her and her daughter. The expert he mentioned was Uncle Min. Right after he ran to the Tan Ha Town Pier to look for the man. The crowds made him a little lost. 2NHAC stood amidst the bustling people eyes searching everywhere. A man wielding a leather whip was maintaining order on shore. He guessed the man was an official disciple of Li Diang Bang so he greeted senior brother. I am looking for manager 2 Min may I ask where is uncle? The stern man asked who he was. And what his relation to manager 2 was. 2NHAC politely introduced himself as a new disciple of the sect. And manager Tu's nephew but the other said manager Tu escorted a shipment. And would be back earliest in three months. Latest over ten days he sensed something bad. Because among the people he knew in Tan Ha Town Uncle Min was the strongest. Now with him gone he could only hope for Uncle Tun. But Uncle was afraid of ghosts. Just hearing exorcism and he refused outright. He said ghosts were crafty and strength hard to gauge. With his lame leg he was helpless. Seeing this he didn't force Uncle Tun anymore just asking him to request leave from the Li treasurer before hurrying off. Thanks to the spirit stat 2NHAC could sense the ghost's power wasn't too great. With no one to help he had no choice but to deal with it himself though a bit reckless. This was also a good chance to test himself. First he had to prepare very carefully. The night streets were tranquil. The cold wind howled violently due to many recent rumors of monsters. No one dared go out at night. Before he could help Nak Mai with the exorcism the sky was already dark. His aunt waited and waited without seeing him. While her daughter already had a high fever lying limp in bed. Now she could only rely on him. Worriedly wondering if something happened to him hurried knocking suddenly came from outside. She hurriedly opened the door and saw him standing there panting. Seeing him arrive she finally felt at ease. But waiting for the exorcist to appear. She saw there was no one behind him. She was confused and asked where is nephew too. 2NHAC calmly stepped in equipped with exorcism tools Uncle Min went escorting goods. 
Hell be back in a week hearing this. Her face turned pale without any help. Her daughter certainly wouldn't make it past tonight. Lately many children in town also had high fevers. Some had passed away she thought of her daughter having to leave this world. Unable to hold back tears 2 NHAC hurriedly helped his aunt up. Not expecting many other children were also haunted. He only brought enough exorcism tools for one person. She said within 10 meters nearby were also children with similar conditions as her daughter Nak Mai. He realized the problem was more serious than thought. But the urgent matter was first helping his cousin escape the possession. 2 NHAC reassured her not to worry. Because he knew how to resolve it. Then he gave a rationale this past month in Li Diang Bang. I have learned many things. A tiny ghost is no issue. Hearing this his aunt had no choice but to trust him he took out equipment preparing for battle. First he took some leaves. Applying a mysterious liquid. The ordinary leaves suddenly became glossy and lustrous. His aunt curiously asked what the leaves were for. He explained these were calamondin leaves soaked in ox tears. Able to open the third eye to see ghosts and monsters. She followed him applying the leaves to her eyes. But turning 360 degrees she still didn't see anything. Just as she thought the ancient method had lost effect. A cold gust suddenly blew in. Along with evil chi filling the room. She shrieked asking where was it. He immediately became alert eyes wide open observing around. The ghost was obviously very crafty but thanks to the increased spirit stat. He quickly pinpointed its location. 2 NHAC suddenly turned around. A black shadow appeared then vanished on the wall. Next the shadow turned into a bloody old man. Smashing through the wall charging out with a hideous mouth and long tongue trying to swallow his aunt. The ugly terrifying face made her panic and immediately faint. Luckily avoiding the attack. Though not his first time seeing a ghost. He still couldn't help but feel afraid. Just as he hesitated on the next step the ghost proactively attacked. It opened its mouth spraying blood everywhere. Blood floated around the room. Dying the whole house read his vision was limited in the bloody mist. In a blink the surroundings completely changed. From desert to desolate mountains and forests. This was precisely an illusion created by the ghost. It was the ghost deceiving the eyes if trapped inside. One would be lost forever luckily he had prepared carefully. 2 NHAC had fetched black dog blood from the slaughterhouse. Legend said just sprinkling this blood on a monster's illusion could break any of their tricks. He sprinkled the blood towards the ghost. The candle in the room immediately reignited. In just a blink 2 NHAC had been bewitched. Seeing the plan succeed a smug smile appeared on his handsome face. He was like a convict heading to the execution ground. Heavily stepping forward when before the girl. He stopped she opened her arms wide. Just about to tightly embrace him when suddenly those slender hands transformed into the ghost's pale claws. As it was about to squeeze him in its fatal embrace. His mind awakened right at this moment of life and death. He retreated while pulling out the secret weapon prepared beforehand. The beauty still wanted to hug him into her deadly embrace. But in the end it was only her own delusion. He quickly took out the bamboo tube using his hand to pop open the lid. Inside was prepared rooster blood. Without a word 2 NHAC gave the beauty a moisturizing facial. The beautiful face corroded into bubbling sores. The peerless beauty from before now vanished. The old ghost screamed with its mouth agape drifting about. He took advantage of the enemy's moment of weakness. Unveiling the cloth wrapping a weapon prepared beforehand. It was a large saber consecrated with thunder. This saber had slain countless specialized for killing evil ghosts. Immediately shining as it appeared. Seeing the treasure emerge the old ghost disguised as a wailing beauty immediately fell silent. Losing all ability to resist. 2 NHAC resolutely charged forward. Swinging the saber down the ghost didn't dare move. Only able to raise its hand to block a swing. The saber calmly returned only the sound of the female ghost's slender hand falling remained. Not giving her a chance to breathe he rushed to pursue and kill. 2 NHAC pounced using his own saber technique to slice her body cleanly in half. With just a thud, the beauty's body tumbled down he thought the battle was over. Unexpectedly the upper half still blithely frolicked about seizing the chance to escape. It dragged its bloody body. Stubbornly crawling through the wall to escape. But as its hand just touched the wall. Suddenly a bolt of lightning appeared before she could understand what happened in explosive force. 
violently knocked her down. It turned out 2NHAC had predicted the ghost would crawl through the wall to flee so he had sprinkled his own urine on it beforehand. Seeing victory at hand, he raised his saber ready to deal the finishing blow. That female ghost seemed immortal until the final moment still not giving up. She summoned an energy crystal from her palm, fusing it with the ghostly chi to absorb vitality, striking out an attack at him. Luckily 2NHAC reacted in time, using the saber to block he didn't expect with her destroyed body. She still had such tremendous strength in her final breaths. Just as he steadied himself the enemy had vanished. After only a moment she suddenly attacked from behind. In that moment of life and death, he remembered Uncle Min's words that inner chi arises. Strength grows exponentially his fist large as a sandbag suddenly ignited in purple flames. The crafty female ghost meant to ambush but made a mistake. In the perilous situation, 2NHAC recalled the ghost banishing secret. Inner chi surged strength exploded. With just one punch the ghost disintegrated into black smoke and vanished. A moment ago still an enchanting beauty. Now transformed into a thin wisp of smoke and dissipated. With just himself he had eliminated the evil ghost. His trembling fist 2NHAC couldn't suppress his joy. Last time Uncle Min banished a ghost he only got a few dozen soul power points. While this time he instantly received over 100 soul power points. Clearly this ghost was 10 times stronger than before. He picked up a shimmering gem from the floor. The evil ghost's final weapon used to attack him. It had rendered the sharp saber useless. Surely it contained an extremely vast power within. Just as he was engrossed examining the gem in hand, a shriek from behind made him startle. He thought it was another ghost. But turning around it was his aunt who had woken up. Seeing the ghost suddenly vanish, she frantically asked where it had hidden. 2NHAC thought she wouldn't believe he defeated the ghost so he lied that he chased it away. But she still didn't stop worrying. No one could protect her and her daughter forever. She worried if the ghost returned to harm them again next time. She and her daughter would be helpless 2NHAC reassured her that just sprinkling some rooster blood at the door cracks. Wall corners and floor beams could prevent most evil ghosts. Hearing this his aunt finally felt at ease. Since it was late she invited him to stay overnight and go back tomorrow morning. Lying in an unfamiliar bed he tossed and turned unable to sleep. He thought about how many children had encountered ghosts recently. Usually ghosts acted alone. It was impossible for so many to appear at once in an area. Moreover they specifically targeted little children. Surely someone must be manipulating behind the scenes. Suddenly he shuddered. Bolding up a horrifying thought appeared could this be the result of ghost raising arts. He had overheard tavern guests talking before. Raised ghosts would be controlled to absorb others young chi. Aside from strengthening the ghost. The young chi could also be refined into precious elixirs. Users would gain health and virility, increasing their own power. That was ghost raising, a demonic art helping masters and ghosts cultivate faster. But all this was still just his conjecture for now. He needed evidence before daring to act. He decided to keep observing before planning further. Every day he still went up the mountain to cultivate. But the time sin cosmic chi was generated was too short so he never attained the unblocked state. He could only slowly raise the conversion efficiency of Sin Cosmic Chi to shorten the detox time. It had been 20 days since banishing the ghost. His aunt's house remained peaceful but what irked him was the whole month of overcast skies. He only absorbed Sin Cosmic Chi five times. He hurried back to Min Chao to wash dishes and clean up. On the way down the mountain he met an ugly old man. From his aunt he knew the man managed the earth god shrine on the mountain. He had taken the civil service exam for 20 years without passing. Eventually he despaired. Abandoning the village to live in seclusion on the mountain at Tan Ha Town the rising sun illuminated the clean street. The vendors had prepared goods since early morning. While eating a stomach he was startled by someone calling his name. Looking back it was his aunt who had been waiting for him since sunrise. Yesterday he had asked her to gather news about the ghost disturbances. She said yesterday she met two neighbors who came asking. He immediately widened his eyes asking what they had asked. She said the two acted strange but were actually very bizarre. Because usually everyone asked about the ghost chaos. While they instead asked if she had someone come catch the ghost already. Hearing this he panicked afraid his ghost catching was exposed. 
But she comforted him to not worry she was very clever. She didn't mention his affairs at all. 2NHAC breathed a sigh of relief knowing his aunt was very clever in answering them. He told her to vaguely reply if anyone asked about the ghost catching. Since there were still things to do at the tavern, he quickly bid her farewell then immediately turned to leave. He realized he had encroached on someone else's territory. Perhaps the magistrate had heard rumors about that demonic cultivation so had begun taking action. He needed to quickly strengthen himself to prepare for the upcoming trial. During the lunch break he found Uncle Tun and said he attained the minor accomplishment realm of fortifying meditation stances. Uncle was surprised since it usually took half a year. Though he exaggerated his strength a bit it could still be considered acceptable. He tightly clenched his fists adjusting his breath. A violent burst of power erupted. Enveloping the upper half of his body. Sweat poured like rain on his skin his performance stunned Uncle Tun. All of Tan Ha needed 50 days. But he only took 40 days truly a genius indeed. Seeing his panicked expression, he didn't hesitate reminding Uncle Tun that he said after attaining minor accomplishment in fortifying meditation stances he would impart a saber technique to him didn't uncle say he would teach. Hearing this he excitedly thumped his chest a wretch like me could encounter such a genius. This is the chance heaven has given me. He gripped two nyak's shoulders us meeting his fate. I'll teach you that saber technique. But suddenly he thought of something. Making him promise one thing after succeeding. Without hesitation he nodded agreeing. Afterwards uncle led him into the forest. Pointing to the huge boulders around and drawing his saber. He declared he would impart the 18 link sabers. A famous saber technique known for speed. Mouth introducing the technique. His limbs had already begun moving. Saber after continuous saber. Outwardly gentle yet inherently powerful from within. It required harmony between body. Spirit and saber point to pierce through rock. Only fully focusing will onto the saber point could one move naturally according to intent. Thanks to the increased spirit stat. He memorized each technique without missing anything. After the demonstration ended uncle handed him the saber display at once for me to see. He feared 2NHAC had forgotten the move so lacked confidence. Gently advising him it was extremely normal for a beginner to be unable grasp the essence within the motions. Best not to rush. After going through the motions. Uncle Tun watched with mouth agape. Not only did he memorize but could smoothly recount. Coughing a few times he secretly thought must make him taste the danger. Uncle Tun stepped forward unleashing several saber strikes. At a glance seeming unremarkable. But in truth the huge boulder had long been split by him already. 2NHAC standing nearby was also frightened by him. Only after displaying the skill to him did Uncle Tun begin explaining. Three saber strikes merge into one. 18 linked becoming six. Might instantly doubles. In the past Uncle Tun also took two years to train to minor accomplishment. But because he learned it too late his foot was already injured. Since then his strength never surpassed the minor accomplishment realm. He hoped 2NHAC could inherit his martial will. Training 18 linked sabers to the major accomplishment realm. Then 6 saber strikes merge into 1. The naked eye only sees 3 but in truth it's already 18 saber strikes. Might triples hearing this. 2NHAC was very excited curious what 18 linked sabers ability would be like at consummation. But he had never seen anyone successfully cultivate it to consummation before either. Uncle Tun said this technique was rather obscure not considered high level. His ancestors also didn't want to spend much time. And effort cultivating it finally. He reminded him to be flexible. Adapt on the spot concentrate will in order to pierce through all things. Technique plus inner strength could rend rock and shatter mountains. Sever metal next. Uncle Tun demanded he fulfill his promise. He reluctantly followed uncle for over half an hour. Finally arriving Uncle Tun stepped up knocking lightly on the door. Knocking for 10 minutes but still no response. Just as he was about to give up the door swung open. A huge fat guy appearing. He crudely asked what business they had. Uncle Tun politely introduced himself. Saying he had an urgent matter to discuss with Mr. Howe. But the guy was still aloof. Telling them to wait there then slammed the door shut leaving. The two were left blank faced only able to wait outside the door. 2NHAC wanted to understand Mr. House preferences to more easily approach him later. 
Uncle Tun deeply sighed, then explained, "Mr. Hao was a big figure in Tanha, though only at the external tempering realm. His fame was equal to consummate internal cultivation experts. Owner of countless assets, he was not only the founder of Min Chao Tavern, but also owned a silk shop and rice store. It was said he had many other properties in Go Jiang County too." If two NHAC was recognized by Mr. Hao, he could easily become an inner disciple. Experienced Uncle Tun detested the power struggles in officialdom, wanting to help him. He hoped later, when two NHAC succeeded, he would repay this favor. Two NHAC was extremely grateful to Uncle Tun. Inner disciple meant in the near future he would have endless connections, resources, and martial arts. Not long after, the fat guy returned to invite them in. The rich could really do as they wished. The swimming pool was built with pure natural mineral water. This was Tu Nyak's first time seeing such a luxurious house. Both gazed at the scenery, fascinated. After walking a while, he brought them to the living room. The two respectfully greeted Elder Hao. The solemn atmosphere made them tremble. Before them was Mr. Hak Lam Khon, founder of Min Chao Tavern. He had a very forthright working style. No beating around the bush. Seeing the two. He bluntly said, "Speak, Uncle Tun." Panic, sweating bullets, throat tight, stuttering to say, "It's like this." The boy behind me, named Bok Tu Nhac, is a martial arts genius. The boy entered fortifying meditation stances after ten days, cultivating to minor accomplishment after fourteen days. I know Elder Hao values talent, doesn't want martial talents wasted. So boldly recommend this boy to you. Hearing this, Elder Hao put down his teacup. Display your stance for me to see. With fortifying meditation stances at consummation realm, Two Nhac was confident dealing with Elder Hao's test. He tightly clenched his fists, sinking heavily into a stance. His imposing aura, steadfast as a mountain, like an impregnable defense. Next, a burst of vigorous chi erupted, making him emit smoke like Luffy activating Gear Second. With just a glance, Elder Hao finished his assessment. He struggled drinking water to hide his surprise. Elder Hao calmly asked how long he had been in the sect. The arrogant manager whispered in his ear that it was exactly forty days. Hearing this, Elder Hao's eyes bulged in shock. Indeed, a martial arts genius. You did very well. If such a genius was buried, it would truly be a loss for Li Diang Bang. You can make a request. I will consider the situation and agree with you. As an experienced person. Uncle Tun didn't dare make direct demands, but cleverly requested to work by Mr. Hao's side. Of course, he understood immediately, arranging for Uncle Tun the position of rice store manager with decent income and some influence. Only now did Elder Hao turn to him, asking what he wanted. At first, Two Nhac was shy, but to get through this, he directly said, "I want to become an inner disciple of Li Diang Bang." Hearing this, Uncle Tun laughed, since the request was so simple. Not only can I agree to that, I can also sponsor you to swiftly improve. But you must promise one simple thing to me. He slumped, knowing nothing was free. What do you need me to help with, sir? He said, "Currently, you have talent, but your ability is still very weak. What I need is your future." Two Nhac just had to remember he still owed a debt of gratitude. That was all. The rest would be arranged by heaven without any hesitation. He immediately agreed. Currently, he had nothing but the system. Two Nhac desperately needed a benefactor like Elder Hao. He was very generous to his people. He gave him monthly living expenses at the tavern and gifted him a martial arts manual to cultivate with. With this book, he could begin training martial arts. Regarding inducting him as inner disciple, he had gone to process it already, just stepping outside his door, and he would officially become an inner disciple. The next morning, the sun shone brighter than ever, though no longer doing hard labor. He still rose early to cultivate on the mountain before sunrise. Just after finishing, he returned to Min Chao. Just about to go back to sleep, someone calling startled him. It was his old friend Ni Kao, coming to congratulate him on becoming an official disciple. He happily said, "This time, you and Uncle have soared into the clouds. I knew you would succeed sooner or later." Seeing his close friend about to fly high, Ni Kao couldn't hold back tears. Later, you'll forget about me. Just as Two Nhac was about to comfort him, a familiar cough sounded from behind. Ni Kao, hurry up and work! What are you standing there for? Stop spouting nonsense! Here, the two turned around. It turned out to be the manager holding a package, approaching, yelling loudly, but seeing him, 
He immediately changed his attitude, smiling kindly. Little NHAC. This is your first month's living expenses. I handled the paperwork for you this month. Before this sudden change in attitude, 2 NHAC was a bit confused after thanking him. He quickly took his leave in just one day. From apprentice to official disciple, even fairy tales were less fanciful than this scene. 2 NHAC eagerly opened the package. The first time seeing so much silver. Aside from money, there were also two jars of kidney fortifying virility elixir. To aid swift recovery after cultivation. Seeing the pile of money, his eyes lit up. With this money, he could buy books to study and train ceaselessly. Yi Kao and the manager escorted him from Min Chao. Though only knowing each other for over a month, their affection was as deep as flowing water. 2 NHAC held the notice of admission. Going to handle joining procedures, he hadn't gone far when he heard someone calling. 2 NHAC, 2 NHAC, it was his aunt with a worried expression. She said the widow Hong next door had spoken to the two thugs from before about him catching the ghost. He was stunned, heart sinking. He didn't understand how that woman knew. It turned out yesterday his aunt was bored and casually chatted with her, inadvertently revealing everything. Now only way was to cope. He worried for his aunt and cousin Nak Mai more than himself. Advising them to return home into hiding for a while, then come back after things settled down. She had no other choice but to listen. Afterwards, he bid his aunt farewell and continued on his way. By the time he arrived, the sky was dark. This was the Li Diang Bang Branch. Two NHAC finished tidying his room, then eagerly began cultivating. At this time, his aunt had fled to her hometown, so he could cultivate at ease. But he couldn't keep hiding. He had to increase his strength to protect himself. Looking at the stack of 400 page books, he contemplated though called fist techniques. These were actually methods to consolidate inner strength, enhancing health. Scattered inner strength in the body condenses, flowing into one current, then stimulated outward. To have great success, one must first temper the body. To excel at martial arts required a healthy body. Thus, the book only introduced one move called fortify body fist. The rest was body training methods and health preservation. He should nt hesitate, but immediately get started. Two NHAC clenched his fist tightly. He regulated his breath, trying to concentrate all inner strength onto his fist, then punching straight forward. At the same time, the chi shrouding his fist dispersed around instead of forming lightning bolts enveloping it. The inner strength had not fully concentrated before quickly scattering everywhere. If he couldn't transmit power into the arm, it would be very difficult to create intense damage. Clearly, cultivating martial arts was not as simple as a child playing in the sand. But failure was the mother of success. He took a deep breath, starting over from the beginning. This time, he tried hard to slowly concentrate inner strength. When the inner strength was about to erupt, he unleashed an iron fist. A blue energy sphere flew out one meter from his fist, then exploded. He could use the sex unique move, but there were still many things needing adjustment. Due to poor control over the inner strength source, the time spent concentrating was prolonged, so he felt exhausted, like after a marathon. Others all cultivated fortifying meditation stances to consummation, but thanks to the system letting him skip that stage, his physique couldn't keep up with martial level. He could summon massive inner strength, but his body couldn't withstand it. He had no choice but to lower the intensity, gradually adapting to it. After that. 2 NHAC continuously trained like a madman, either punching too hard or sustaining too long. After hundreds of failures, he gradually grasped the essence of the punch after endless adjustments. Currently, after training, he sat panting on the floor. Although he could concentrate inner strength suitable for his physique and shorten the time, it was still insufficient. This move wasted too much stamina. 2 NHAC hurriedly checked the system, but still didn't meet the admission criteria. Clearly, cultivating martial arts wasn't something done overnight. An inch of advancement took endless work. In the end, he still decided to rest, recover, then continue tomorrow. The next morning, the sunshine was brighter than ever. Two NHAC still woke up at six o'clock, but didn't go up the mountain. Instead, training eighteen linked sabers in the backyard. The gleaming sabers' edge effortlessly pierced stone like mud. Indeed, the sect cherished martial arts. Even training weapons were meticulously chosen. He tried hard to fully concentrate his will onto the saber point, then displayed eighteen linked sabers. The graceful bearing, like a godly sword embodied, 
Might like the ancient era. More like a performance than practice. Though saber and wielder were not yet one. Today the saber technique was clearly much smoother than before. Just as he was about to continue training. A familiar voice sounded from behind for so long now. You're the first to wake earlier than me. 2NHAC turned around surprised. It was senior brother Tan he hadn't seen in a while. At first senior brother Tan thought he was always the earliest riser. He didn't expect 2NHAC to wake even earlier than him. Also only needing 40 days to attain minor accomplishment in fortifying meditation stances. Truly impressive quality hearing this. He felt a bit embarrassed he had to thank senior brother for the guidance back then. Senior brother Tan laughed at his flattering words firmly believed in a few days someone would accept him as disciple. By then they would become martial brothers. 2NHAC felt quite confused. He had heard outstanding inner disciples would be assigned by the sect elders to take on as disciples in advance. These elders were all consummate internal cultivation experts. Senior brother Tan seriously explained exceptional inner disciples would be taken by elders as disciples. Though all were top experts still needed consideration. Elder Don Kai hung for external affairs. Elder Lu Diem Hong for internal affairs. Elder Quach Luang for water affairs. Elder Tan Vu for mineral affairs. Finally there was law enforcement Elder Dam Seo Pham. Also my master. The five sect elders had equal strength. If judging in terms of might then law enforcement Elder Dam Seo Pham was the strongest. Called the number one internal cultivator in Tan Ha Town. Next was mineral Elder Tan Vu with extraordinary sword arts. The remaining three each had unique strengths but weren't renowned for martial arts. Not knowing since when senior brother Tan had talked continuously for half an hour without realizing disturbing others practice. The best morning practice time had passed. He bid farewell to go eat breakfast. Hearing senior brother Tan's explanations was very beneficial. After analyzing he realized teaching ability was also very important. Senior brother Tan joined the sect half a year ago. Also five days after admission. Had only cultivated fortifying meditation stances for 50-something days before attaining minor accomplishment realm. While he only took 40 days at this pace. Probably only needed 3 or 4 months to reach major accomplishment. Even someone exceptional like senior brother Tan still needed another 34 months to attain major accomplishment. So he decided to announce reaching major accomplishment in fortifying meditation stances after at least half a year more. That meant he needed to grind for another half year before learning the Li Diang Bang's traditional martial arts. He thought the next half year would pass tediously. But suddenly recalled a conversation he overheard while working. Back then while busy serving customers. He inadvertently overheard rumors that someone had stolen a martial arts manual. The martial arts was named Five Phases Golden Body. And the thief was hiding in Tan Ha. 2NHAC felt the four words were familiar but couldn't remember. Finally decided to just go eat first. Indeed inner disciples were treated very differently. He had a private room and even meals were as good as government supplied. While eating he had to ponder how to recover that martial arts manual. After years of poverty this was the first time he experienced the joy of the rich. It was fantastic being an inner disciple. Before him were countless delicious dishes he had never seen. He didn't hesitate picking up his chopsticks voraciously eating. Continuing like this his previously exhausted strength would swiftly recover. The wealthy only knew eating sleeping and entertainment. Poor him still had to run to class after eating. Exemplary senior brother Tan had already sat down preparing lessons early. He arrived to class the latest but still casually greeted each classmate. Several days had passed like this learning military strategy. Tomorrow was weekend no classes but he still hadn't seen any elder come to accept him as disciple. At the sect he could no longer cultivate mystic arts but could only practice saber and fist techniques. The goal was of course to swiftly attain the admission realm to earn system points. When the timing and inner strength concentration improved. The punching might surged with enough concentrated inner strength. He unleashed a full powered punch at the wooden training dummy before him. With a boom the wooden dummy instantly exploded on the spot. 2NHAC had combined technique and might. Punching the wooden dummy to smithereens immediately the system prompt appeared congratulations host for meeting admission criteria for one word scripture fist. He was extremely excited meaning he could skip the basic training stage. 
directly raising it to the consummation realm. After spending 300 points leveling up, his stats surged without hesitation. He spent another 600 points to attain major accomplishment. Suddenly an extraordinary might erupted from within his body. Abundant chi seemed to envelop his body in blue armor. Two NHAC slowly opened his eyes controlling his breath to harness this energy source. Then he picked up a giant boulder, only seen in legends, held it shaking then threw it straight upward. Seizing the chance he struck with Buddha's divine palm at the boulder flying midair. Inner strength swiftly converged in his palm at invisible speed, shooting straight at the target with a crack. The boulder shattered in midair seeing one word scripture fist at major accomplishment delighted him. At the same time it meant he had completely mastered inner strength. Just then two lazy guys walked by badmouthing others. A handyman disciple got promoted. No matter how hard you try useless anyway. After five years as an apprentice hell still just be an average inner disciple. Two NHAC didn't care what they said. Just knew with absolute strength. All schemes were meaningless what he needed to do now was increase his own might. In the evening other disciples went to sleep after dinner. But he still went to the backyard to practice 18 linked sabers to aid digestion. Had to wait another half year before learning Li Diang Bang's martial arts. Truly too long who knew what could happen. That cult lackey still watched him like a hawk. Currently he needed to learn more martial arts for self-defense. The only thing he knew was the external tempering realm 5 phases golden body art. To obtain that art he had to master 18 linked sabers to major accomplishment before dawn. Couldn't delay he lifted the saber and started training. After mastering his body swinging the sword became more smooth and natural. He could already concentrate inner strength on the saber's edge unconsciously. 2 NHAC always remembered Uncle Tun's teaching to be flexible. Adapt on the spot concentrate will to pierce through all things. With a crack, the giant boulder was sliced in half. Immediately the system notified congratulations host for meeting 18 linked sabers admission criteria. But due to limited points, he only upgraded it to minor accomplishment. According to the information he heard tomorrow was the day Tu Kuk Vo Yu Y would carry the manual escorting the town's weapon convoy. The next morning senior brother Tan came to his room two-way. I have good news for you but after knocking for a while with no response. Running out of patience he pushed the door open stepping inside. I've figured out why the five elders didn't accept you as disciple. He expected Tu Nyak's excited reaction but the room was empty and silent. In fact he had set off early to seize the manual. Two NHAC strolled around Tan Ha streets. Goal to lure the evil cult's lackeys into appearing. But in the end it was just his delusion. Old Luke hired escorts to safely flee home. Surely they would take the desolate mountain path. Where the evil cult often hid only one route remained Oxhead Mountain. Since he often went up the mountain to cultivate he was very familiar with the terrain. Soon after 2 NHAC found the ideal hiding spot. Could clearly see people coming and going on the small path and mountain pass. Also convenient for ambushing. But the escort group surely prepared meticulously. And those who wanted to rob the manual weren't just him alone. Thus he didn't dare act rashly. He decided to wait for the opponent to reveal themselves. Then plan accordingly 2 NHAC decided to wait for all to appear then plan accordingly hoping there'd be a chance to lure the tiger from the mountain. But all speculation was mistaken. Because right after the group he awaited appeared. In front were tall burly men. Cautiously observing around. Among them the slightly pale bald man was surely old Luke. While the handsome fellow behind was the leader. Nothing however trivial escaped his eyes. When he inadvertently sighed that guy immediately noticed. He decided to give up but the group passed right by him again. Hiding in the bushes 2 NHAC observed them. Indeed they headed up Oxhead Mountain to avoid the evil cult people. When he prepared to follow behind him came the sound of sneaking footsteps. Looking back he saw the silhouette of another old Luke. 2 NHAC suddenly realized they were using the golden cicada shedding shell trick the front group only aimed to attract the enemy's attention. The old Luke behind was real. If the front group met danger he could still change plans. Luckily 2 NHAC patiently held back from attacking immediately. Otherwise he would have accidentally killed that group. Now the chance had come he prepared to act. 
But just as he was about to jump down suddenly a strange voice sounded from the bushes nearby old Luke the tranquil forest suddenly stirred. Even old Luke jerked startled by that unexpected voice. Several assassins jumped down from the trees. Brandishing sabers lying in weight strength still unclear but gear quite professional. Old Luke never encountered this situation before. So scared he nearly soiled himself. Who are you all what do you want three men in black surrounded him. Boldly yelling they were the ones to kill him. Two NHAC was also overwhelmed by their imposing manner. At first he thought it was fireflies catching flies. Didn't expect several magpies were already lying in wait nearby. Old Luke trembled begging for mercy please spare my life. The leader coldly demanded old Luke. Hand over the five phases golden body manual. Or you want live. Old Luke wanted to ask how they knew about him. But they didn't want to explain. Immediately rushing to attack from the strikes. He realized these were just fresh graduates. The saber swept past his bald head. Dealing with these incompetent rookies. He could dodge with eyes closed. Old Luke concentrated inner strength into his palm then swung up. The red flames were like a sharp seal. With a snap the right arm of that guy had a chunk of flesh torn off. Seeing his brother hurt the leader angrily charged dare injure my brother. Die he slashed with one move. Obediently die old Luke. Looking refined externally but cruel at heart. Old Luke let no one exploit him. With just his might alone he eliminated all three. The big brother hadn't even touched him before being kicked away. Taking advantage while old Luke was unguarded. The leader approached from behind. Slashing his saber horizontally at his head. The sinister move flustered old Luke. Accidentally he was struck on the face. Blood flowed down his face. As a lone martial artist for two and a half years. His looks were old Luke's money-making tool. His face more important than life itself. The furious leader slashed his saber. But at the crucial moment. Old Luke used the five phases golden body fist. A pale yellow aura shrouded his whole body. The saber stopped less than one centimeter from his face. But old Luke unleashed a barehanded block. His left hand gripped the saber edge. Right hand continuing with ghostly white bone claw. The guy was horrified trying to retreat but legs trembling from his overbearing aura. Old Luke grabbed his neck. Lifting him up seeing his brother in danger. The big brother immediately charged chopping down aiming at him. Bastard but the result shocked him. Old Luke's skin was as hard as steel. Only superficially scratched leaving a thin line negligible. The wound then swiftly healed at unbelievable speed. Two NHAC stood behind the boulder eyes wide incredulous. This was truly illogical based on the situation. Perhaps old Luke had started cultivating five phases golden body. Reaching the realm of supple skin tough as ox hide. Before he could react the big brother was clawed in the neck by ghostly white bone claw. Blood gushed like a fountain standing nearby. That younger brother was scared cold sweating. This was the most horrifying sight he had witnessed. Big brother dead little brother kicked away. Only him left with no choice but to flee. But old Luke didn't plan to let him get away so easily. Ha ha dare come kill me. Don't even see if you have the ability. With a leap old Luke rushed at astonishing speed. That guy cried running with all his might. Now he was like an abandoned lamb but behind. The claws were already at his neck he charged at breakneck pace. Next two huge hands pressed him down. Old Luke appeared like the grim reaper. Before he could beg for mercy. The little guy heard a crack then died on the spot. Old Luke tossed the corpse aside. His handsome demeanor now able to seduce countless people. Two NHAC didn't dare make a move hiding behind the boulder. Clearly external tempering realm strength was extremely horrifying. Might and speed hundredfold normal people. Recklessly attacking would surely lead to death. Just as he hesitated on fleeing or not he was discovered by old Luke seen enough yet. Come out the roaring shout chilled his face pale. But now there was no other way only to fight. Lu Laolu took his saber. Rushing towards him though his appearance was quite sudden. He would still hardly escape death. With one horizontal slashing heavenly ruler move. He shouted you all go die together. But two Neok easily dodged to the side. Then drew out the azure spear sword to block his strike weight. I don't know those three the two fought fiercely. Their powerful clashing forces exploded dust. The two sides had too great a disparity. It could be said neither could win. 
But Lu Laolu didn't expect this young boy to have such tremendously powerful prowess. Conversely, he was also shocked to be able to block the other's sinister blow. This was his first battle. He didn't dare be complacent one bit. Lacking experience, he could easily be defeated if careless. Two Neok retreated to make distance, then leapt up, using 18 linked sabers extremely swiftly. His aura like a deity descending overwhelmed Lu Laolu. But no matter how skilled the opponent, To him, he was just a brat. Seeing the sharp saber edge coming at him, he was still confident bringing up his own saber to block. But he had underestimated the true might of 18 link sabers. Seemingly only six slashes, but in fact 18. Especially the final blow had three times the power, shattering his saber completely. Clearly, 2 NHAC didn't give him a chance to recover. He himself seized the opportunity of his unguarded moment. Immediately striking with the just mastered one word scripture fist. Terrifying power converged in his fist. Next, the iron fist punched old Luke's body. He rolled over unconscious, nearly dying on the spot. Like a mini depth charge. The blow sent his whole body flying into a tree. A loud boom sounded. Dust and debris swirling rocks flew everywhere but hit no one. Old Luke lay gasping in the rubble, hugging his chest, moaning in agony before he could calm down. The youth already stood before him, saber in hand. Eyes cold and indifferent, like he was an enemy who owed him endless fortune. Sensing the killing intent, old Luke hurriedly bowed, begging for mercy, please spare my life. But before he finished speaking, the slashing sound rang out. Blood spurted everywhere, the world sunk into silence. He searched the corpse for the manual. By chance, he discovered old Luke's bag on the roadside. Picking it up, he knew inside were surely many treasures. 2 NHAC hurriedly opened the bag and was stunned by what he saw. Inside, not only were dozens of shiny tails of silver, but also two rare martial arts manuals. 2 NHAC eagerly examined the two books. Initially, only hoped for one, didn't expect an extra. The distant fighting sounds gradually faded. The escort group could return any time. The urgent matter now was leaving the scene, avoiding unnecessary trouble if discovered. He had just left when the three survivors of the escort group appeared. They didn't mourn old Luke at all, rather felt angry. If not for him insisting on the shortcut, they wouldn't have ended up like this. Truly a total fiasco, the two escorts, instead of reflecting, blamed everything. The old Luke imposter couldn't stand it yelling enough nonsense. Investigate clearly, then report back to leader to you. If not, want get back the hundred tails deposit. Then the brothers died meaninglessly. Based on the chest wound, they guessed the one reached external tempering flesh and blood realm. Though not fatal, it incapacitated the victim. However, old Luke's cause of death was from the slash across his neck. While the fake old Luke still looked for other clues, his subordinate discovered strange footprints. He analyzed the small, shallow prints, showed some one focused strength in the toes, then used that force to move quickly. But the size and shape were strange. This person had short feet, either a woman or child. Even a child trained from the womb couldn't reach that level. Old Luke was weak but could still easily defeat normal children. So only one possibility the killer was a female martial artist. Wang Tu told his two subordinates that he would chase first while they followed after. Watching his silhouette recede, the two felt Wang Tu was truly useless. Probably still longing for old Luke's money. On this side, unknown when. Tan Ha Town Gate now had guards. Everyone entering was checked, 2 NHAC was stopped as soon as he reached the gate. 2 NHAC had no choice but to use strong measures. He said, General Sir, I am an inner disciple of the Li Diang Bang. This time I am from the countryside coming up along with the so called certification was a silver ingot, 2 NHAC carefully hid in. Indeed, money could solve any problem. The guard's attitude immediately changed. Inner disciple of Li Diang Bang. So young yet so capable. Go on and go in 2 NHAC watched the guard's silhouette recede. Everything was touch and go but finally worked out smoothly. Although just spent a large amount of silver compared to what he gained today, it was negligible. Returning to Li Diang Bang, he discovered two suspicious fellows loitering at the back gate. Those cunning expressions couldn't be good people. Surely Ta Tu's spies sent to investigate. Unexpectedly so fast. Not waiting long, 2 NHAC immediately headed straight for them. The two jerked looking back, not expecting the target to waltz into their sights. 
Truly fortunate saved much effort when Prey entered the maw itself. He looked at the two indifferently. Didn't know what they were planning. Seeing him frail they thought victory was in hand. Becoming more aggressive there's a road to heaven why don't you take it? Hell has no road yet you enter but just saying. They pounced to capture him but immediately got a numbing blow almost breaking their arms. Kneeling begging forgiveness just now still aggressive and threatening. Now heads bowed pleading. Towards bullies oppressing people. He lazily talked directly stomping one shut up. I ask who told you to tail me. A terrifying aura made the two so scared they nearly peed themselves. But they also didn't know the one behind. Just heard he was a Taoist practicing immortal arts. He also said two Neok took his things. He heard clueless only could ascertain based on appearance. According to them the immortal was seven Kai tall. Very young wearing deep purple Taoist robes. Near his ear a black mole. At his waist a yellow gourd. And even a rancid smell like rotting corpse. Combining the stench and prior experience. Two Neok immediately thought of the one controlling ghosts at the young miss before. The item he mentioned probably the gem two Neok accidentally picked up. But for now just speculation. Prudent to wait for facts then reconsider. Afterwards two Neok chased those two away. Warning not to return to Tan Ha Town again or contact that immortal. He had a feeling the immortal they mentioned very possibly unclean things. Chasing away those two. He sneaked back to his room through the back gate then rested until mealtime. Waking up he nervously opened the pouch taking inventory. Looking over aside from two manuals also 13 silver ingots. Plus broken silver at least 130 tails. Enough buying two villas but most important still the two books. Especially five phases adamantine body. Mastering could crush even rock. Then was eagle claw skill. He flipped through muttering to keep these secret. What made him most curious was an ordinary looking wooden box but heavy. Two Neok carefully opened odd at the contents a box full of gold leaves and a jade pendant. He guessed even slaving lifetimes couldn't earn this much. He tapped the table pondering. These items worth at least 500 tails. In a flash from poverty he became rich man. The blissful feeling came too suddenly like a dream. The last item was a blood and chi pellet. Picking it up he saw empty. Just two left likely old six Lu already consumed leaving only two. Truly unfortunate blood and chi pellets ten times stronger than normal. He hastily tidied then pondered maximizing these gains. For instance training five phases adamantine fists would let him enter external training. Additionally with this money he could pay to learn talisman drawing for a period. First need to buy tools. Cheapest wolf hair brush still 34 tails. Most important was spirit ink. Must use top grade vermilion formula. Talismans only then effective. Paper just use common hundred leaves student paper. But these all require money. Lost in thought. He heard his room door open. Kind senior brother Tan to Neok. I came bearing good news for junior brother. He gawked why died at him good fortune never visited in his life. Could heaven finally show favor senior brother Tan smiled lightly yesterday. I learned from master why the chiefs didn't accept junior brother. It's because someone even better already chose you. 2NHAC thought it was just left protector True Tin or right protector Lu Duong didn't expect senior brother Tan to mention a name that stunned him sect leader Lu Dong of Tian Xi'an hand. He just thought the senior was joking so didn't ask more. Because the urgent matter now was going to eat. But arriving at the dining hall he realized things weren't simple. Everyone discussed animatedly it's him. It's him news spread fast some unfamiliar came to congratulate him. Externally 2NHAC politely responded but internally disdained them. These people wouldn't have glanced his way before. Now he was esteemed so they tried to get close. 2NHAC sat in a quiet corner opening his system. Yesterday's battle gained another 600 soul points. But he decided to keep them for a more suitable time. The next morning sunshine was brighter than ever. He got up early as usual. Unexpectedly teacher Tian already waited long I saw junior Bai has extraordinary talent. More perceptive than others like a dragon phoenix among people. Now also favored by the sect leader. Truly as legend says you're our shining example he had no interest conversing with him directly saying stop. What exactly do you want he bowed his head saying he only respects junior brother Bok so just wanted to congratulate junior brother. Seeing two Neok leave Tian immediately called out junior brother wait. 
Truth is I came to apologize to junior brother Bach. Then gave him a wooden box that shocked him the item inside. First is my apology gift. Second congratulates junior brother soon becoming the sect leader's disciple. Seeing his sincerity, he reluctantly accepted the gift. Seeing this Tian extremely delighted as it should be. As it should be to befriend junior brother Bach my honor. Henceforth hope junior brother cares more. I want disturb further than he left. Watching his fading back he couldn't help sighing Tian Min truly clever. Inner disciples only get one monthly. Yet he gifted twelve. Though not blood qi pellet still boosts qi and cultivation speed. After one he instantly became spirited. Fatigue gone energy gushed like spring. Ready to erupt luckily he reached consummate so could control this surging power. Without hesitation he opened his system. All stats slightly rose blood qi pellets not only increased blood and qi but also physique. Truly unexpected elated at gaining benefits without effort someone else ran over calling his name. Thinking it was Tian Min returning. He turned asking senior brother Tian. Are you done unexpectedly it was a senior sect member he hadn't met. Being interrogated at first meeting startled him but he understood it unintentional. Perhaps junior brother mistook me. I am Lu Hang here on orders to inform junior brother Bak Tu Niok. The sect leader summons you didn't expect to meet the sect head so soon. He instantly felt worried and nervous. Lu senior brother led him to Tan has a fluent district. As large as 10 football fields. Magnificent exquisite architecture. Just from the entrance took nearly half an hour walking. Wondering how much further he suddenly realized they arrived. An imposing man stood amidst the building. Exuding the aura of the mighty. Lu senior brother immediately paid respects sect leader. Bak Tu Niok as here he was Liet Duong sect leader. Thien Trian Tu Lu Dong his carefree elegance captivated others. Lu Dong said dismissively. Tu Niok also followed etiquette. Saying inner disciple Bak Tu Niok greet sect leader. Lu Dong looked at him solemnly do you know why I made you wait three days before summoning you. A boy in his teens how could he know anything. He shook his head disciple doesn't know please enlighten me master. Turns out because your talent was too outstanding. Top of the region but the sect leader believed talent alone wasn't enough. Also needing an unyielding will. Unafraid of hardship and challenges. Therefore he deliberately ignored you a few days. Unexpectedly you still diligently cultivated daily. This attitude greatly pleased him. Immediately he asked if you wanted to become his disciple. Hearing this his heart seemed to skip a beat. Didn't expect the good news to come so suddenly. 2NHAC knelt down respectfully disciple by 2NHAC pays respects to master. He hurriedly helped him stand stand up. You still have two elder marshal brothers both working in Go Jiang County. You'll meet them later in seven days was the 70th birthday of Tan Ha Town guardian Duong Cheng Ling's father. Then many important figures would attend. He wanted to bring him to meet the outside world. Announce his new disciple's identity. In Lu Dong's eyes he had only reached minor accomplishment contemplation realm. Not enough to cultivate external tempering. He told him to quickly reach major accomplishment contemplation realm. Then he would impart the sect's martial arts manual. Though not yet learning the sect's exclusive arts. 2NHAC still wanted the master to teach him external tempering. But he angrily shouted without breakthrough how to temper externally. So young yet full of fanciful dreams. 2NHAC had no choice but give up the idea could only secretly practice five phases golden body. Lu Dong told him to go cultivate. In seven days someone would come fetch him for the banquet. As he was about to leave 2NHAC hurriedly stopped him master. There's something I must tell you. He hoped master would help him uphold justice. He greatly approved of his vengeful spirit. As his disciple he couldn't let others bully him. Have no fear I will reclaim justice for you. Indeed with a steady backing. Everything became much easier. After thanking his master he returned to Li Diang Bang. Back in his room he started pondering the green gem from before. Externally coarser than old Luke's but inside certainly hid unknown mysteries. Otherwise the cultivator wouldn't have pursued it. He impatiently wanted to see what it hid inside. So tried using his strength to pry it open. 2NHAC exhausted all his might and techniques but couldn't make the gem show a single scratch. Ordinary stones would have shattered long ago. This further affirmed his guess that the gem indeed held secrets. 
More curious to uncover them he focused inner force then punched the gem surface. The terrifying power shook the surrounding air but the gem remained intact. Just then it suddenly floated mid-air emitting a misty glow. When he reached to grab it bright rays suddenly burst all around. Next a cracking sound rang out and the gem fell to the ground. This was the item the ghostly woman used to block his strike before. He suspected it was the fabled defensive treasure. But thinking carefully the ghost only used it when dying. Perhaps that was just one of the gem's many functions. A pity he only knew the shallows. Didn't understand many things in this world. He could only temporarily set the gem aside for now. The urgent matter was studying the five phases golden body manual. Thanks to the system support he gained photographic memory. 2NHAC swiftly memorized the entire book. It detailed external training divided into five levels. First layer skin tempering. Second layer flesh and blood. Third layer tendons and bones. Fourth layer marrow cleansing. Fifth layer adamantine body. Each extremely harsh in practice. Regrettably fourth and fifth layer's description very brief. Mostly just outlines. Perhaps this only the first volume of five phases. But he remained determined memorizing the first three levels first. Studious he utilized every free moment. A formidable energy erupted encasing his body in deep blue armor. He manipulated inner force circulating then focused might to one point. Slowly releasing outward if could control vibration frequency of might. Would create stable waves to wash the skin. But in reality external training hundred times harder than imagined. Just ten minutes he collapsed exhausted. All energy depleted. Body like drained limbs limp. Fell to the ground feeling about to die. 10 minutes couldn't complete one cycle. Meanwhile blood and chi lost too great. Who could withstand such depletion? Still thanks to the intense training bout. All his stats had slightly increased. What surprised him was his skin had become tough. More elastic seeing the results. He became much more motivated. Today he must succeed in one full circulation. Luckily there were Tian Min's chi restoring pellets. Two should be enough to sustain him. Meanwhile on the other side of Tan Ha Town. At the demonic sect's base two subordinates whispered. Not only ignoring your words but betraying you completely. That cultivator finally knew your hiding place. Though unable to capture you back he was quite satisfied with their work. Seeing the cultivator's satisfaction. The two didn't know how to refuse and demanded promotion and raise. Externally he agreed but internally disdained them for uselessness. Happily rejoicing at the promotion. The two suddenly heard noises behind them. Following were two long screams as their bodies were drained dry only skin over bones left. The demon leader smirked by 2 NHAC. Let's wait and see meanwhile. At the Li Diang Bang branch. Bai 2 NHAC finally completed one full circulation of five phases golden body to wash the skin in external tempering. Just after ending practice to bathe and sleep he discovered blood all over his body. It was bruised blood discharged from the subdermal vessels during training. Luckily he cultivated in his room. If someone outside saw him like this his secret would inevitably be exposed sooner or later. In the following days, 2 NHAC made use of every free moment to cultivate from dawn till dusk. Thanks to this all his stats steadily rose. Except spirit strength, speed physique all surpassed double the threshold. Truly intense training the 12 chi restoring pellets were all used up. Only old Luke's two left. The book guided compounding medicine to replenish chi and blood but the ingredients were too expensive. His money couldn't buy them. After washing up he lay in bed pondering. Tomorrow was the town guardian's 70th birthday. Must check the ingredient prices for the medicine bath first. Matters of drawing talismans must also be prepared gradually. Time passed swiftly. Right on time he arrived at his master's manor. Lu Dong already waited in the main hall. Happily informed his disciple of good news. Thanks to his connections Trong Ba exiled as accountant at Tan Ha Pier. Vong keen to work in the mines. No chance raising their heads again. Hearing this he grinned knowing their miserable days ahead. After repreparing master and disciple road to the banquet. The road unobstructed. Tu Lu Dong asked if his disciple now started martial arts. Learned some skills for self-defense. He didn't dare boast. Just said learned 18 linked sabers from Tun Nong Thuk at Min Chow Tavern. Hearing this his master approved but reminded to excel in saber arts the key is murderous aura. But cultivating it no easy feat. 
Plus at his age generating it very difficult. He only knew the concept from wuxia novels. So asked his master how to cultivate it. Tu Lu Dong pondered then asked do you know among ordinary people? Who would have the heaviest murderous aura? He recalled the butchers indifferently slaughtering pigs and cows. Their soulless eyes disdaining life. Indeed the legendary murderous aura. Without further thought he directly replied surely butchers. Truly surprised he guessed right. Master said could arrange for him to go to the slaughterhouse. Both optimal training conditions. And provide all necessary resources in future. The rest depended on his fate. Hearing this two Neok rejoiced at cultivating murderous aura while absorbing energy. Hitting two birds with one stone. The sound of footsteps gradually faded. The three arrived he disembarked. Before him a magnificent building that awed him. This was the famous Vong Jiang Tower of Jiangnan. Only the wealthy or eminent could dine here. Tu Lu Dong arrogantly strode into the main hall sending someone upstairs with gifts. Just entering a youth approached. Duong Qin Lang the town protector's son. Duong Qin Lang thanked Tu Lu Dong for attending his father's birthday. Next he looked at him this junior is. Tu Lu Dong eagerly introduced my new junior disciple. Bak Tu Niok he barely reacted in time. Hurriedly greeted respectfully Bak Tu Niok greets town protector Duong. Befitting a top Tan Ha official. Duong Qin Lang kept praising the two congratulations Lu brother. Chosen by you his future will surely shine bright. Hearing this other disciples envied since previously. True Kuang Gi was the outstanding youth of Liat Duong sect. Now this brat through becoming Tu Lu Dong's disciple barged in seizing his fame. Just as they gossiped head surpassed True Kuang Gi someday they suddenly heard of Dao Master New Thong of Go Dong Mountain. Everyone stopped to eagerly watch. As the master had divine sight. Able to turn rock to gold rarely glimpsed. Tu Niok only vaguely knew fortunately could personally behold the majestic master today. Curious he asked his master about the Taoist. Tu Lu Dong pondered Dao Master Nu Thong a cultivator of lofty virtues. Embodiment of light personification of righteousness. Communicating with demons and monsters. Thanks to him Tan Ha remained peaceful and stable. So all revere him next. He asked about cultivating and martial arts. Having heard cultivators gain longevity. Tu Lu Dong patiently explained cultivation has its mysteries and wonders. But claims of longevity surely exaggerated. Amid the engrossing discussion the Taoist entered. This white-haired old man was none other than Tao Master Nu Thong. Though centuries old still hale and hearty. Behind him two disciples. The fat man Trong Nok Zong the senior disciple. The youth with Gord Go Hao the second disciple. He scrutinized Go Hao, sensing him no good person. Tu Niok noticed his black mole. Waste gourd just as the stalkers described before. He realized this was who the spies mentioned. Go Hao also noticed his intent gaze. Currently unaware of his true status. Their locked eyes made him shiver cowed by the formidable aura. He was certain this Go Hao the evil cultivator from before. Go Hao also sensed something off in his expression. He suddenly halted turning back young friend. Earlier I saw a strange look on you. Do you know me? He bowed head silently flustered and confused. After thinking he politely said this is my first seeing the immortal felt deeply moved. Somewhat disrespectful may the master overlook it he sinisterly smiled really. But your eyes say otherwise. Suddenly overwhelming pressure descended from the heavens. He tried to flee but couldn't move. Felt heavy as death approaching. Or rather celestial arts. Seeing the sharp hand about to strike. He remained still as if pinned down. Against absolute might Tu Niok could only surrender. Silently awaiting death just as he closed eyes resigning himself a hand touched his shoulder. It was Master Tu Lu Dong come to take him away. With his master's support he immediately regained confidence. The terrible pressure vanished instantly. I am Liat Duong sect leader Tu Lu Dong. Does Dao Master Go mind meeting my junior? Go Hao remained aloof no. It seems I was mistaken excuse me. Watching him leave his master asked if he had some feud with him. He shook head denying unwilling to reveal the ghost girl incident. Afterward his master gravely warned though all deemed martial arts on par with celestials. In truth celestial arts far stronger. Their techniques beyond ordinary folks. At same level cultivators like breaking locks. Master advised no matter what never provoke them. The earlier pressure showed this clearly. 
even unsaid he wouldn't dare be rash. Due to the incident his master said to return first. They just met at the banquet. Go Hao followed the Tao five years. Arts far superior to his. Still is Liet Duong sect leader's disciple. He couldn't directly attack, but conflict between them inevitable someday. He must stay vigilant before then. Returning to Tan Ha he rushed to the market for talisman tools. The peddlers indeed had diverse wares. He stopped by a shop selling supplies. Just asked for wolf hair brushes when the owner hauled out varieties. Sheep rabbit weasel hair brushes. Everything available which does sir want. He scrutinized carefully but couldn't find a satisfactory one so asked to show the best. Ten minutes later the owner returned with a wooden box this is my shop's treasured piece. Please take a look sir. Opening it he was awed by the alluring beauty emitted from the brush. Like Ma Luang's divine brush truly love at first sight. He immediately eyed this heavenly brush. Seizing the chance the owner quoted fifty tails. Refusing to haggle ignoring him. He offered twenty tails seeing this. The owner explained it was Grandmaster Dan Kiet's work couldn't be cheap. But he didn't care immediately lowering to fifteen tails. He kept lowering the price. Finally before his bizarre ploy. The owner reluctantly sold for twenty tails. Afterward he bought ten sheets of rice paper and some cinnabar ink then the drugstore for medicine ingredients by night. At the Liet Duong branch disciples dorm. He took out the brush rice paper. Cinnabar and five medicine ingredients. Total sixty tails. Painfully expensive then holding the selected brush he examined it. The handle very unique bamboo exterior but actually animal bone within. Occasionally emitting strong spiritual chi. Hard to believe such a wondrous brush exists. Brush paper and ink prepared. Time to perform starting from easiest. For a beginner like him start with simple talismans. He guided the brush drawing red characters. But it was like a wild beast so difficult just to control. His trembling clumsy hand wanted left but it went right. After fierce battles with the brush. He finally completed his first simple cleansing talisman. Seeing the clumsy strokes he couldn't help sighing at the complete lack of aura or might. Failure is the mother of success. Perseverance the key to victory. The best way to tackle difficulties is meet them head on. Through repeated failures he became more determined conquering talisman arts. The strokes grew increasingly vivid. Unsure if weak or illusion. The brush grew heavier in his hand. A modern man unable to draw a simple talisman. If this leaked eternal humiliation. He swore to forego sleep until succeeding. And so trained until midnight. But still unsuccessful. He grew frustrated and desperate. Each time he had to focus intensely transmitting energy through the brush. The slightest lapse in concentration meant starting over. Suddenly he grew dizzy. Blurred vision strange sensation as if about to faint. He dared not imagine such an outcome like a laborer. Two Neok guessed the vertigo due to depleted spirit. Truly unexpected talisman drawing consumed so much energy. Continuing would overtax him. Hastily putting down the brush he closed eyes to rest. Preserving health the revolutionary capital. Still young no need to worry for firewood. After a brief respite he regained spirit. Resting he realized the cause needed to invest more spirit at previous failures. To overtake others required stepping on gas. Suddenly a golden ray flashed. Talisman scripts appeared behind enveloping him. As if possessed he smoothly painted. Graceful strokes danced across the paper. In minutes a simple talisman completed. Under his skilled hand. The ordinary paper emitted faint halo. He hurriedly examined it closely. Not only sensing powerful spiritual chi and might. The talisman's weight increased tenfold. Indeed not futile his dedication bore fruit. Seizing the sensation he decided completing the remaining talismans. But with current skills. At most 34 sheets simultaneously. More would endanger himself. Awake all night in the dorm left him exhausted. Seeing the dirty bed. He took out a cleansing talisman to test. As if possessed he flung it onto the bed. It fluttered down. Then golden brilliance flashed. Golden lightning enveloped it the bedding stains vanished with the talisman. The bed pristine as new. Hard to believe an ordinary talisman so potent. He now coveted the next six forms of talisman's manual. Meanwhile at New Thong Mountain Temple Courtyard. Go Hao discussed the ghost girl's death with his senior. His senior chided junior her death unimportant. Ki was gathering Yang Qi. The vital ingredient for master's magic weapons. 
Master specially assigned this to Go Hao. To aid Junior's task, Master even lent the Yin Yang Jade pendant. But lately he suddenly took no action. Senior warned losing the life protecting Jade pendant. Master would severely punish Go Hao knew sooner or later ITD be discovered. Just didn't expect so soon. He assured Senior had surely complete the Yang Qi gathering task. Hoping Senior could forgive a bit more time. Senior magnanimously said I can only help you extend two more months at most. If still not done by then you're on your own. Go Hao smiled slightly thank you for understanding Senior. Two months will surely complete the task. Time swiftly flowed to weekend again. After training two Neok soaked in the herbal bath at his dorm. Daily he went to the slaughterhouse cultivating murderous aura. Not only increasing it but harvesting ample soul energy. Seeing the bath ingredients. He marveled at the tremendous effects. Equal to 10 blood pills per soak. Thanks to baths and external training. His skin much tougher now. Stats rising sharply he felt close to first layer mastery in five phases fists. But currently too exhausted. To continue required the baths aid. The blood pills all used up. Only two left from old six Lu. To swiftly strengthen he unhesitantly swallowed one. Immediately senses heightened. Overflowing might body hot pulse racing manifold. Without martial arts surely would have died from overdose. Two Neok utilized the medicine's full effect for practice. Sweat and inner toxins gradually expelled. Suddenly tremendous energy erupted within. The tranquil surface violently bubbled. Indeed famed blood pills didn't exaggerate. Thrilling intoxicating sensation like rebirth. Then the system notified congratulations host reaching entry level of five phases fists. He excitedly leapt up. Attained five phases fists. With his talent no more arduous training needed. Wasting no time he tapped to upgrade to minor accomplishment stage. First spending 500 soul energy. Instantly he transformed. Flesh reforging under inner might's control. Now it's second layer flesh and blood. Skin could withstand hawk strikes. He hastily grabbed a knife stabbing his wrist. But the blade snapped on contact. His strength increased significantly. With only a few hundred soul energy left. He decisively upgraded six talisman arts to minor accomplishment. Instantly talisman scripts enveloped him. He slowly opened eyes potent spiritual force bursting out. Awakening the room filled with black smoke. Luckily he kept some cleansing talismans under pillow. One minute to clear the room. Next he sat at the table continuing drawing fully focused. Amid concentration a shadow appeared outside the window. Tonight's goal soul subduing talisman. Pacifying ghosts. Preventing demons good defense for mortals. To raise success rate. He placed a gem on the paper. As catalyst thanks to experience. He easily finished the first soul subduing talisman in minutes. Eagerly he examined it. The familiar sensation delighted him. The plain paper emitted faint energy. The blazing red characters shimmering. Suddenly sinister black energy burst out from the gem. Slightly darkening its surface. The sight astonished him. Hard to believe two mundane objects battling thus. The black mist just halfway out when a golden ray from the talisman shot out. Like a smart bullet instantly eliminating the target. After the talisman faded depleted. The shocking battle only cost one soul subduing talisman. The rest unchanged. Lamenting the lost talisman the system popped up. Soul energy abruptly jumped from 35 to 135. He didn't understand what happened. After pondering he realized it not so simple. From experience system only absorbed energy within 10 meters. He guessed something foul within the gem. Destroyed by the talisman to verify. He swiftly drew another soul subduing talisman and placed the gem atop. Soon like baking soda and vinegar. Violent reaction intense collision. Two mysterious energies battled midair. The two forces wrestled fiercely. But righteousness clearly prevailed over evil. The foulness defeated by the subduing talisman. He hastily checked. Sure enough another 100 soul energy gained. He accidentally discovered a new energy source. Deciding completing 5 phases fists upgrade to great accomplishment tonight. After a while his hands trembling. Body exhausted near collapse. He decided stopping since health the revolutionary capital. Still young no need to worry for firewood. He went to bed burying himself in blankets and quickly fell asleep until midnight. The quiet darkness suddenly chilled making him shiver violently. A shadow slid past the bedside. 
A ghost pounced for the gem on the table, seeing prey so close yet blocked by the talisman. It didn't dare act when suddenly golden brilliance flashed, a mighty force pinning it in place. The ruckus woke him, bolting up to see behind. A disheveled ghost beside the bed. The subduing talisman immobilized it. Unable to move with his skills, he felt no fear without thinking. He leapt off bed fist clenched like sandbag pounding the ghost. One character scripture punch. Great accomplishment he focused energy into right fist. Flames violently erupted a thunderous boom. Terrific might pierce the ghost. It shrieked and dispersed into black smoke. Gradually vanishing the sudden ghost disturbed his sleep. Unsure what to do with the long night ahead. A young energy rich place like Liet Duong sect infiltrated. Surely a master's guidance definitely go house minion. As ghosts seldom neared Liet Duong sect. But this one not only dared come but charged straight to his room. Surely his identity as exorcist exposed. They wanted him dead. As precaution he plastered subduing talismans on the jade pendant. Though unable to banish ghosts they warned and weakened them. With current strength could handle minor ghosts. But the hidden foe could strike any time so preparation vital. To increase might he drew five more subduing talismans. Added to the previous he took out the gem recharging. But repeating the gem grew more exhausted. The black energy weaker. Anyway just a found item he didn't mind. Placing it on the eighth talisman. The energies violently collided. With cracking sounds. Unlike before the energy wasn't completely depleted this time. Crack cracked the intact gem suddenly fractured. Then shattered to bits he was stunned. Unexpectedly so fragile. Luckily he absorbed enough to finish upgrading five phases fists to great accomplishment. Now with high level external training. His might matched Liet Duong intersect disciples. Next morning the dorm manager woke him saying someone at the back gate sought him. Annoyed from lack of sleep. He wondered who dared disturb his slumber. Opening the door he instantly sobered seeing Go Hao there. He dared come to Liet Duong sect for him. Feigning calm disciple Bok Tu Niok greets Dao Master Go. May I ask why Go Hao smiled I left something with you before. Now I've come to retrieve it knowing the gem destroyed. He had to pretend ignorance. Seeing this Go Hao threatened enough pretending ignorance. Your father is Bok Dung right. Return the yin yang jade pendant. And ill release your father. Otherwise I want mind taking another trip to Van Deep village for your mother too. He threatened having captured his father hostage. If not handed over the gem his mother next. Hearing this too Neok ground his teeth furiously. But pondering he wondered why make a three day trip just for a worthless gem. For an immortal truly troublesome. But to be safe he decided lying first ah that gem. Can return it but it's not on my person. Go Dao Trong thought he evaded again. About to torture him but he quickly lied that it fell from the ghost girl so unlucky. He already buried it away. Though furious Go Hao could only restrain himself. Asking where he buried it to Neok replied it was too dark then to recall exactly. Give him time to search surely find it. Go Hao grew more confused. Also too lazy to ascertain truth. He turned back not forgetting to order bringing the gem tonight to Lu Kuang shrine. Threatening more nonsense meant preparing a hometown grave visit. Having said that he left Bok Tu Neok frightened not daring to move. Now only option was going all in half a day left. Enough if prepared well. One who threatened his family. Had never let succeed. At night outside Lu Kuang shrine was desolate. Owls hooting on bare branches. He arrived on time. Heard three years ago a snake demon attacked here. Massacring the village accumulating resentment to become haunt of demons. He came fully prepared, though unsure of winning but for family and future. Was determined to succeed no matter what. The chill night wind rustled the grass and trees. He waited alone in the silent night. Long past the meeting time he held the gem and went to the well too late I am leaving. This pendant ill toss down the well you fish it out yourself. Just then a familiar voice sounded behind what's the rush Bach junior brother. I only wanted to see if you brought backup. But Go Hao paid it no heed. Just snapped enough nonsense. Hand over the pendant and we're even don't owe each other anything. No more beating around Tu Neok flung the parcel hard into his face. Go Hao deftly caught it sighing in relief. But opening it he was horrified to find it completely different. Knowing if master discovered this. Had surely face heavy punishment. Meanwhile Tu Neok also anticipated his reaction. 
having drawn his sword when flinging the gem. Before the opponent could react, he charged at lightning speed. Go Hao hastily took out his gourd. Three vengeful spirits leapt out charging him, morphing into three vicious ghosts. With his abilities, three minor ghosts no concern. Two Neok had long prepared subduing talismans. Next three talismans shot forth, striking the ghosts before they reacted immobilized. Then mighty force burst out, the ghosts vanishing instantly, recognizing they were subduing talismans. Go Hao was shocked someone in tiny Tan Ha town knew talisman arts. Seeing a formidable foe he didn't dare be complacent, immediately summoning his mightiest vengeful spirit. A shadow leapt from the gourd, morphing into a three-meter ghost. Brawny as a resurrected general, he sensed its tremendous might. Before he could react the colossal ghost appeared before him, gaping ma roaring deafeningly. The yin chi made breathing difficult. Its huge round eyes and pouty lips were unforgettable. The ghost wasted no words. Slashing down luckily he dodged in time. Otherwise minced like the ground. With innate talent he seized the chance leaping up. To deliver a fatal blow atop its head. But the seasoned foe. Flew up avoiding the strike then. It unleashed soaring dragon divine sword. A terrifying blade chi swiped at him. Seeing Bok Tu Neok gravely wounded by the ghost he summoned. Go Hao thought the fight over. But his golden body minor accomplishment. Plus prepared diamond talismans. Withstood three strikes easily. Go Hao again shocked by his might. How did a brat of barely ten attain external training? He thought him only temporarily lucky. Commanding the ghost continue attacking. The ghost charged at lightning speed. Closing to within one meter. He suddenly leapt up high. He unleashed Sun Nanxia's 18 linked blades. Slashing continuously the world momentarily empty. Despite only minor accomplishment enough to shred the ghost. A deathly aura enveloped Go Hao. He couldn't believe a rural brat had such freakish talent. Not letting him catch breath. He took a talisman applying it vanishing in a blink. Then appearing right before the foe. It was a body lightning talisman. Speed like a swallow. Go Hao couldn't react in time. Only blocking with his arm it severed. He desperately attacked but easily evaded. Seeing disadvantage Go Hao fled. But he doggedly pursued. Forced to use his trump card. He shook his gourd chanting an incantation. The earth violently shook and a colossal zombie leapt up. Sturdy physique like a sea monster. He sensed the danger. Having heard zombies stronger than ghosts several fold. So he nourished it with his own blood. Though robust zombies moved sluggishly. He seized the opening while it struck. Darting behind unleashing 18 linked kill. Slashing chaotically world empty again. But before piercing it a heaven shaking roar sounded behind. Turning back he saw a giant fist barreling at him. No time to evade he could only block with his sword. The fists might like a 10 ton truck. Blasting him away thick tank-like skin rendered 18 linked blades useless. Not yet collected the fist charged again. In mortal danger he was forced to utilize five phases fists. But still couldn't withstand one blow. As the next fist neared. He focused all inner force into his left fist. A violent energy surged. Then he unleashed one character scripture punch. Inner force becoming golden rays shooting at the foe. Boom tremendous might exploded on the zombie forming a 10-meter fireball. But when extinguished it remained unharmed. Skin harder than any tank. Withstanding blades bullets cannons. One character scripture punch at great accomplishment yet unharmed meant inhuman physiology. Martial arts futile he decided retreating to find another way. Bok Tu Neok used a body lightning talisman to flee but the zombie relentlessly pursued. Recalling fighting the ghost yielded ample soul energy. Enough to upgrade 18 linked blades to great accomplishment. Though unsure if useful he still wanted to try. Take any chance without hesitation. He tapped to upgrade a violent energy surged through his body. Two Neok turned wielding his sword yelling come on just then. The zombie smashed its fist at him. As it neared he unleashed maxed 18 linked blades. Slashing chaotically indeed max 18 linked blades peerlessly mighty. The zombie hacked to pieces. Flesh splattering everywhere Go Hao exhausted. Unable to resist further. Terrified he reflexively backpedaled several steps you can't kill me. I am disciple of New Thong Dao Master. Have you thought of the consequences? But Tu Neok disregarded him. Snapping back don't let him know then. 
speaking so he lopped off his head. He gazed at the corpse solemnly dare use my family to threaten me. This is how you'll end up to avoid discovery. He decided cleaning up thoroughly. Go house corpse and the zombie tossed down the well. Also scavenging many treasures. To prevent anyone drinking contaminated well water. Two Neok blocked it with a huge boulder. Finally he used a cleansing talisman. Golden radiance flashed the scene restored to original. Seeing all clean. He went out surveying the area. Planning to search Go Hao's lair inside the room nothing unusual. But in the backyard. He was shocked finding a corpse pit several meters wide. The zombie nursery. Having slain the evil cultivator he scavenged two cultivation manuals. Indeed cultivation levels varied. So did magic weapons. Beneath the dilapidated building a secret cave. Continuing the search luckily. On the table in the next room were two of Go Hao's cultivation diaries. After checking elsewhere unremarkable. He prepared to leave just exiting strange sounds came from the well he tossed the corpses in. The water boiling as if something writhing below. Two Neok couldn't imagine a vicious monster lurking beneath the mundane well. Next morning Bok Tu Neok hastily returned to the dorm after practice. Last night's spoils still not sorted. Busy stashing them away when the door burst open. He was startled but luckily used his body to conceal the items. The master rarely took initiative to invite him so he didn't dare delay. Hastily going to greet him. Entering the living room two unfamiliar guests. Master introduced them as left guardian Lu Duong and internal affairs chief Tan Vu. Top experts of Liet Duong sect. Chief Tan eyed him sharply. Immediately noticing something off about his shoulder. Bok Tu Neok lied that Kim Sun Chu had struck him during blade practice this morning. Nothing escaped the chief's keen eyes. Master explained he let him help slaughter pigs for killing aura training since he liked blade work. The reason for summoning was acquainting him with the experts. Also asking why he had come to see him before. Turned out asking leave to visit home for the upcoming Lunar New Year. Thinking it important master immediately approved. Also telling him to bring back some beast meat to nourish himself. Just outside he overheard them discussing the Li clan. Rumor has it Li Huan succeeded as patriarch. Li Tan borrowed Jia Manor's might. Swallowing up the small businesses. It seems the Li clan quickly recovered after the clan's destruction. Master told him to get beast meat from Lu Hang. Though not large several times pork's weight. Not waiting long he opened the package. A mouthwatering aroma wafted out to Neok planned on cooking it but recalled last night's spoils still not cleared. Immediately he took out the two cultivation diaries from under his bed. He skimmed through them completely. Learning cultivation had three realms. Qi condensation awakened spiritual intelligence he firmly believed higher realms existed. Magic weapons also classified by level. Distinguished as powerful or weak by prohibitions. Go Hao's gourd was lowest grade magic weapon. The bell controlling zombies inferior grade. Possibly slightly stronger though both low tier. The bells might double the gourds. He decided thoroughly studying the books later. Hoping to find cultivation and mystic arts. Next he opened the system. After last night's brilliant battle. Soul energy exceeded 1000 again. More surprising after maxing out 5 phases fists an upgrade appeared. He sensed the death chi absorption process more fluid. Perhaps higher spiritual attributes shortened primordial chi transformation time. He focused spiritual energy to his head. Succeeding in collecting his first strand. A sign of attaining death chi penetrating divine art initial mastery. Next an extremely potent energy burst from his body. Finally he reached the realm of pure body penetrating spirit and harmonious primal energy. Slowly opening his eyes they gleamed with determination. Emitting pale blue light. Then the system popped up congratulating unlocking the spiritual force attribute. He promptly clicked to upgrade. Incredibly only one soul energy point per level. Magic power increased with spiritual force. Now two Neok just needed thoroughly studying those two manuals to enhance his abilities. After he immediately went to the pier to return home with his two friends. Three months since last seeing them Bok Tu Neok now successor disciple of sect leader Tu Lu Dong. While his friends still academy students. The gap in status made him uncomfortable with his two friends. He thought their friendship would stay as when they first met. But now a great distance due to different standings. People change over time. Feelings also gradually fade. 
with four returning only half a day to the village. Right at dinner time, his parents had prepared a lavish meal awaiting their son's return. They waited two hours outside the gate. When seeing him appeared tearfully moved. His mother hugged him tightly, pouring out her longing of the past months into it. She worriedly asked if he caused trouble in the new town, like his aunt said. Then, how he became a disciple to someone important now. Two Neok awkwardly faced their barrage of questions, only saying it was very convoluted. Seeing his parents well, he felt more at ease, deciding bringing them to live with him in Tan Ha Town after the new year. After dinner, he visited relatives for a while, unexpectedly so late already. On the way back, Tu Niok was drawn to a small village along the road. He never noticed it before, unaware of another village near Van Deep, probably built just these past months. Curious Bok Tu Niok approached for a look, seeing children frolicking, adults drumming and gonging merrily, welcoming the new year, looking ordinary like any other village. But what puzzled him was why no lights in the night. Suddenly he sensed something amiss. A chill went down his spine. Though bustling outwardly, their eyes lacked life's vitality. Just empty corpses that could move. Only then did he realize this was the legendary ghost village. Due to the bone chilling yin chi mist everywhere, the subduing talismans on his chest suddenly flashed. Still, he inadvertently felt drawn to the ghost village. Without thinking, he turned and fled for his life. If he hesitated, likely couldn't escape. Luckily, with a body lightening talisman, he evaded the ghost village, stopping under a tree by his home. Only then did he recall it was the ghost ravine in Go Hao's diary. Unexpectedly, so close to Van Deep Village, Go Hao's records mentioned the ghost ravine before, where powerful high level ghosts gathered. It was said even top experts would have no chance escaping once entered. Without the body lightening talisman, perhaps he wouldn't have seen the next day's sun. Seeing her son's strange complexion, his mother thought a ghost attacked, planning to ask Min Thuk's aid. But he stopped her curiously, asking if people lived at Long Duyen Bay. Mother recounted a small village named Lin Hua existed before, but two years ago all suddenly vanished. She warned him not to go near that ominous place. He realized the situation more dire than imagined if the ghost ravine expanded. Perhaps Van Deep Village would face calamity. Thinking so, he told his parents to pack up, preparing to move. In a blink, three years passed Bok Tu Niok, now a handsome youth. Bearing reaching the heavens today, he trained martial arts atop the mountain. In three years, he cultivated piercing cloud sword to peak, also, learning other secret martial arts. This no one knew except himself, but regrettably, regarding cultivation, still stuck. Death Chi penetrating divine art only had volume one. Even cultivating to the fifth layer couldn't advance further, while immortal cultivation had nine layers. To survive the law of the jungle world must enhance strength, no more stagnating. Each time descending the mountain, he met a mysterious old man. He tried befriending him, but the man was eccentric, rarely responding. As time passed, he gave up on that, shifting to investigating other martial arts masters. After three years, he still remained with the Liet Duong sect branch. One to care for his parents too because they were understaffed. With the heavy workload, he just entered when a new mission came in. Seems Thu Bin and Dong Lao waited for him. Now Tan Thu Bin reached real external solid bones initial stage. Dong Lao external solid bones with ample experience. In charge of leading new disciples. This time an extermination mission. Usually done by senior cadres. But due to the urgent situation, they were occupied so assigned to the three. Wa Duok Su of Thien Hat Pharmacy. Discovered dead in his home days ago. Investigation revealed the killer Trong Sun five bandits. 30 contribution points per bandit killed. Enough to exchange for martial arts elixirs. Weapons one contribution point could directly exchange for one tail of silver. But the rewards this time exceeded the standard. Dong Lao further explained. The main goal was recovering the stolen martial arts manual. If successful an extra 100 contribution points. First time Bok Niok heard of rewards so great. He was curious about the Trong Sun 5 bandits abilities. According to Dong Lao's gathered intel. Only the leader trained at Thiet Y Martial Hall. Now likely reached external solid bones realm. The others his disciples. Much weaker not difficult to handle with everyone's skills. Two Niok thought they were formidable masters. But with current external solid bones realm he could single-handedly vanquish them. 
This place intersected Lee clan territory. Go clan village and Loy clan manor. The bandits knew to occupy it. No wonder could live unrestrained. This time all three sweeping the mountain. Also eliminating harm for the people. He placed Trong's son at a treacherous peak. Difficult to attack the three decided following the cliffside to conceal themselves. Not daring to make any noise after half an hour climbing. They finally reached the bandit's hideout. At the dizzying height the structures were built from surrounding trees. Not only fitting the terrain but very hidden. Easy to keep watch the other two wanted to sneak in and scout but Dong Lao stopped them. Indeed his battle experience was profound. Immediately spotting the enemy's traps. They had no choice but to carefully follow Dong Lao. Thinking to slip in for a surprise attack. Unexpectedly he went straight to the sentry post detected by the bandits. The guard saw the three strangers. Startled shouting who's their intruders. Raiders in the mountain fort hearing the bell ringing. The bandits hurriedly grabbed weapons preparing to fight. Some went reporting to the leader. Some circled behind to ambush. In just a short time. Everyone was in position ready. Truly can't judge by appearances. Trong Sun five bandits looked righteous. Scholarly men but were white-collared thieves. Scar-faced leader scrutinized them asking their purpose. Dong Lao bluntly replied to kill them. He said they never caused Liet Duong sect trouble. Must be a misunderstanding Dong Lao pointed at his face wasn't it your third brother who killed Liet Duong's Wa Duok Su. That third brother naturally denied it. Bald-faced lies and false accusations. Even cursing them for intentionally causing trouble. The fort leader fooled lost all reason. Daring to falsely accuse them truly the denser the forest the louder the birds. Dong Lao just scolded them ignorant fools then ordered the attack. The three drew weapons striking first. Since these murderous thieves deserved no mercy. Dong Lao unleashed a heaven-breaking palm. But the leader countered evenly. The remaining four overwhelmed had to turn attacking Tan Thu Bin and Bak Niok. Number four slashed his weapon at him. Surely unaware he courted disaster. Bak Tu Niok now reached external solid bones peak. That attack like a child's play. Dealing with such petty moves simple. Time to demonstrate true power. Just as the blade neared. He used a decapitation blade art move giving him a taste of power. Number four stared at his halved blade. Unable to believe his eyes. Before he could recover Bak Tu Niok had leapt up then appeared behind. A stream of blood pierced him. Too swift to feel pain. Number four let out an agonized shriek then collapsed in the blood dead on the spot. By the leader realized too late. He still had to worry for himself. Do Khan couldn't believe his eyes. The scene with number four pained him. Rage surged immense power erupting. The demonstration scared others witless. But his opponent was Tan Thu Bin. Against absolute might other skills futile. Thu Bin seized the flaw. Immediately attacking Do Khan writhed in pain collapsing in his blood dying. As Thu Bin prepared continuing number 6 suddenly leapt down from behind slashing at his head. All within Bak Tu Nyak's expectations. Before number 6 could react Bak Tu Nyak appeared behind. Followed by a loud boom. A Vajra scattering jade fist sent number 2 to heaven. Witnessing his two brothers die by Bak Tu Nyak's hand. Do Khan endured the intense pain. Leaping up he focused all might into his left fist ill shred you to pieces. Before finishing the sandbag-sized fist shot at him. Strength like a maddened unbridled horse. Seeing the fist about to smash his head. Bak Tu Niok wasn't frightened. Calmly extending his fist one scripture punch. The colliding forces created violent tremors. But with external solid bones peak strength. All before him rendered futile. The colossal fist shredded to pieces. Tan Thu Bin hurriedly thanked him but Bak Tu Niok remained vigilant. Not daring be negligent until enemies completely destroyed. Only number three left. The two decided joining forces eliminating him. But number three also saw the bleak situation. If he stayed head die like the rest. Seeing no chance of winning he turned fleeing. Bak Tu Niok tailed him like a shadow. He ran to a vertical cliff. Thinking mutual destruction he leapt into the deep ravine. Sliding down a rope to the other mountainside. Number 3 thought he escaped but didn't expect Bak Tu Niok had foreseen it. Just concentrating inner force in the feet then releasing at lightning speed allowed free aerial maneuvering. That is using cloud treading steps. Bak Tu Niok stepped across space. 
appearing right before number three. Next he smashed an intense punch at his face. A loud boom sounded the over one meter thick tree snapped in two. Bak Tu Niok approached seeing number three motionless beneath the dirt. But thanks to spiritual sense, he still heard a heartbeat. Sure enough in the swirling gust, he revealed his true vicious colors. Turned out long-reached external solid bones realm. Hiding his strength scheming for status. But no need pretending anymore. He growled even the leader didn't know. I reached external solid bones realm long ago. What sights had Bak Tu Niok not seen before? An external solid bones daring to boast. This area far from the Fort Dong Lao and Thu Bin couldn't come immediately. He comfortably displayed his power. His aura astonished number three leaving him speechless mouth agape. His body exuded billowing killing aura. His mighty martial arts flashing around like lightning. The manifestation of external solid bones peak realm. An immense pressure pierced the skies. Transforming into a death ray aimed at the enemy. Number three couldn't believe his eyes. A brat reaching this level was impossible. To spare him from suffering. Bak Tu Niok said had grant him a swift death. The deep green inner flame blazed like battle armor. Number three desperately unleashed reverse wind blade. The purple sword flying at Bak Tu Niok. But before absolute might. It was but a mantis attacking a car. Bak Tu Niok brandished his sword ignoring the enemy's attacks. Rushing before him next to 18 continuous 18 linked blades. Each sword strike parried. Like homing missiles locking on target. Continuously bombarding a berserk offensive. Number 3 heavily injured. Collapsed to the ground before he could beg for mercy his throat slit. Bak Tu Niok approached the corpse. Searching for the martial arts manual. Luckily he obtained more contribution rewards again. Dong Lao and Tan Thu Bin likely eliminated the leader on their side. Bak Tu Niok grabbed the head and hurried back to base. Taking a shortcut along the riverbank. Suddenly a familiar voice sounded from the water. Looking over a boatman ferried a Taoist priest across the river. Discussing business dealings. His instinct told him this was no simple matter. He swiftly hid in the bushes observing. The Taoist was Trong Nok Zong. Disciple of Elder Nu Thong. The boatman was Tui Trung Tian bandit leader. Three years ago Lu Lao Luke stole five phases fists from him but got killed. Now Trong Nok Zong colluded with Tui Trung Tian. Surely plotting something. Finished Trong Nok Zong left using Qinggong. Drifting atop the water such skill odd Bak Tu Niok. Truly the legendary immortal master. He closely observed the Taoist. At minimum he reached the fourth layer of Qi condensation. There were nine total cultivation layers Bak Tu Niok only reached the third. In Tan Ha Town only a few cultivators. Besides him and disciples of Elder Nu Thong there was also Chao Ha Tian helping town Lord Duong Tran Tu. And Lu Lao Tai of the Lu clan. To have a disciple like Go Hao. Elder Nu Thong likely wasn't ordinary or virtuous. Nor could Trong Nok Zong grow a wholesome tree. Dong Lao and Tan Thu Bin prepared to assist but Bak Tu Niok excellently finished the mission. The three decided returning to the fort searching for treasures. Trong Sun five bandits were here for years. Surely amassed many rare valuables. After a period of ransacking. They left nothing untouched. Dong Lao obtained 50 liang of silver and 3 gold ingots. Bak Tu Niok found 25 liang of silver and a chest of gems. Worth several mansions. Tan Thu Bin only cared for martial arts. Finding two secret manuals one iron palm. One willow leaf blade art. This time just turning in the heads in five directions refining medicine. The rest their bonus. The three shouldered their spoils departing. Midway they met a huge traveling convoy like an army. Some guards brandished blades escorting carriages. Hard to believe with that ghost fort on the mountain some still dared travel openly. From Underworld Info. Ko Van Kak was no lightweight. Whoever dared rob their convoy got exterminated. Earlier the Lee clan destroyed by the ghost fort. Now recovered and returned to Tan Ha Town surely for revenge. Seeing that magnificent convoy. Bak Tu Niok felt like challenging the ghost fort. The three only paused briefly before continuing. Returning to headquarters Grand Hall discussing Liet Duong affairs. They brought the heads to the department. Staff politely accepted them and said to wait for verification. Before tallying contribution points, the three's great achievement made others envious. 
especially these two who hated others surpassing them. Both just loitered causing trouble, often goading their senior brother against Bak Tu Niok. Though stronger himself all eyes on Bak Tu Niok angered him. Bak Tu Niok sincerely advised. Don't think having the sect leader as master. Means you can flaunt wanting to best outstanding disciples. It's not that easy. The other was incensed. Deciding to teach this brat a lesson. Bak Tu Niok politely thanked for senior brother's advice. Tu Niok will engrave it in his heart. Still Bak Tu Niok didn't care about competing for disciple status. He thanked him for the kind reminder. Seeing that they had no choice but get involved personally. Threatening to teach Bak Tu Niok his place. Though at external solid bones peak for safety. Bak Tu Niok also politely declined. Tan Thu Bin saw they went too far stepping up saying Bak Tu Niok now the supreme commander's disciple. Might not necessarily lose this angered true Quang Gi. Who took the initiative challenging Bak Tu Niok. Things progressed too swiftly catching others off guard. Before people could react true too long coldly mocked of course it's not junior brother Bok's turn lecturing me. I just want to temper junior brother Bok a bit. He won't look down on me right. With the opponent saying so refusing would be impolite. Both adopted combat stances. This contest affected their standing in everyone's eyes for the upcoming top disciple selection. True Kuang Gi shot into the sky swift as lightning. Appearing before Bok Tu Niok. Midair he unleashed the poisonous eagle assault ten forms. Releasing a fierce aura like an eagle clawing its prey. Bok Tu Niok recognized this was left protector True Tin's renowned ultimate art. But he wasn't worried at all. Since his opponent was True Kuang Gi not left protector True Tin. At external solid bones peak realm. Even standing still Bok Tu Niok couldn't be harmed. While True Tu Long still pranced about midair his one scripture fist rumbled. The massive fist smashing him far away. Everyone odd at Bok Tu Niok's might. He easily won in the end. The other two left together in a sorry state. He guessed their real purpose not comparing martial arts but establishing prestige for the top disciple contest. They valued this title greatly. Sure to gain tremendous benefits. The two disciples tearfully complained to their master only to get scolded badly. He nearly died from rage with my background and elder neeps. You had a chance at top disciple. Clearly now don't even think about it. Now everyone knew they couldn't beat Bok Tu Niok. If just relying on tricks could get the top disciple title how could they face the sect leader? Disappointed with the two disciples. He told them to return first. Losing to Bok Tu Niok was disappointing enough. Now scolded by their master angered the two. Instead of reflecting in their rooms they went to the Liet Duong disciples quarters. True Kuang Gi prepared three years for the top disciple race. Now could only watch others steal it. When about to give up Quach Chin Duong cleverly suggested killing Bok Tu Niok. True Kuang Gi angrily shouted Quach Chin Duong. Are you crazy not to mention the sect leader? If master heard this wed be finished. But Quach Chin Duong casually laughed you don't understand master at all. Do you know why he's been so idle these years? True Kuang Gi felt everything needed careful thought. Moreover the two weren't even Bok Tu Nyak's match. But Quach Chin Duong couldn't restrain telling him. Elder Neep is arriving in a few days. No time for deliberation. He continued goading True Kuang Gi to act moreover they weren't the only ones wanting revenge on Bok Tu Nyak. Like Trong Ba demoted working under master. Or Vong Keen exiled to the mines had good relations with him. Both declined because of Bok Tu Niok. But weren't weak either. Per the ranks Vong Keen external intoxication Trong Ba reached internal cultivation realm. They could defeat Bok Tu Niok. Here at the Liet Duong branch. The sect leader suddenly summoned Bok Tu Niok. He hastily went since in three years his master hadn't taught him anything. Even mentioning inner cultivation got scolded. Turned out Tu Lu Dong knew he beat True Kuang Gi. Progressing faster than expected with current strength. He had a chance at the top disciple title. Bok Tu Niok immediately agreed to join. Master said there were three criteria talent. Strength and contributions the chief judge this time was Elder Neep Van Hao. Though not close with Master intimate with True Tin. Still with current strength Bok Tu Niok could win. But as precaution. Tu Lu Dong decided teaching him the unique heavenly captivation palm. Bok Tu Niok gazed in rapture. Drooling learning this move. 
The Marshall sisters would long for him day and night. Heavenly Captivation Palm had seven moves, 84 motions. A fast defense, fast defense technique. Gracefully supple yet hiding lethal essence. Grasping the core allowed full exertion to defeat all under heaven. Martial arts since ancient times meant killing. Though named Captivation, Heavenly Captivation Palm was equally deadly. Next cracking sounds followed, the cup in his hand shattering. Bach II Neok strove emulating his master's every move. Though not perfect as a disciple, he must grasp all skills. With the Soul Force system's aid, he swiftly memorized the 84 Heavenly Captivation moves. Each move combined with inner force. Couldn't deviate under Tu Lu Dong's patient guidance. Bach II Neok quickly mastered the training techniques. At this rate, had surely attained entry level in 12 days. In the past three years, he ceaselessly trained. Aside stormy days each dawn, he arrived at Trung Nian Peak. But today, some uninvited guests came. Crunching sounds emitted from the bushes behind. From experience, Bach II Neok knew people lay in ambush. More than one, he immediately grew wary. Gripping his blade, preparing to adapt. Abruptly, a sharp sword shot at his neck. At his current realm, that attack like child's play to Bach II Neok. He nimbly evaded, thinking, Indeed, I am the target. Looking back, it was the demoted Trong Ba and Vong Keen. These two ambushed for days here, just waiting for him to come train. They wanted to assassinate, then vanish. But the plan failed. Yet Bach II Neok was warier than they thought. He looked at them a bit contemptuously, elder brother Vong. Steward Trong, though we have some grudges. No need for this, right? The two aggressively retorted, not daring to resent the sect leader's disciple, just that he likes blocking others' paths too much. Bach II Neok immediately knew who the ringleader was. Turned out True Kuang Gi wasn't virtuous either. Before he could react, Vong Keen charged over sword in hand. Trong Ba right behind, but before absolute might. All tactics were futile. When one meter apart, Bach II Neok unleashed the divine radiance barrier art. Inner force shielding him in an invisible barrier. All attacks blocked. Vong Keen shocked at the scene. Unaware of such a formidable technique. Before he could react, Bach II Neok already counterattacked. Fweet he shot into the sky, leaving a green streak appearing before the enemy. He descended, slashing his green blade, splitting his sword in two. Vong Keen couldn't evade, raising his sword to block, but it was a decapitation art. The tremendous might severed his sword wielding arm. He collapsed, blood gushing. Trong Ba chilled in cold sweat seeing this. Reaching this mastery of force at minimum required external solid bones peak. Hard to believe without seeing that the boy had such extraordinary ability. But still only at external realm. Couldn't beat internal cultivation. Trong Ba charged, swinging his sword at Bak Tu Neok. Though the blade neared his forehead, Bak Tu Neok remained unruffled as a mountain. Since he knew the enemy's strength was feeble, just empty fame, he focused inner force into his blade, then slashed down. A torrent of power spread into the ground, in a flash reaching beneath the enemy's feet. Trong Ba heavily injured by the underground force erupting. Against his might, the other couldn't withstand. You don't harm me. I don't hurt you. Bak Tu Neok ended him with one sword stroke. The severed head bounced like a ball. Vong Keen terrified to the point of wetting himself. He couldn't believe an internal cultivator lost to one at external solid bones peak. Survival instinct made him leap up fleeing but failed. Bak Tu Neok didn't plan letting him go. With enemies must be ruthless the sword flashed. One stroke like the reaper's blade. Slicing Vong Keen in two then. He shifted attention to the rock. Since he noticed movement behind it earlier. Approaching it was the loser True Kuang Gi. He witnessed it all now about to die under his blade. He writhed begging for mercy junior brother Bok. It was Quach Chin Duong's idea. He drove me to do it it was him wanting you dead. But Bok Tu Neok didn't hesitate at all. Hesitating a second harmed oneself. The icy blade severed his throat. Blood gushing like a fountain Bok Tu Neok watched True Kuang Gi writhing in blood. Stepping forward stabbing a few more times who are you two? Threaten me only one outcome. Murderous aura enveloped the entire forest. Wild beasts fleeing in panic within a kilometer radius. After dealing with them he gathered the corpses then summoned spirit fire magic incinerating them. The flames swiftly spread, becoming a small volcano. When the fire died down only ashes remained. To not leave traces he took out a cleansing talisman. 
Soap bubbles rising clearing the earth. Turned out the top disciple contest more important than he thought. Hence their ruthless means. Luckily Bach II Neok always hid his skills. Otherwise today's consequences unimaginable. Walking alone on the mountain path. He met the eccentric old man who often appeared. Usually Bach II Neok took the initiative greeting. But today he asked first good morning. Oh you've killed someone. Bach II Neok also startled. Not knowing how he guessed correctly. When about to inquire he replied don't be tense. For cultivators of our generation. Killing is nothing. I want to expose you to others. Bach II Neok met him for years yet never knew he was an immortal master. Even knowing of his top disciple contest. Bach II Neok ashamed at his ignorance. He was very curious how he knew of the killing. He said he could see the bloody aura on Bach II Neok. Even cleansing talismans couldn't fully conceal it. He also reminded descending the mountain like this. Ordinary people couldn't tell but masters could easily detect. Turned out he long knew Bach II Neok was the sect leader's disciple. The warning also for his future. Bach II Neok also hastily asked how to cleanse the bloody aura. Bach II Neok begged him to instruct. But he demanded something in return. He hesitated but the old man promised teaching the vengeance cleansing art to purge killing aura and bestow the divine sight art to see through clothes. After three days he arranged meeting at Tan Ha Town's gate. Before leaving he gave Bach II Neok a white jade talisman engraved with the vengeance cleansing art. Leaving the rest for him to figure out Bach II Neok examined the jade. When his mind sank into an ocean of wisdom. Opening his eyes the vengeance cleansing art engraved in his mind. Two Neok joyfully realized this was a fabled immortal treasure. When about to thank him he had vanished. Unexpectedly the town still concealed such a formidable immortal master. Bach II Neok very curious about this old man. Decided investigating more on his return. He promptly returned to the Liet Duong branch. When about to go eat breakfast he met Quach Chin Duong. True Tin's second disciple. He feared Bach Tu Neok more than ghosts. Since he still lived meaning True Kuang Gi and company met misfortune. Quach Chin Duong panicked. Spewing nonsense then fleeing fearing being a step late meant death. Having more important business. Bach Tu Neok decided sparing him this time. After breakfast he hurried to the secret archive pavilion. Within Liet Duong's four pavilions. Managed by the punishment hall. Only external realm disciples allowed entry. It stored the town's greatest knowledge. Bach II Neok paid 10 contribution points for one hour's access. He patiently sought all information on the mountain hermit. After meticulous searching, he finally found clues about the old man. The book stated Chu Heen Kai of a wealthy family. Passed the imperial exam at but unknown why obsessed with immortality. Always roaming seeking immortals. Spent three years wasting time. After his aged parents fell ill family declining. He became a shrine keeper at Lu Kang Shrine for a living. After Lu Kang Shrine abandoned. He moved to the Earth God Shrine at Trung Nian Mountain. The two words incense fire made Bach Tu Neok realize could he be of the incense fire path. Legend said incense fire path an immortal sect rooted in the Jonghu. Once dominated the Jonghu. None could rival it but too mighty thus suppressed by many powers. The former Lu Kang shrine keeper was of incense fire path but mysteriously vanished before the plague epidemic erupted. The court couldn't determine the cause so blamed the shrine keeper. Intuition told Bak Tu Neok the former master wasn't simple. He needed caution at the appointed time. Bak Tu Neok promptly arrived the divine sight art another reason. Most important was right protector causing too great a stir since true Kuang Gi's demise. True Tin frantically sought the culprit even mobilizing the punishment hall. Of experts with rich experience. Efficiency hundredfold the authorities. Bak Tu Neok constantly panicked. Unable to train he followed the old man half a li when unable to refrain asking their destination. He suddenly asked you know I am surnamed Chu. Seems past days you investigated me. Bak Tu Neok flustered. Fearing being led monster hunting. The metal armored strange beast even internal solid bones peak Tan Chu Quan still needed his master's aid defeating it. Let alone him he didn't want to risk himself thus turned fleeing. But the old man swiftly stopped him saying he hadn't finished. Chu Heen Kai explained with current strength. Facing demons no different than moths to flame. Though old he wasn't so reckless. 
Each time passing Liu Kang Shrine, he gave wide berth. This time, the goal was capturing a spirit monster hiding in the deep forest. Bok Tu Niok confused between spirit and demon monsters. He explained creatures cultivating gaining intelligence become demons, while plants gaining intelligence become spirits. Dead objects like rocks gaining intelligence become monsters. Collectively called spirit monsters, usually to travel the world, spirit monsters devour surrounding life, giving rise to souls. Though essence can't leave the earth, souls can transform into different shapes. And spirit monster essence, overflowing with spirit, can be material for us refining artifacts to freely move in the mortal realm. Metal monsters often eat living things to form hosts, though essence still tied to birthplace. Hosts can transform into various forms. Since spirit monster essence brimming with spirit, very precious. Used refining artifacts. This time their target was the withered tree spirit. Still, Bok Tu Niok hesitated. The name alone meant no easy opponent. But he reassured, since the withered tree spirit just transformed, still weak. He could defeat it only needing Bok Tu Niok's assistance with a few moves. The sudden gentle attitude made Bok Tu Niok doubt his strength. He angrily retorted, "One could doubt his character, but not his ability. Though only at innate chi layer five, he confident could easily defeat a weak withered tree. Seeing him so certain, Bok Tu Niok reluctantly agreed, not daring to inquire further. Bok Tu Niok reluctantly followed. Deeper in the forest, thicker the trees. While cutting a path through the brush, Bok Tu Niok ambushed by a stealthy cobra, but with abundant experience." He dodged, spinning, severing it in two. He said, "Concentrate, nearing the crucial spot." After over an hour climbing, they finally arrived. His serious face pointed ahead. It's right there. Bok Tu Niok saw an enormous lush tree, seeming normal externally, but suddenly green silhouettes crawled from the trunk, becoming bizarre creatures. He shocked, but the old man stabilized the situation with magic. He explained the valley's gathered heavenly essence nourished the exuberant trees. As they entered the valley, ferocious roars sounded from the deep forest. Bok Tu Niok panicked, but he remained calm. Only hearing him, he recognized a young tiger starting evolution. Not very threatening, he drew his blade, preparing his stance. Indeed, he just pretended calm, then bragged about his blade arts and artifacts. But had to admit his weapons very eye-catching. Before asking, he boasted the golden blade, an immortal artifact though low grade. Whether he valued it or not, Bok Tu Niok still very impressed, since his strongest weapon only sixth grade, with hidden enemies nearby, he needed better arms guarding against mishaps. The two vigilantly prepared mentally. Suddenly, a 440 pounds tiger leapt out, roaring deafeningly, but he remained composed. He said, "Time to display true might." With a terrifying roar, the tiger pounced at his neck, but a backward step fooled it. Next, he swung his blade, counter-attacking. The sword emitted spirit aura. At his command, shooting into the tiger's bones, piercing its skull. Bok Tu Niok gained 568 soul force points, unexpectedly stronger than external solid bones masters. Finished, they continued toward the withered tree spirit, the main target. After the thrilling battle, Bok Tu Niok respected him more. Soon, both reached the tree base. From afar, normal but up close, horrifically enormous. Roots everywhere. Massive trunk exuding the spirit monster's unique aura. Even growing two colossal eyes on the trunk. He warned Bok Tu Niok, "Be careful, since the roots and branches highly dangerous weapons." Then he planted three incense sticks at the base. Meaningfully gazing, he said, attacking the withered tree's essence, forcing it to summon ghosts blocking them. Then Bok Tu Niok must destroy them. Bok Tu Niok had to buy time for him within three incense sticks. He displayed magic again, stabbing his blade into the trunk. Fresh red blood gushed like a stream. First time Bok Tu Niok saw a tree could bleed like a person. Suddenly the earth violently shook. Dozens of shadows crawled from the woods. The withered tree frantically writhed. Everything seeming alive before reacting. Several green silhouettes crawled from the tree, becoming ferocious beasts. Bok Tu Niok thought just a few, but actually several hundred. He promptly cast magic. Fingers flicking blue flames, becoming dragons swirling overhead. A formidable aura rose, determined to destroy all lest they harm innocents. Bok Tu Niok still mesmerized by his magic, nearly getting his rear speared by a root. Unexpected, this old man had such mighty magic. 
To avert danger of him exerting full might, he summoned an enormous iron cage trapping the withered tree. Now Bok Tun Yak's turn to display his prowess. Though the task more difficult than imagined he was determined to hold three incense sticks. Seeing the beast pack charging, he swiftly shot a soul-subduing talisman. The ghost beasts burnt to ashes before shrieking. Finishing the first batch, more behind attacked. Bok Tu Niok used one word induction fist pounding them away. He fought tense battles continuously to protect the old man. Though ghost beasts numerous as chat rooms just for show. Before nearing Bok Tu Niok punched them into thin air. While he fought zealously the old man kept emitting formidable worldly aura making him admire his true might. Suddenly the roots below began writhing. Bok Tu Niok turned seeing the golden sword shoot up like a dragon. But the roots targeted the golden blade not him. Seeing the weapon flashing swift as lightning. Sparking Bok Tu Niok entranced wanting it at all costs. But before thinking how to obtain it. Behind appeared an enormous black horse with sharp teeth charging to devour him. But with abundant experience, Bok Tu Niok easily evaded. As the teeth neared his cheek he spun wielding decapitation art. Bisecting the ghost horse. One wave ending then the next crashing. As the nation's pillar he couldn't indulge emotion. Bok Tu Niok calmly took out a talisman. Summoning spirit flame talisman incinerating them. To swiftly destroy he had to use the body strengthening talisman kept for years. He nimbly darted between fangs. Dancing at death's edge. Plus Tun Nang's 18 continuous sword legacy. But next he captivated by the old mont's magic. He couldn't believe the old man had such might. Only seeing him finger drawing Bagua. Shouting ancestors manifest. A battle god descended from heaven. Heroic bearing bringing absolute confidence. Bok Tu Niok realized this was incense fire paths lost inviting god's art. Able to invite gods incarnating. Boosting strength and potential. Fierce might like flames enveloped him. The inviting god's art restoring his dashing twenties looks. The imposing aura woke the withered tree spirit. Gaping terrified Bok Tu Niok thought it would surrender but instead rain of leaves fell from the sky. He felt something wrong. The leaves kept flying at him. The old man wielded arts like a lord. Lightning seeming victorious. But the battle just started. The leaves shot at Bok Tu Niok like bullets. He luckily had Radiance Barrier blocking them. But only protecting himself couldn't shield others. Hundreds of leaves like darts darted at the old man in a flash. Bok Tu Niok frantically could only pray he was protected. Just three incense sticks the mystical power within him peaked. He began accumulating formidable energy. Forming a vortex around him. Next he raised his hand skyward. Shouting supreme yin overcomes earth protects heaven's gate opens. With the vortex's roar, a pillar of golden light shot into the clouds. The clear sky suddenly filled with dark clouds. The withered tree sensing danger. Its colossal roots began writhing. Encasing the trunk like bronze walls and iron bastions. But before absolute might. Everything disintegrated he clenched his fist tightly. Power pouring forth to banish the darkness. Bok Tu Niok realized this move the long lost thunder summoning. Suddenly lightning fiercely struck. Attacking the withered tree's hardy shell. But defying nature was suicidal. Next only hearing a deafening boom. The tree blasted into mush Bok Tu Niok couldn't believe an immortal had such fearsome power. But soon his smile faded. He saw the old man drained face ghastly pale. Before reacting he had fainted. Luckily he quickly caught him. Else he would have perished. When the clouds dispersed everything gradually returned to normal. The withered tree just half a trunk left. Billowing black smoke the old man lay unconscious. Bok Tu Niok worried not knowing what to do. Bok Tu Niok examined and found the withered tree dead. Yet his soul force didn't rise at all. Only one possibility the withered tree still lived. When Bok Tu Niok decided fleeing he saw the old man had collapsed. Before reacting the withered tree awoke again. Black Ma roaring terribly. Next a colossal beast leapt out. Ferocious looks striking fear. It charged straight at them. Dreadful power echoing through the hills and woods. Though exerting full strength before the withered tree. The old man could only accept defeat. Bok Tu Niok was a dragon's descendant. Even mighty foes he could defeat. Before preparing he saw the withered tree charging sharp fangs bared. Momentum like death incarnate. Confronting it head on meant suicide. 
So Bak Tu Niok chose guerrilla tactics. He retreated, creating distance, then unleashed soul force, elevating radiance barrier to consummate, avoiding instant death. Since fire was the withered tree's weakness, luckily he learned spirit fire art. Couldn't hesitate in this life or death situation. Without delay, Bak Tu Niok raised spirit fire art to consummate everything, ready for the counterattack. Spirit fire at consummate truly differed, emitting energy hundredfold normal. A blazing fireball in his palm. When energy peaked, he unhesitantly hurled it at the withered tree. The orb became an undying phoenix, charging straight, plunging into the tree. Only hearing a deafening boom, flames devoured the withered tree. In a flash, only ashes remained of the withered tree spirit. Smoke and dust billowing in the wind. The old man gaped, shocked at Bak Tu Nyak's might. When the smoke fully cleared, Bak Tu Nyak finally relaxed. Really fortunate, he learned spirit fire art. Else, long dead. He curiously asked about the move, hearing it was true Duong Sex exclusive spirit fire art. He extremely surprised. Theoretically, needed innate Qi layer seven arts to reach true Duong Sect for learning. But anyway, destroying the spirit tree was good enough. He didn't ponder more. Now, most important was collecting spoils. He drew his sword, chopping open the trunk, rummaging inside, and taking out a piece of Yin energy wood. That was the withered tree spirit's essence. Bak Tu Niok blankly looked at the rotten wood. He never expected his hard labor only exchanged for this. Seeing this, he consoled. He quickly explained this was exactly what he needed. Thanks to Bak Tu Niok's great efforts, he would give more. Speaking, he directly gave the golden blade to Bak Tu Niok. Overjoyed at the unexpected happiness, he forgot his hunger. After all, the old man was his savior. He even said repaying his life-saving merit deserved much more. Bak Tu Niok hastily demanded learning his thunder arts. He startled, unexpected. He wanted to learn his killing moves, but he already promised, so could only agree carving the thunder arts onto a charm, and send it later. He also warned the thunder arts greatly drained energy. With his current physique, he might not endure. Needed caution when cultivating. Bak Tu Niok nodded, then curiously asked about the three incense sticks earlier. He explained they were spirit gathering incense. Just one stick could fully restore strength. Truly of incense fire path. Next, he started introducing various temple incenses, though numerous and good. But fifty tails each made Bak Tu Niok hesitate. He said, "If no silver could trade for his charms." They agreed. Bak Tu Niok wanted to ask about fellow disciple Fifth Wisdom, but he only met once and heard he always concealed himself, not finding a successor yet. His natural manner didn't seem dishonest. But he warned Fifth Wisdom not as simple as appearances, needing caution when meeting him. When treacherous schemes about to succeed, there's always a spoil sport. With True Kuang Gi still missing, True Tin sent people searching for days without a trace. Very uneasy, left no choice. True Tin forced interrogating Quach Chin Duong again, as Kuang Gi's junior. Surely he knew something, but confusing True Tin. Each inquiry he answered unknowing. To find clues, True Tin had Quach Chin Duong tailed. For earlier investigation, Kuang Gi met Trong Ba and Vong Kien. Coincidentally, all three now missing. Before the meeting, Kuang Gi even had Quach Chin Duong withdraw three hundred tails. Hearing this, True Tin raged, yelling at Quach Chin Duong, still daring to deny knowing. He confessed everything about Bak Tu Nyak's revenge scheme. Hearing Bak Tu Nyak, True Tin shook with anger. Immediately ordering his capture. Just then, the steward announced Li Ung Nu, claiming to be Li Chu's son, requesting to see him. True Tin pondered, then allowed the meeting. Li Ung Nu entered the famed handsome playboy, charming countless maidens. True Tin smiled kindly, since the other was a local tycoon's son. He greeted True Tin, then pleaded for a recommendation to participate in the branch's outstanding disciple selection. True Tin surprised why Tycoon Li Chu couldn't handle things. Quach Chin Duong frowned, hearing this, since with True Kuang Gi missing, he had a chance at the selection. But now Li Ung Nu's appearance rendered his schemes meaningless. Meanwhile, True Tin secretly rejoiced, since participants had to be formal branch disciples. Li Ung Nu hadn't joined, so didn't qualify. But unexpectedly, Li Ung Nu not only used connections, but many stewards agreed, recommending him. True Tin had no choice but sponsor Li Ung Nu. After much thought, True Tin agreed to recommend him. 
Lee Ung Nyu overjoyed thanking him becoming outstanding disciple now just a formality. Meanwhile Quach Chin Duong despaired. He had schemed provoking conflict between True Kuang Gi and Bak Tu Niok for a chance. But now could only swallow resentment. Just then at Liet Duong Sek's dormitory. The golden blade darted along the ceiling beam. Bak Tu Niok training with the new weapon. His strength rising to new heights. Suddenly unfamiliar voices called from outside. Two disciples appearing. Claiming to be Lu Ha and Kao Van. From punishment hall the two looked at Bak Tu Niok contemptuously. Aggressive attitude they said had important matters right protector seeking Bak Tu Niok they asked if he was Bak Tu Niok. Bak Tu Niok nodded confirming. He was training when the two true tin thugs came causing trouble. They said per right protector's orders. All citizens must cooperate investigating. Bak Tu Niok frowned knowing no escaping. Moreover never met these two before. Pretending obedient following they could ambush and had be unable to react. Seeing Bak Tu Niok in cooperative. They tried forcing Lu Ha even threatened refusing to cooperate with punishment hall was unlawful. Bak Tu Niok well knew sect rules. So replied if they wanted him along must show superior's arrest warrant from punishment hall. Kao Van nearly lost temper but reconsidered the disadvantage. Bak Tu Niok was a senior disciple. And they were in Liet Duong territory. Angering him only harmed them so they left. Bak Tu Niok scornfully watched them depart. Regardless can't let them bully him. He decided asking master's intervention settling this. At Chief Track Veen's residence he told everything. How could Tu Lu Dong allow bullying his disciple? He immediately furious Tu Lu Dong promptly ordered teaching Lu Ha a lesson. But he still wanted to clarify if true Kuang Gi's disappearance related to Bak Tu Niok. Bak Tu Niok vehemently denied. Tu Lu Dong pondered then didn't doubt further. Since with brief martial arts training, Bak Tu Niok couldn't have defeated Trong Ba and Vong Keen. He warned to be careful the next few days. The outstanding disciple election nearing. Moreover the selection plan was changing. He needed mental preparation. Bak Tu Niok was surprised. Lu Dong explained Tycoon Li Chu's son Li Ung Nyu was participating. With four steward support so Bak Tu Niok might lose. As Liet Duong leader, he refused inferior to anyone. He was determined using all connections for Bak Tu Niok's fair chance. On election day Tan Ha Town's pier thronged with people coming and going. Lu Dong and elders had awaited since early morning. Everyone gazed afar expectantly. Outwardly calm but inside Bak Tu Niok anxious and uneasy. Since the arrivals were key people deciding the outcome. The first was Li Ung Nyu. The governor's son disciples swarmed bowing. Fawning to curry his favor. Only Bak Tu Niok and Tan Thu Bin didn't budge. Li Ung Nyu approached Bak Tu Niok. Asking if he was brother Bak. Then jeered only in this backwater could he become a candidate. Li Ung Nyu scorned only in backwaters like this would trash like him vie for outstanding disciple. Bak Tu Niok didn't want to mind him. But Li Ung Nyu increasingly arrogant. Bak Tu Niok retorted mocking him Go Jiang had four outstanding disciple slots but he couldn't even make Go Jiang's top four yet dared come here competing. He furiously seethed while others around loudly laughed. Just as both arguing the election's key person appeared. Everyone looked up as a beautiful boat docked. A handsome prince-like youth alighted. Dazzling beauty captivating spectators. He was Elder Neep, one of the judges. Seeing this Tu Lu Dong warmly welcomed him. Even inviting to eat and drink freely at the tavern but he declined. Saying to review the election rules first. Tu Lu Dong introduced the two candidates Bak Tu Niok and Li Ung Nyu. Hearing Li Ung Nyu Elder Neep surprised the Li were participating too. Li Ung Nyu rejoiced thinking to use connections for victory. He rushed up intimately greeting. Li Ung Nyu bowed to Elder Neep. Tu Lu Dong saw him arrogant despite his youth. After pondering Elder Neep decided since only two candidates. Both recommended by prestigious people they would hold a match. The winner becoming this year's outstanding disciple. Hearing this Li Ung Nyu secretly rejoiced. Confident of easy victory. But Bak Tu Nyak's strength had reached new heights. A classic battle was coming. With no objections Elder Neep decided holding the selection in three days. While Li Ung Nyu already dreaming of victory and celebrating with other disciples in truth he was the clown. 
That night, Min Chao Tavern bustled with customers coming and going. The leaders grandly welcomed Elder Neep with a lavish feast. Though all smiled and chatted happily, they each schemed something. Even Elder Neep as well. In fact, he had another purpose coming and needed the branch's aid. Seeing this, the elders ardently pledged their utmost efforts assisting. Elder Neep then told of the demon beast incident six years ago at Lu Kuang Shrine in Tan Ha Town. Bok Tu Niok eavesdropped nearby. Sure, Elder Neep referred to the ancient python spirit back then. As a local, he understood, but not why it was brought up now. Elder Neep asked if they believed his claim the python demon back then still lived. All dumbstruck, not daring to trust their ears. Bok Tu Niok startled, affirming it impossible. The room suddenly stirred. Everyone thinking Elder Neep jested too far. The authorities had posted notices Master Go Tian Su had slain the spirit snake already. But Elder Neep said the snake still trapped in the Lu Kuang shrines dried well. If this leaked, very embarrassing for the branch. So immediately made plans destroying the demon, restoring Tan has peace. Tu Lu Dong asked his plans, but Elder Neep just wanted killing it for the core. Legend said the core could be refined into clear cloud pill, extending lifespan and boosting martial power. Elder Neep at low realm after 10 years cultivating. Wanting clear cloud pill for breakthrough. Tu Lu Dong first hearing of clear cloud pill. One core could refine 10 clear cloud pills. So he immediately agreed but on condition Liet Duong sect equally split 5050 the cores and python meat. Elder Neep reluctantly accepted. Whatever terms he proposed. After the banquet everyone departed. The pungent flavors still lingered. Returning Bok Tu Niok suddenly saw someone with long black hair the diamond temple chief. Why's he here seeing Bok Tu Niok frozen? Tu Lu Dong asked. Bok Tu Niok tersely evaded. Whatever he's up to not his concern. Meddling invites disaster. Next morning sunshine brightly lit the unusually bustling temple. Liet Duong sect preparing to slay the python. Disciples hauling supplies inside. The stewards already there planning by the well mouth. Tan Thu Bin first hearing of the python. Not expecting such an evil in Tan Ha. Bok Tu Niok saw the well cover rock shifted. Cold sweat pouring. If only he knew earlier this demon was here wouldn't have met Go Hao. If anyone checked the cave and found Go Hao's corpse everything exposed. Meanwhile indifferent Tan Thu Bin said unaware what the python looked like. But with many experts killing it surely not difficult. In truth a terrifying battle truly neared. Liet Duong sect mobilized all elite forces. Even Bok Tu Niok and Tan Thu Bin assisting logistics. Elder Neep kicked the rock aside. Peering down behind was Grand Sorcerer Hang Thuong. Sent by authorities assisting slaying the python making up for their past mistake. According to Hang Thuong the python trapped due to Lu Kuang Shrine's potent incense in its golden age. But now abandoned so incense exhausted. The python should have escaped. However immense energy still at the bottom showed. This had become the demon's lair. Tu Lu Dong ordered the attack. He had promised the magistrate protecting Tan Ha. The young troops grabbed sandbags. Jostling descending into the well. Dumping them to seal the escape route. Forcing the python out. Next they started pouring gunpowder down. Toxic smoke billowing dense. Suddenly a loud boom. A colossal python erupted from the well mouth. Bok Tu Niok horrified watching the monster. Unable to believe his eyes. The panicked python thrashed wildly amidst the crowd. Everyone terrified backing away. Elder Neep brandished his sword rousing their fighting spirit. He shouted kill then charged. The entire elite force swarmed up. A fierce battle beginning the millennial python saw Elder Neep as a child. It spat two streams of arcane venom. Luckily Elder Neep no amateur. Dodging in a flash. The venom melted the ground. Consequences unimaginable if hit. He slashed Azure Lotus swordplay. The sword piercing the python's chest. Seeing chance the elite force swarmed hacking the python chaotically. Sparks flew wildly from swords clashing scales. But its rock-hard skin only tickled. Tu Lu Dong snuck behind. Slashing violet death palm. A long gash appeared blood gushing like a spring. Hurt for the first time the snake shrieked madly. It whipped its tail wiping out the troops. Suddenly dense fog enveloped. Temperature plunging below zero C Hang Thuong recognized the python's demon art. Ordering none to charge in. 
He unleashed stone armor art. Hellfire blazing over his body. An ancient primordial sword appeared. Majestic as a returning king. Hang Thuong ordered radiant arrows piercing the snake. It shrieked in pain losing composure spewing hundreds of venom spikes at them. The Un Vading perished. Tu Lu Dong leapt shielding everyone. Rod blocking the blow. Tu Lu Dong shouted elite disciples retreat. The maddened python charged Lu Dong lightning fast. It gaped wide to swallow him whole. But with a swift backward step. Lu Dong avoided the fangs. He focused energy into his weapon. Unleashing a torrent. As it opened its mouth attacking again he leapt up. Stabbing its throat with heaven piercer. It clamped shut in pain. Tears of frustration welling. Bok Tu Neok stunned by his master's peerless move. Wondering if it's a new technique. Lu Dong ordered attack. Everyone swarmed throwing iron nets binding the python. But it easily shattered them in two seconds flinging them away. Thinking it heavily injured they took chance binding again. But just stretching flung them all far. It attacked with two venom streams. Two hit faces deforming. Losing future spouse selection priority. Two Lu Dong frowned at this rate all would perish. But Elder Neep still calm. As if victory assured. He rummaged his robe taking out a wooden platter-like object. This was the triumphant treasure soul calming plate he borrowed for a month. Its power surely formidable. But Elder Neep only fought sure wins. Suddenly an explosion sounded. Victorious radiance erupting from the magic plate. The colossal frozen python completely controlled by the soul calming plate. If not witnessing it himself. Bok Tu Neok couldn't believe something so small had such tremendous might. The blinding light prevented the python opening its eyes. It tried breaking the seal but beams of power from the plate blasted its face. Ear-splitting explosions echoed everywhere. The warriors fainted from dust and smoke. As it cleared the python's gigantic body appeared. Thinking victorious the troops swarmed hacking the corpse for revenge. But this was the demon scheme. Watching them deliver themselves. It whipped them away with its tail. Seeing disadvantage it escaped using the chance. But Elder Neep wouldn't let it flee. He leapt atop unleashing ultimate iron bone palm. A green beam shot downwards. With a sky shaking boom. The flattened snake head dragged dozens of meters before stopping. The millennial legend passed into history. The odd kids never saw such a spectacular scene. Curious what other dangers the outside world still concealed. Bok Tu Neok unwilling missing collecting spirit energy. He grasped Winkater sword dashing to the dying python corpse Bok Tu Neok ran to the expiring snake. Now completely strengthless. Only awaiting the reaper. Elder Neep sword in hand. Ready to deliver the death blow. He cleaved heaven splitting earth rending. A slash severing its ton-heavy head. The surviving disciples swarmed gazing upon the demon's true form. After such effort they finally killed it. But with heavy losses dozens dead. Bok Tu Neok watched from behind. Opening his spirit energy system he looked. And was stunned truly a millennial demon. He gained massive spirit energy from this fierce battle. The snake's flesh and blood were precious materials. Not to mention the core many masters a lifetime still unlikely encountering this. The mighty spiritual energy flow showed its immense value. Next morning Bok Tu Neok resolutely cultivated despite no sleep. Such efforts for a prosperous future. Suddenly Chu Heen Kai appeared. Asking about the Lu Kuang shrine battle. But Bok Tu Neok uninterested narrating only answering perfunctorily. Hearing the snake slain he rejoiced since his late master was killed by it. Then he gave Bok Tu Neok a leisure cloud sect bronze mirror and some incense. Bok Tu Neok offered charms exchanging for his incense. After the transaction they parted. In town Bok Tu Neok overheard everyone gossiping Liet Duong sect slaying the python. Suddenly a familiar voice called out. He turned it was anti unseen for long. But she worriedly said yesterday ancient luck pavilion slaughtered. Even the tour group killed. Over 60 lives none surviving. Like the massacre three years ago by Diamond Temple causing the Lee clan's destruction. Very likely his doing again. Bok Tu Neok suddenly recalled the massacre's sole survivor Li Huan passed the exams. Soon taking office in Go Jiang Li Huan surely would avenge his clan. Perhaps Diamond Temple struck first showing might. After parting with Auntie Bok Tu Neok returned. About to eat breakfast he saw a thug beating a dog. The dog kicked flying into a tree. 
but calmly still bit the thug's leg. But against the stronger all resistance futile. He fiercely kicked it flying into a wall. Nearly dead Bok Tu Niok pityingly ran over checking. The dog severely injured. Gasping faintly he decided getting it treated but the foul stench made him recoil. Luckily he had some purification talismans. Rubbing them over instantly cleaned it. Seeing its suffering Bok Tu Niok decided keeping it. The two starting an affinity. Returning to the dorm a strange man skulked around. It was Lu Ho Ang just returned from Go Jiang. Bringing python meat to gift. Python meat nourishes the kidneys and boosts virility. Beautifies skin but Bok Tu Niok knew it ate Go Hao's corpse so didn't dare eat it. After seeing off senior brother he prepared lodging for the dog in an abandoned stable behind. For it a luxurious villa. Bok Tu Nyak's missions earned many contribution points so next morning went redeeming rewards. Just entering the gate met Elder Dong and Tan Thu Bin. Looking for him about capturing Diamond Temple Chief. The authorities wanted coordinating with Liet Duong sect pursuing the ancient Luck Pavilion massacre culprit. The reward for this extremely generous. Bok Tu Niok didn't understand why they suddenly pursued Diamond Temple Chief. Since they'd always ignored his actions before. From experience Elder Dong guessed they wanted favor with the new provincial governor Li Huan. Ancient Luck Pavilion's owner also the incident occurred in Tan Ha so if not handled. Their positions affected. Tan Thu Bin had clues on their location so the three immediately headed out. Tan Ha Town's Five Fragrances View. Far from town center gangsters haunt. Their target was Diamond Temple's younger brother Go Dung. Elder Dong Long planted spies awaiting chance. They snuck into the yard and quickly reached the target room. The younger brother and gang discussing plans. They tried eavesdropping but broken tiles announced their presence. No other choice. Elder Dong ordered attack he shattered the tiles with palm force. The group dropping down seeing this. They didn't dare act rashly. Among them Bok Tu Niok recognized two but couldn't recall who. Elder Dong shouted you mother and son Tan has righteous heroes. It was Thiet Nun and Vo Nan Dao. The town's famed duo. Elder Dong angrily berated their betraying conscience. Evil doing with bandits plan exposed. Thiet Nun ordered killing them to keep quiet. Elder Dong furiously loathed the hypocrites. Determined personally killing the traitors. A fierce melee erupted. Seeing the tense situation. The boss afraid of official discovery so decided fleeing. But Bok Tu Niok anticipated his intention. Blocking his path. The enraged gangster whipped at Bok Tu Niok. But his system let him dodge the lethal strike. Just before hitting his face Bok Tu Niok counterattacked. The overwhelming disparity prevented his weapon swinging up. Against absolute might all resistance futile. Bok Tu Niok activated counter mode. Flinging him with a light shove. Taking advantage while he lost focus. He stabbed towards his chest. But within inches the boss drew his blade blocking the slash. Next Bok Tu Nyak's sword shattered. He raged nearly exploding his brain since usually he shattered opponent's weapons. This sudden reversal utterly humiliated him. The boss tried pressing the advantage. Charging blade aiming to skin Bok Tu Nyak's face. But all within Bok Tu Nyak's calculations. He just awaited this chance when they neared half a meter. Bok Tu Nyak swiftly unleashed execution saber. Blasting him far he shouted broken sword still kills you. Then the sound of his body hitting the ground. Now only four small fries left with superhuman might. Tan Thu Bin easily beat the other two buffoons. But Elder Dong faced greater difficulty against the Motherson duo Vu La Hua. While surrounded on both sides. He was defeated by them. Realizing he couldn't win he conceded to avoid total destruction. Just then her son Vu Fong charged out sneak attacking ruining his hopes but miraculously a savior sword appeared. They agreed each fighting one. Vu La Hua ceaselessly attacked Bok Tu Niok. But with his skill, he easily evaded every blow. She astonished someone first nullified her moves completely. Knowing couldn't drag on she wielded her hundred pound iron rod. But Bok Tu Niok calmly stood still as the hundred pound rod flew at him. For him this just an ordinary move. Even four hundred pounds no trouble. One hand firmly grabbed the rod. The other palmed heavenly coiling grasp. Her face turned green during the intense life or death exchange. Every technique still couldn't touch Bok Tu Niok. Seeing her exhausted. Bok Tu Niok activated heavenly coiling grasp. 
twirling the rod one and a half circles. Generated tremendous torque dizzying his opponent. Before she could react the rod slipped from her hand. Bach 2 Neok palm struck it skyward. Never had Theot Nun witnessed this. Scared limp Bach 2 Neok seized the moment punching unparalleled fist at her face. She flew far only a pool of blood left. Hearing his mother killed the enraged Vu Fong still couldn't win so fled. Nun escaped Bok Tu Nyak's eyes. He ordered the flying saber shooting forth. Followed by his agonized shrieks. Blood spurting like a spring though gravely wounded he still ran. Behind Elder Dong's sword ended him. The harrowing battle concluded. To prevent officials confiscating assets. They swiftly searched the battlefield. When soldiers arrived already cleaned out. Seeing the righteous heroes' corpses. They angrily demanded investigating the three. But Elder Dong prepared. Producing letters between them and Diamond Temple Chief. The shocked magistrate learned the hero's true colors he long praised. Indeed concealed extremely well surveying the bodies. He shook his head resentfully unbelieving their polite exteriors hid such evil. But Elder Dong immediately unmasked the boss. It was the notorious Go Win. Liet Duong sect's Inspector General Odd realizing their might. To defeat them Elder Dong at least external Marrow Realm already. Elder Dong said most credit belonged to Bok Tu Niok. Without his timely intervention, head have died the Inspector General marveled. Indeed a heroic prodigy. But only Bok Tu Niok knew with his high realm. Defeating them was easy as flipping his palm. He earned great rewards. And plentiful energy. Such missions were perfect. Tan Thu Bin asked about contribution points. Accountant Trong calculated the two minions 100 points each. The Vu mother and son counted as small leaders. The boss a major leader. Total five enemies meant 700 contribution points. Delighting the group since should NT linger. Elder Dong called searching elsewhere. Tan Thu Bin wondered didn't we already search the rooms once. Chasing Elder Dong Bok Tu Niok replied. His aim was the Vu residence. The spacious comfortable villa made one carefree. But the front gate lay open already. Had others come before them. Turned out someone quicker. Officials just shouters thieves nimbler stealing people's assets. To prevent their big haul. The three swiftly assigned roles. Entering a room Bok Tu Niok attracted by a statue. Its mighty aura as if the reaper descended. Instinct told this no ordinary item. The three ransacked the place. Quickly taking all valuables. Departing they mourned the room's dried skeleton. But their gazes aroused the officials' suspicions. Entering the next room. They found it already stripped bare. Seeing the emptied chest. The group indignant by now the others escaped beyond reach. To thank his disciples Elder Dong treated them to a lavish meal at his home. The table heaped with delicacies the three ate and drank lustily. Bok Tu Niok showed them the statue he deemed most valuable. But Elder Dong and Tan Thu Bin couldn't fathom why. Thinking it unlucky. Now only old Tan left hopes on. Tan Thu Bin practical. He not only found 300 tails silver and 20 gold bars but 3 military manuals too. Mastering these secrets would greatly boost martial arts. Only then did Bok Tu Niok take out 1000 extra silver tails he found. Total worth of the treasures reached 5000 silver tails. Enough buying 20 mu of land in Beijing after lunch. Bok Tu Niok hurried back to Liet Duong sect redeeming rewards. If not redeemed soon his contribution points might raise suspicions. Anyway redeeming within the sect had the benefit of never losing anything. Bok Tu Niok's goal was the manual for diamond body tempering art to formally start internal cultivation. Just as he daydreamed of a bright future loud crashes suddenly came from Liet Duong sect's gates. Having just gotten the internal cultivation manual Bok Tu Niok heard loud crashes from the gates. Go Win said Diamond Temple would send aid to Tan Ha. Arriving he saw the devastation. Many guards dead from their mouths. He knew the culprits were Diamond Temple Chief and Lu Kai Bin. Didn't expect Lu Kai Bin now third-rate master level. Hearing this Bok Tu Niok frowned worriedly. Tu Lu Dong and Elder Neep only third-rate masters too. If Deputy Temple Chief Lu Kai Bin already so his big brother the chief surely unmatched. But on second thought just leave it to the officials. Best not provoke them first. Suddenly remembering the pup must be hungry. But returning home he panicked not finding it. Fearing someone caught it for meat he worriedly searched. Then hearing breathing he looked under the table and saw it sleeping there. 
Its inviting sleeping posture gave Bok Tu Niok dark thoughts. But he then realized it was gnawing the snake meat he threw out this morning. So it knew this nourishing food. Seeing its master return, the puppy happily wagged its tail, jumping. Just now also remembered to buy porridge. Bok Tu Niok ladled a full bowl for it. Since the snake meat looked gross, he decided making it into dishes to enrich the pup's meals. After feeding it full, he left for more pressing matters. Night falling, Tan Ha Cemetery deathly silent. Bok Tu Niok alone came to test the soul guiding incense the temple keeper gifted. This desolate place certainly no lack of ghosts. If truly effective, he would reap plentiful soul energy. Fragrant smoke rose spreading everywhere. Shortly after, souls gathered. Seeing the chance, Bok Tu Niok drew his saber using a sword move. Slashing away the evil ghosts, some unable to react in time. Suddenly, a ghost attacked from behind. But with his skill, Bok Tu Niok easily pivoted, slashing it in half. He eagerly slaughtered the demons. Just wondering why no formidable ones yet agonized shrieks suddenly sounded behind. It was Diamond Temple savages who attacked the gates today. Now turned vengeful spirits Bok Tu Niok puzzled. Even the netherworld couldn't transform them so fast not even a day. A mastermind behind this for sure. He slashed his saber art again. One blow dispersing the grim specters into mist. But then he noticed something strange. Suddenly the temperature sharply dropped. Chill overwhelming Bok Tu Niok with shivers. Regaining awareness he found himself in an unfamiliar room. Inside was a peerless beauty. Alluring figure making Bok Tu Niok's heart race. She smiled inviting him to stay the night. Single for decades. How could Bok Tu Niok resist such temptation? He approached the girl but unexpectedly his next action drove her into a frenzy. Bok Tu Niok knew his own might. How could a mere demon seduce him so easily? Suddenly a crack sounded. She split in half just now Bok Tu Niok used the sorcerer's spirit eye art. Seeing through the demon scheme. The ghoul dissipated into black smoke and the illusion vanished too. Bok Tu Niok promptly opened his system. Reaping 3000 soul energy points. But he wondered why the ghosts untouched by the incense charged him directly. Bok Tu Niok looked around. The yin aura here even heavier than Lu Kuang shrine. Turned out the lazy soldiers dumped the corpses here. If not handled soon when it became an undead breeding ground Tan Ha people would suffer greatly. Just thinking this Bok Tu Niok heard roaring behind. Glancing back an undead charged at lightning speed. Bok Tu Niok recognized this as Go Hao's refined corpse. He swiftly retreated seeing the corpse emit a formidable aura. Surely a ferocious iron corpse. Before he could react it pounced with razor sharp claws. Bok Tu Niok hurriedly summoned heavenly sword force. The golden saber flying out but just as it neared piercing its heart the saber halted. Unable to harm it next. The iron corpse used great soaring dragon. Leaping at Bok Tu Niok. As expected fortified undead lived up to their fame. Even the golden saber useless. Then try this Bok Tu Niok hurled three soul subduing talismans. Freezing it rigid thinking it over the real battle just started. Painful roars sounding as vitality erupted forth. Unable to disable it Bok Tu Niok decided attacking with spirit fire. Hurling it straight at the corpse's face. But it simply swallowed the flames. Unbelievable to Bok Tu Niok. As it charged again Bok Tu Niok kept counter-attacking with the golden saber. But the iron corpse like a springing cricket. Very difficult to anticipate everything had weaknesses. Even the strong Bok Tu Niok seized the chance. Steering his saber straight into its eye. The iron corpse raised its hand to block but too late. Indeed their vulnerabilities completely different from humans. Now Bok Tu Niok just needed to wait for a chance at direct attack. With weakened defenses its strength also declined. That moment Bok Tu Niok unleashed flames. Burning the iron corpse until exhausted. Not missing the opportunity he charged forth. Beheading it with the golden saber. But shockingly despite no defenses the iron corpse's body remained rock hard. Though dying it still fought with all its might. Nearly punching Bok Tu Niok. He promptly retaliated with unparalleled fist. The two forces collided violently. Dust clouding the sky after intense battle. Bok Tu Niok used execution saber. A slash severing the iron corpse's head. Looking at its motionless body. He finally breathed relief didn't expect it so mighty even combined sword moves couldn't instantly kill. 
luckily had internal cultivation supporting. Otherwise, likely would have failed. To avoid discovery, Bak Tu Niok burned the iron corpse to ashes. Unexpectedly, he found a corpse pearl. Similar to demon cores, but corpse pearls congealed yin chi useless for the body. Could raise corpse beasts and undeads might. He just pocketed the corpse pearl when he discovered a secret cave. Without hesitation, he leapt down. The heavy yin qi surely an undead lair. About to venture deeper, he already reached the end. Inside clean with no suspicious signs. Bak Tu Niok disappointed left. Just leaving Bak Tu Niok noticed a mysterious parcel in the corner. Carefully opening it inside an ordinary Taoist robe. But the size made it hard not to associate with Trong Nok Zong. Didn't expect both disciples of the five element sect leader were ghost cultivators. Need more caution later midnight. Blinding light woke Bak Tu Niok. Before him an angel. Mumbling able to fulfill one wish as master of fate crimson on condition he worshipped her. Bak Tu Niok unafraid. Forcefully slapped the angel's face. A flash and everything vanished. Bak Tu Niok startled awake. Just a dream he leapt from bed. Heart thumping wildly even the puppy trembling. Kowtowing before the Buddha shrine. Seeing this Bak Tu Niok opened it. The Buddha statue emitting faint fragrance. He was curious to uncover its secrets. Next morning Bak Tu Niok brought the statue to Elder Chu's home. He explained it was a demonic item to deceive believers. Only with worship could they gain incense offerings. Demons lacking veneration used any means to attract attention. Bak Tu Niok's statue was the second kind. But it could only intimidate not actually harm anyone so he needn't fear its threats. Hearing this Bak Tu Niok very surprised. He decided destroying the statue to avoid harming others. Didn't expect deities truly existed. Fortunately it didn't trick Bak Tu Niok. Otherwise later he wouldn't dare look at anyone. Just leaving he suddenly heard a familiar voice behind. It was Uncle Tun Nong. Inviting him on Elder House behalf. Bak Tu Niok understood time to repay the old debt. The two immediately departed. Shortly after arrived at the Hao residence. Though years passed the elder still hale and hearty. Bak Tu Niok asked his business. Seeing his vitality the elder spoke plainly. He wanted Bak Tu Niok to defeat Li Ung Nyu in the upcoming contest. How could Bak Tu Niok accept such humiliation? He flatly refused and prepared leaving. Elder Hao hurriedly stopped him. Unfinished business where are you going he revealed knowing Li Duong Chu of Gojiang County. So agreed to broker, but actually had another request. Curious Bak Tu Niok asked what required his help. Nightfall Fat Trong Nok Zong hurriedly ran through the graveyard. Face panicked as if chased by thousands of ghosts. He wanted checking the corpses but the undead lair already destroyed. Even his most important project gone. In panic he frantically searched. That consumed his utmost efforts and countless materials creating it. Enraged he screamed who did this. He hastily scoured everywhere, swearing revenge on the saboteur after some steps. He saw a pile of familiar shaped ashes. Realizing the killer an immortal cultivator. Perhaps the culprit was an immortal cultivator. He drew out his bone staff twirling it in circles. The shadow of Tiu Thien appeared. A ghost he raised he asked who killed his iron corpse. Also what about Tiu Tan? Tiu Thien tremblingly recounted everything. Though afraid to get near still vaguely saw the figure. Then its shape shifted into the culprit's appearance. Though blurry the face still clear. Trong Nok Zong furiously wanted to rip it apart. He had arranged Tiu Tan and Tiu Thien guarding the iron corpse. Now both destroyed so Tiu Thien also useless. He waved the bone staff a shriek sounding as Tiu Thien vanished. Next morning bustling at Liet Duong sect. For today the outstanding disciple selection. Bak Tu Niok and Li Ung Nyu son of Go Jiang chief Li Chu would duel. Winner and loser made everyone eagerly anticipate. As both sides talking Quach Chan Duong came out. Guaranteeing Bak Tu Niok's loss since Li Ung Nyu reached external marrow realm. Seeing both ready. Elder Neep announced the contest start. The two leapt onto the stage. Li Ung Nyu flaunted his sword. Threatening to show Bak Tu Niok his might. But with his skill. Bak Tu Niok regarded him a child. At the signal the match began. Li Ung Nyu determined on victory. Charged using Coiling Soul 13 swords at Bak Tu Niok. As 13 sword Chi shot forth. 
Bak Tu Niak casually stood still, stunning everyone, thinking him immobilized. Even Tu Lu Dong worried for his disciple. But in a flash, Bak Tu Niak vanished, just a thin wisp left. Li Ung Nu bulged his eyes dumbly, nearly stabbing the air, regaining awareness. A blade already at his throat. Li Ung Nu frightened, not daring to move. The audience wildly cheered. In fact, Bak Tu Niak defeated Li Ung Nu in just a flash. It took seconds for people to react and applaud thunderously. Only Quach Chan Duong furious as his scheme failed again. Tu Lu Dong moved, unbelieving his disciples' astronomical progress. Though heard of Bak Tu Niak, his one move victory still astonished Elder Neep. After the match, Bak Tu Niak politely bowed to Li Ung Nu, as if harshly slapping his face. Tu Lu Dong anxiously awaited the result. Elder Neep announced this year's top disciple was Liet Duong Sek's Bak Tu Niak. The disciples swarmed, cheering, bowing, and fawning over him behind the crowd. Ta Ho Fap scowled, looking bitter as if eating crap. Lu Dong curious about his disciples' level. Bak Tu Niak lied, reaching external marrow realm. Eighteen lotus sabers and execution saber mastered. The two chiefs nonstop praised him. Indeed, a heroic prodigy. Lu Dong delightedly allowed his disciple choosing rewards from the treasury. Bak Tu Niak thanked his master's generosity. Elder Neep asked, accompanying him to Go Jiang tomorrow or waiting until the reward ceremony. Still having elder house tasks. Bak Tu Niak just promised arriving before the ceremony. After all left, Lu Dong led him into the treasury at the chief's residence. Inside, countless precious treasures left Bak Tu Niak stunned. He never saw so many expensive items. Among them, the profound luminous iron essence most valuable. But Bak Tu Niak didn't dare dream too big. The medicines also good choices, but too many types left him uncertain. Lacking any desirable, he decided on a protective armor set. But then an object caught his attention. Bak Tu Niak noticed an ink wash painting of bamboos on the wall. He sensed an odd surging spiritual aura from it. Not common chi, but stronger circulating chi. His instinct told him no ordinary painting. He requested Tu Lu Dong gift him the painting. Lu Dong puzzled since it less beautiful than other items, but respecting his disciple's choice, he agreed. In his room, Bak Tu Niak immediately examined the painting. After long unused, the Ling Chi inside very weak. He used his own energy activating it. Sure enough, the Chi strengthened. Suddenly, power erupted forth. Bak Tu Niak shocked finding 24 seals within the painting, meaning a level 24 magic tool, with each 27 levels equaling one tier. Above 27 were mid-grade tools. He kept transmitting energy unsealing it. Suddenly a crack sounded and an eagle emerged. Mighty aura like a king incarnate. Bak Tu Niak promptly recalled his energy. It vanished right after though incorporeal aura no less powerful. With enough energy, he could summon two eagles or even the mysterious sword-wielding hero within the painting. Next morning heavy rain at Tan Ha. Liet Duong Sek's peer unusually quiet. Tu Lu Dong saw off his disciple. Having to return to Go Jiang refining pills Elder Neep thanked all then boarded leaving at once. After seeing him off a strange boat appeared. The flag showing an official vessel. Then Duong Tran Tu and company appeared onshore. Lu Dong promptly greeted them turns out new officials appointed to Tan Ha. Knowing the new town chief Li. Lu Dong decided accompanying the welcome. Li Huan Tan has new magistrate. Followed by Li Viet Trim Y2. Once famed master equal to Lu Dong. Surprised now he Li Huan subordinate. Duong Tran Tu promptly welcomed them and introduced Tan has important figures. Li Huan bluntly said his return to avenge his father. Hoping all help destroying Diamond Temple. As leader Duong Tran Tu couldn't refuse. As the biggest sect in Tan Ha. Li Huan couldn't overlook Liet Duong Bang. So asked Lu Dong's opinion Kuang firmly rejected provoking trouble. Tu Lu Dong agreed immediately. Li Huan handed Lu Dong a letter. Saying a message from the Go Jiang chief. Lu Dong eagerly opened and was stunned by the contents. Next morning Bak Tu Nyak's door continuously knocked. Today he would help Elder Hao deliver goods as promised. Accompanying was the steward to lead the way to the remote location. Arriving at a secluded river bend. A strange boat appeared. The man surprised asking if Bak Tu Niak could help them pass the river patrols. 
The steward affirmed with Bak Tu Niak. Crossing the river certainly no issue. Hearing he the sect leader's disciple. The shifty man felt more assured. All boarded sailing onward. Bak Tu Niak asked and learned the river mostly patrolled by pirates and Liet Duong sect groups. Often oppressing small traders. He just listened since the scarred man didn't resemble a model citizen. Passing the meadows they saw a large ship. Two aboard lowered a rope ladder. The shifty man climbed up first. Bak Tu Niak leapt straight on. On deck brawny men busily moved cargo. Faces fierce Bak Tu Niak knew these goods hid secrets. Surely not the brocade flowers as the steward claimed. Just as he considered investigating the captain greeted him, introducing himself as Chu Lao Tam youngest of the Chu family. Bak Tu Niak recognized he was the bandit leader Tui Trung Tian. Didn't expect boarding a pirate ship. Zhang Hu truly dangerous luckily he realized. Or would have been duped seeing preparations done. Chu Lao Tam ordered raising sails departing. After half an hour they met the Liet Duong sect patrols. All avoided giving way for Bak Tu Nyak's passage. After another half hour on the river, the ship docked below a sheer cliff. Tui Trung Tian signaled Master Trong. We're here show yourself. Hearing the order some hid in bushes emerged. Led by Fat Trong Nok Zong disciple of the Five Elements sect leader. Tui Trung Tian ordered them unloading the cargo ashore. Bak Tu Niak witnessed the smuggling of military weapons. A serious crime then if discovered. They would face execution only Diamond Temple would buy so many weapons. Perhaps to counter Li Huan. Trong Nok Zong's presence showed his ties to Diamond Temple too. After cargo left the ship. Tui Trung Tian demanded payment. Trong Nok Zong ordered 500 tails of gold brought out for payment. Suddenly he noticed a familiar face. Tui Trung Tian introduced him as Bak Tu Niak. Liet Duong Bang sect leader's disciple. Thanks to him the deal succeeded. Bak Tu Niak politely bowed. But Trong Nok Zong recognized him as the one destroyed his iron corpse. That monster consumed 10 years and wealth creating. Enraged he ordered his men charge killing Bak Tu Niak. Ambushed the fierce pirates fought back. Trong Nok Zong chanted. Summoning a saber stabbing Tui Trung Tian's head. With a crack the blade pierced his forehead. The dark cannibalistic scene began. But resisting when outnumbered very dangerous. Trong Nok Zong furious to shred them but couldn't let them flee. Trong Nok Zong ordered the saber attack Bak Tu Niak again. In life or death Bak Tu Niak decided to hide no more. As the blade neared his chest. He summoned the spirit light shield and channeled energy into his palm shooting out fiery rings. He spun hurling transforming soldiers at Diamond Temple's weapon stash. A loud boom everything incinerated. Trong Nok Zong maddened. Wanting to shred Bak Tu Niok he used his bone staff summoning vengeful ghosts gathered over the years. Pitiful wails sounded as the specters charged at Bak Tu Niok. But with his skill, he felt no fear Bak Tu Niok promptly took out the painting. Channeling energy into it two majestic eagles emerged. Pursuing and slaughtering the ghosts though fewer they still fought valiantly. As a ghost charged to attack. Bak Tu Niok calmly summoned the swordsman. He appeared brandishing his sword routing the evil spirits. Trong Nok Zong shocked Bak Tu Niok could summon a swordsman. A ghost attacked from behind. Bak Tu Niok ordered the swordsman to counter. The ghost dissipated the swordsman charged the enemy. The bone staff shooting out black lightning bolts shredding the air. The situation dire but the swordsman calm. Coordinating with Bak Tu Niok the swordsman easily shattered the bolts. Astonishing Trong Nok Zong. Such a strong foe even peak internal cultivators couldn't beat. If only he had such a tool wouldn't have to work with corpses. Bak Tu Niok gave no chance. Ordering the swordsman clear the battlefield. The two eagles plus internal master. Even the heavenly king would retreat. However this tool's weakness was consuming massive energy. Trong Nok Zong seized the moment. Summoning roots to bind the swordsman. Seeing his energy nearly depleted Bak Tu Niok had to dismiss the tool. Trong Nok Zong thought he won. Attacking with fiery rings. But Bak Tu Niok calmly countered with spirit fire. The two forces violent collision exploded the air. Stunning Trong Nok Zong. The formidable foe kept him vigilant. Trong Nok Zong used bone shadow. Instantly a giant skull appeared. 
creating thick fog leaving zero visibility. But Bok Tu Niok calmly used spirit eyes. Seeing everything clearly Trong Nok Zong still blind in the mist. Thinking he won he readied ordering the saber attack. But Bok Tu Niok already charged before he could react. Startling him before he could act. Trong Nok Zong's head fell to the ground. Bok Tu Niok breathed a sigh of relief. Then walked away seeing their master killed. The soldiers hiding behind the boulder panicked. Desperately fleeing in disorder but Bok Tu Niok left no survivors. Swiftly exterminating them all. He began clearing the chaotic battlefield. Though nearly killed in battle he gained much spoils. If not for Elder Hao and Steward's conspiracy. He wouldn't have endured such a fierce fight. Clearly they never intended letting him survive. Then he would give them a surprise too. Bok Tu Niok quietly returned to Tan Ha. Where guards were closing the city gates. Uncle Tun Nong watched all evening but saw no sign of him. So left reassured arriving at the Hao residence. He said Bok Tu Niok gone all afternoon. Elder Hao overjoyed while the steward heard bandit chief Tui Trung Tian still not back. Surely captured Elder Hao thought everything going smoothly. Telling steward Wa report to Taho Fap tomorrow to appease him. But unbeknownst Bok Tu Niok secretly listening. Hearing the two shameless old men. He decided giving them a surprise. His sudden appearance stunned them. Elder Hao hastily changed his attitude. Inviting Bok Tu Niok for a late meal but he was no child. Not so easily fooled. Seeing his refusal the elder ordered steward Wa kill him. Didn't expect this fatso had some skill. Unleashing powerful energy. Elder Hao exerted all his energy. Thinking it would terrify Bok Tu Niok into surrendering. But with his prowess. Bok Tu Niok showed them true power. Elder Hao shocked realizing his weapon no ordinary one. Before they could react. Bok Tu Niok's aura enveloped them. Leaving the two blinded and helpless. In the hazy mist Bok Tu Niok summoned the swordsman. A flash and the sword pierced steward Hua's forehead. Before Elder Hao could see clearly he met the same fate. Bok Tu Niok waved the staff. The mist slowly dissipating as the bone staff nearly depleted. He took the soul lure incense to the graveyard. Soon some souls attracted and absorbed by the bone staff. But all ordinary spirits. Though many still not strengthening soul banner. Bok Tu Niok thought of using the soul pearl. He tossed it skyward. Energy bursting forth. Drawing nearby souls merging into a giant one. Thanks to the demonic soul the bone staff quickly recharged. Bok Tu Niok called the eagle leaping on its back flying upward. He smiled unbelieving the eagle could be ridden. Very convenient in emergencies. Next morning Bok Tu Niok strolled the streets. News of Elder Hao and Steward Hua's death spread through Tan Ha. Luckily no one knew he the culprit so he relaxed. At least briefly. After feeding the puppy Bok Tu Niok went to Tu Lu Dong's wanting to see him. A luxurious carriage at the door caught his attention. A familiar fragrance inside. But he couldn't recall whose. In the hall beside Lu Dong was sect leader Nu Thong. Ah the scent was his smelled at his party three years ago. Bok Tu Niok politely greeted Bok Wei pays respects to master. Sect leader Nu Thong if he knew he killed his disciple. Surely would not let him off. Luckily news of Trong Nok Zong not reached him yet. The two masters still praising each other. After instructing the sect leader left. Bok Tu Niok asked and learned they discussed plans against Diamond Temple. The sect leader volunteered to join. Naturally Lu Dong very pleased. But Bok Tu Niok worried. Suspecting his ties with Diamond Temple. He cautioned Lu Dong to be vigilant. Lu Dong scolded him for nonsense. Then told him prepare leaving tomorrow. Bok Tu Niok surprised at the sudden good fortune. Next morning bustling unusually at Tan Ha's gates. Hundreds of organized soldiers mobilizing. Largest since the village raid. Besides Chief Lu Dong and the two protectors. Also Swordmaster Vo Tiu guard Li Viet and General Ta Ha under Li Huan. Seven inner aura masters. Also a black cloaked man. Sect leader Nu Thong so nine masters total. Though far stronger than Elder Chu. Bok Tu Niok most worried about sect leader Nu Thong. He didn't understand why no one suspected him. Lost in thought a familiar voice suddenly heard. It was Uncle Min now promoted to wharf supervisor. Seeing him Bok Tu Niok cheered as if meeting a savior. In fact Bok Tu Niok just reunited with Uncle Min after years apart. 
Now Uncle Min promoted to Liet Duong Sex Wharf Supervisor. Even Elder Keen had to call him supervisor. Worried for his disciple Lu Dong specially assigned Min with Bok Tu Niok. At noon Duong Tran Tu led the troops to the mountain's foot. Ready for a surprise attack the treacherous mountain path needed. Sect leader Nu Thong's aid. The old man frowned quickly gesturing. Fingers blazing heaven and earth thundered. Then hailstorms poured down the odd soldiers watched. This the legendary ice rain technique. After the storm all traps on the mountain destroyed. Duong Tran Tu blew the battle horn. Troops surging towards Diamond Temple. Tan Thu Bin hurried to follow. But Bok Tu Niok held him back. He thought better waiting until the lair's gates breached before acting. Avoiding getting trapped just then. Thousands of arrows shot out the leading soldiers overwhelmed. Falling down lucky Bok Tu Niok pulled Tan Thu Bin back. Else he would have been struck. In the crowd one warrior stood out. The swordmaster Li Viet. He angrily focused his might then charged. An explosion blasted the gates open. Frightful power but more shocking were these sly ones. Turns out they had barricaded a multi-ton boulder behind the gates. Before Li Viet could react. The huge rocks fell upon his head. But with his skill. He easily handled them as the rocks neared his head. Li Viet used the ultimate swordsmanship stance. With one move all rocks shattered. Seeing his efforts about to be robbed. Lu Dong led his troops charging. He burst out behind Li Viet charge. Seized the camp gates an explosion sounded. The 100-ton rock obliterated with the gates breached. Soldiers surged into the lair. The panicked bandits inside. Hurriedly grabbed weapons to resist the three swordsmen followed too. Diamond Temple outnumbered. Their two generals volunteered to battle. The third chief advanced enemy soldiers falling one by one. Lu Kai Bin angrily slashed chaotically. Accurately striking even with eyes closed. Duong Tran too long wanted to fight the third chief. The chance had arrived the two fiercely shredding each other. Lu Dong broke into the chief's chamber. The two sect leaders followed closely. But the enemy lay in ambush ready. The giant before them was Diamond Temple's supreme chief Vo Dan. Meanwhile Bok Tu Niok slipped through the crowd. Keenly sensing Lu Dong and the sect leader's auras. Sect leader Nu Thong used ice bolt technique summoning thousands of icy darts at Vodan. The black-robed sect leader seized the chance charging from behind. Victory nearly at hand. Vo Dan suddenly vanished reappearing outside. Catching him off guard he admired the enemy's profoundly skilled martial arts. Before him a sect leader spellcasting. Behind a sly attacker. But he directly shifted. Leaving all three horrified. The opponents might exceeded imagination. Lu Dong dared not act rashly. Beside Bok Tu Niok watched intrigued. Suddenly an iron rod flew over. Uncle Min noticed in time. Rushing to block it but the force too great. He exhausted after one strike. The fiend raised his rod for a fatal blow. His uncle's life in danger. Bok Tu Niok unhesitatingly charged forth. The brute not only strong but superhuman reflexes. A fierce sword chi sliced the wall behind him. But he stubbornly kept raising his rod to counter. Bok Tu Niok promptly used Heavenly Chain's palm. Continuous chops leaving the fiend terrified and collapsing. Min witnessed the scene stunned. He never expected Bok Tu Niok's shocking progress. Even defeating internal experts. Meanwhile Duong Tran Tu and the third chief still fought fiercely. And Lu Kai Bin still battled valiantly despite being outnumbered. With two experts ambushing before and behind. He was about to be destroyed before he could react. The old man attacked from behind too. All three charged killing Lu Kai Bin. But he nimbly dodged. Then unleashed divine sword control. Thousands of flaming sharp swords. Shot at the enemies with lightning speed. The dreadful might tore the earth apart. Leaving Li Viet stunned and unbelieving. Lu Kai Bin truly deserved being called a prodigy. Shocked he was actually an immortal cultivator. Giving no chance. He commanded the swords continually striking. As blades neared his head. He used the ultimate diamond body stance to defend. Meanwhile Lu Dong and the two sect leaders battled the supreme chief fiercely. Strangely despite constant attacks. He didn't react at all. Body unbleeding and unfatigued. Like a walking corpse. When Lu Dong realized the truth it was too late. A sword flew over from behind. Bok Tu Niok shouted warning but too far. Only watched as Lu Dong turned and got stabbed through the chest. 
collapsing thankfully his quick sealing. Let him endure just then. Sect leader Nu Thong revealed his true self. Turns out the chief was his puppet. This was his life's work in puppetry. Lu Dong trembled with fury, wanting to shred the old man immediately. Rage transformed into vengeance's drive. Power surging from Lu Dong. Shooting straight upward he charged the old man with dizzying speed. Nu Thong ordered the puppet rush to shield him. But before absolute might, all tricks futile the maddened old man as this was his lifeblood. Seeing his fruits about to be robbed, he remained calm Nu Thong looked down on Lu Dong, thinking him arrogant but with a wave of his hand. The enemy's weapons shattered before touching him. Seeing this Lu Dong changed tactics. Using heavenly chains palm a loud bang. The old man blasted back several meters. Nu Thong nearly died on the spot. Energy rapidly depleting Lu Dong also exhausted. Once revered Nu Thong, who knew he was actually Diamond Temple's chief. Bok Tu Niok felt relieved of burden. Seeing the unbelievable scene, the old man checked his puppet. But no magic worked. He grieved as if losing a child. This was his lifeblood of over 20 years. Just when in despair a young man appeared. Tan has General Li Hao. Wielding the secret ghost banishing Vorpal Ring. Having witnessed its power, Lu Kai Bin anxiously charged to shield his senior brother. But man proposes God disposes someone quickly seized him. That man used inner power, focusing it to explode the enemy's organs. Then turned his target on the old man. But Nu Thong didn't bother with Li Hao. Promptly taking out his bone staff chanting to summon souls. But the general was no novice. Taking out the anti-ghost true heavenly talisman. A formidable energy shot skyward. Black clouds gathered and the ghosts turned to ashes. Sensing danger Nu Thong tried fleeing. But with Bok Tu Nyak's level. He let no one escape. With spirit eyes he keenly tracked the old mon's every move. Seeing his path blocked the old man promptly summoned a sword. Flying over at lightning speed. In the life or death moment Bok Tu Niok took out the painting summoning the swordsman. His heroic and handsome look spellbinding. But destroyed in just half a second. As the enemy blade neared his forehead. Bok Tu Niok used heart light shield to block it. Stepping forward he struck with bone destruction palm. Which could paralyze the opponent's body. But from his heavy injuries. He suddenly coughed blood and had to stop or risk his life. The old man could only flee. After much effort Diamond Temple was finally destroyed. But New Thong escaped capture. Though victorious the losses were heavy. Especially the chief's death pained everyone. To Bok Tu Niok the whole world sunk into grey. Early morning three days later Lu Hang knocked on his door. He came to say goodbye before leaving the sect. Now no reason to stay anymore. Before going Lu Hang wanted to give him a treasure. Opening it two rare blue cloud pills the chief kept before suppressing the bandits. Only Lu Hang knew their hiding place. Not wanting to give them to the scrambling heirs. After gifting them the two parted ways. Liet Duong sect now leaderless. The situation chaotic Bok Tu Niok had to quickly cultivate to stand firm in Lu Duong. Just returned to the branch sect he met two disciples who told him to help catch a deserter. Though unwilling Bok Tu Niok couldn't refuse. The two explained the fugitive was Trong Kwok Nia, an outer disciple who fled three days prior. After assassinating Elder Bao and Madame Lu of Tui Wei ship, the mission captured Trong Kwok Nia within a week. Dead or alive just returned to the branch and a new mission already. Shocking Bok Tu Niok. The target was Trong Kwok Nia again who started at the same point three years ago but now vastly different. Clue said he was in Van Deep Village. For old friendship's sake Bok Tu Niok immediately accepted. In a rush he headed straight for Van Deep. Passing the bustling market he turned onto a small path. Now enemies could ambush and assassinate him anywhere. Sure enough two experts lay in wait. If not for spirit eyes. He would have fallen for their trap with his skill. He wanted to see what they could do. Bok Tu Niok rode into a trap. Two figures appeared charging at dizzying speed. Though driven to the wall he smiled. As these two fools were Lu Ha and Kao Van Doi. One swordsman was enough to handle them all. The two terrified by his magic. With two cracks both collapsed. The world silently returned to destroy evidence. He incinerated their bodies with fire rings. Bok Tu Niok continued his journey. Heart buoyant after years gone. Lotus Demon Village reappeared. 
Its territory now one and a half times larger. At its current expansion rate, surely Van Deep Village would be the next target in three years. Watching the bustling villagers, Bach to Neok felt both familiar yet strange. Three years passed, he returned home shaking off fame's dust. Auntie Trong and Uncle Dong almost didn't recognize their nephew. His fame spread everywhere. Everyone gathered excitedly chatting. But Bok Tu Niok hurriedly asked about Trong Kwok Nia. Uncle Tun looked troubled, not wanting to betray a fellow villager. Bok Tu Niok reassured everyone. He and Trong Kwok Nia were fellow villagers and comrades. Now he's in trouble, Bok Tu Niok only wanted to help him. If captured by other Liet Duong members, Trong Kwok Nia would be in peril. Auntie Trong worriedly said Trong Kwok Nia came by yesterday then immediately left. Unclear where he went being a fellow villager he might be returned home. Do village deep in the mountains. The path treacherous Bok Wei left his horse at the foot. Climbing on foot after crossing three peaks. He reached Do village unexpected Trong Kwok Nia was from here. Eight years ago the village was attacked. All villagers killed. Before leaving Bok Tu Niok urged everyone quickly evacuate Van Deep. Avoiding Lotus Demon Village's fate befalling here. Meanwhile sect leader Nu Thong passed the trail. Unexpectedly smelling Bok Tu Niok's spirit fire scent. To avenge his disciple he determined to relentlessly pursue him. In the broken alms bowl before the village temple gate were some burnt paper money. Perhaps Trong Kwok Nia recently made offerings to his family. He hadn't gone long when Bok Tu Niok went deeper into the village. He noticed a pair of eyes staring fixedly at him from under a tree. Turning back he saw an enormous snake staring at him. As he approached he was shocked to see Trong Kwok Nia sitting behind the tree. Bok Tu Niok didn't understand why he killed then fled. Trong Kwok Nia honestly recounted everything. In the past the village was wiped out in one night. He luckily at his uncles in Van Deep surviving. An orphan since little joining Liet Duong sect was the happiest thing then. When first admitted on Tui Wei ship, everyone loved him. The leader even taught him martial arts but later. He realized this place only a den of evil. Most guests came for pleasure. The rest had twisted tastes. Alone he couldn't resist. Forced into the male quarters Bok Tu Niok couldn't imagine that scene. His heart swelled with pity. After fleeing for three days Trong Kwok Nia could have run far not returned to Van Deep. Exposing himself. But worried Liet Duong sect would harm his uncle. He hurried back to make arrangements also to see off the monstrous beast on the mountain. That was the one who attacked the village before. Now with things done, he could die without regrets. But Bok Tu Niok had no intention of pursuing him. After saying farewell he left. Reminding the sect was in chaos now he said likely no one would care about Trong Kwok Nia for a while. He had time to escape. Just get out of Go territory he'd be safe. Trong Kwok Nia touched. Tears flowing he would engrave this kindness in his heart. Bok Tu Niok watched his old friend disappear. Hoping to meet again and that he lives well. After seeing off his friend he mounted to leave. But suddenly a sword flew over at 100 meters per second. Luckily he managed to dodge in time. A loud bang sounded. The ground behind him split apart. Looking back Bok Tu Niok saw it was sect leader Nu Thong who escaped before. The old man glared at him resentfully Bok Tu Niok knew it was time to settle old and new debts. At his command the sword darted forth again. Though practiced life force divine art to the fifth layer. Bok Tu Niok still no match for Nu Thong. If not using his full might had perish. He activated the soul system. Spending 21,000 soul points to maximize diamond Vajra body. A formidable energy erupted. The blinding light making new thong afraid. Unless from a cultivator clan. No one could explode with such might. To defeat him decades more cultivation needed. At his command the sword pierced an eagle's chest then shot at the swordsman. Unexpectedly the attack too strong. The swordsman dissipated into smoke. Bok Tu Niok smiled underestimating the enemy too much. He returned the move to the opponent. The clashing swords shot sparks. Indeed experience still superior. Just blocking the sword he faced thousands of arrows. In danger Bok Tu Niok used spirit fireballs to counter. Under the flames. The icy sword evaporated on the spot. New thong startled the tiny fireballs could withstand his ice sword. Before reacting a new fireball came. Nearly roasting him. Bok Tu Niok gave no chance. 
promptly taking out the bone staff this thing. Surely you recognize it New Thong shocked. Flew up unleashing his ultimate defense stance. Now with evidence clear he decided to make his move. Seeing this Bok Tu Neok broached the past himself. Bok Tu Neok secretly smiled. Detailing the Go Hao incident from three years ago. New Thong raged to the point of almost bleeding internally. Two eagles shot forth he hurriedly took out Huyan Ko creating a shield. Though sharp they couldn't pierce through. Thanks to his flawless defense aloft. New Thong controlled the sword shooting over. Bok Tu Neok used great blade art to deflect it away. But immediately the next wave of attacks came crashing. New Thong emitted a blinding light. Pose like the goddess of freedom the swirling chi intense. Bok Tu Neok sensed danger. Just as New Thong roared Bok Tu Neok. Pay with your life for my disciple he unleashed minor celestial blade art. Invisible blades shooting straight at Bok Tu Neok. The eagle shredded before even shrieking. At the critical moment Bok Tu Neok used heart light shield technique to block. The enemy's fearsome power left him flustered. An innate terror rose in Bok Tu Neok's mind. Sect leader Nu Thong continued summoning minor celestial blade art fierce attacks. Sooner or later exhausting him. Bok Tu Neok knew he couldn't drag this out. Deciding to go all out perhaps Nu Thong was also nearly spent. If he kept up the relentless assaults. He used cloud steps leaping aloft weaving between the blades. Clenching his huge fist he charged at dizzying speed. Sect leader Nu Thong thought he sought suicide. Nearly laughing out loud. But really Bok Tu Neok only feigned to get near him. Seeing his plan succeed he used a destructive move. However the light around Nu Thong. Rendered the punch harmless. One must persevere Bok Tu Neok commanded continuous strikes upon the shield. Unable to watch sect leader Nu Thong decided to end the fight. Two wind blades sliced past both sides of him. Nearly leaving him armless. The eagles not so fortunate. Shredded on the spot now only the swordsman remained by his side. Together they charged a cracking sounded. The shield split seeing the enemy defenseless. Bok Tu Neok commanded attack. New Thong hastily shot wind blades over. Bok Tu Neok charged wounded but still advancing. Together they commanded the sword slashing down. Sect leader New Thong officially perished. The battle ended Bok Tu Neok avenged his master too. Aside from minor wounds he was fine. Just two days bandaging and even the scars invisible. This time with the painting's aid. Without the eagles taking hits and the swordsman's help. Head have ascended long ago. Unexpected that ordinary old man had such good stuff. That small shield actually a rare medium grade artifact. The little belt also heavy. Containing many precious things with Ta Hu Fap about to become chief. The future would be very hard for him. So most important now was increasing his strength. A daring idea came to mind. Bok Tu Neok rode off immediately. Departing at once midnight. The bright moon above Lotus Village deathly still. Only the rustling leaves sounded. Bok Tu Neok risked death coming here mainly to strengthen the bone staff. Also to gather soul points. Who knows might even save Van Deep Village. He lit the incense sticks. The fragrance spreading attracting souls. Their hungry gazes like single men spotting a girl. Bok Tu Neok concentrated. One bite meant death. But the first ghosts only common fiends. No different than three years ago. But unlike before he didn't flee now. They swarmed like ravenous corpses. Just seeing people they charged. With his skill Bok Tu Neok promptly took out the soul gathering flag. Right after he waved the flag. A strong gust blew away the attacking fiends. Truly living up to ghost pit name. The soul numbers astonishing. At this rate he could soon summon a mighty army. Easier said than done Bok Tu Neok tried recalling some souls. After practicing the bone staff refined 12 master souls. With this spirit army assisting. He needn't destroy ghosts personally. At his command they immediately swarmed forth. Tearing apart and devouring raw all the ghosts even bones not spared. What excited him more. They grew stronger eating ghost flesh. Watching his small army fight enthusiastically. Bok Tu Neok smiled satisfied. Now let the storm come crashing. He took out the paintings two eagles appeared. Easily destroying the fiends. In a moment behind was cleared. Bok Tu Neok quickly unleashed the soul gathering flag. Commanding a clean sweep of the scene. The soldiers swarmed fiends falling one by one. He smiled confidently the raid going smoothly. 
The bone staff not only gained him souls, but also refined twenty more master souls. Next he just had to order them to clear the whole area. And Van Deep Village would have peace. But ideals far from harsh reality. As Bach II Neok prepared to rampage, suddenly a loud blast behind. Turns out the demon realm not so simple as imagined. Surely an important character. A thick yin aura rising. Indeed the weeping ghost of legend. Suddenly he shrieked ordering his four attendants to fling up his palanquin. They charged at Bach II Neok. He quickly controlled a sword, piercing the four foolish ghosts' heads. His small army swarmed to enjoy the taste. The master soul's power surged again. Bach II Neok looked at him scornfully, wondering if Madam dared show off the weeping ghost enraged. Determined to teach the brat a lesson, suddenly a red ray shot out from the palanquin. Bach II Neok quickly had the master souls massacre each other. The weeping ghost raged to the point of nearly relapsing. Ready to use Death Ray to destroy him. Bok Tu Neok panicked, not daring to do anything else. A red clad man stepped forth, exuding boundless aura. His handsome looks enchanted all. But with his skill, Bok Tu Neok had seen it all. He ordered the swordsman to charge and destroy him. But clearly, the weeping ghost, no amateur. The attack, nothing to him. One slap blasted the swordsman away. Seizing the momentum, he pounced to finish off Bok Tu Neok. Sensing the peril Bach II Neok quickly controlled a sword stabbing from behind. Unable to react in time half of that handsome face sliced off. And this looks obsessed society. This worse than death itself. The weeping ghost shrieked madly. Bach II Neok continuously retreated. The horrifying shriek could kill normal people. But that was the chance he awaited. The weeping ghost seized the opportunity and charged. But all within Bach II Neok's calculations. He ordered the swordsman to stab from behind. The sword pierced through the weeping ghost's chest. The pain nearly making him faint Bach II Neok meant to press the advantage but was shocked to see his wound automatically healing. He even shredded Bach II Neok's eagle. Bach II Neok worried this monster very hard to deal with. He drank Trong Nok Zong's restoration pill. Unexpected to use it in this situation. His mind cleared fatigue vanishing. Seeing his spirit restored he decided to use a secret weapon. At his command talisman surrounded the weeping ghost. Sensing danger, he turned and rushed at Bach II Neok. Trying to obstruct him the eagles attacked, but shredded in a flash. Just as the weeping ghost focused on him, the swordsman appeared behind slashing down. But the weeping ghost not so easy to kill. He quickly went behind the swordsman countering with a move. A crack sounded as the swordsman split in half. Seeing this the recently gained fiend disciples charged to assist him. The weeping ghost raged seeing his minions rebel. Using eastern cedar move. Next he targeted Bach II Neok again. But blocked by now. He had gathered enough energy. Bach II Neok unleashed thunder steps. The sky pitch black thunder crashing down like rain. But the weeping ghost still calm. Continuing his fierce roar attack. As the sharp claws neared his forehead. Bach II Neok used bright shield to block. At the same time he kept shooting lightning bolts at his target. One thunderbolt struck the weeping ghost's head directly. Against nature's power all beings helpless. The weeping ghost struck by lightning turned to dust blown by the wind. The little demons never witnessed such a scene before. But Bach II Neok didn't plan to spare them. At his command continuous lightning killed them. Next he led the army to completely destroy Lotus Village's demon realm. Amidst the quiet night shrieks and wails echoed the ruined village. Though Bach II Neok didn't save his village he had his revenge. Killing the demon king and his followers. From the desolate village came cries of grief. It said weeds must be pulled from the root. Mercy on enemies is cruelty to oneself. As Bach II Neok prepared to gather spoils. He picked up something special. It was an item from a ghost's corpse. A demon core very useful for upgrading the soul gathering flag. The soul gathering flag reached the peak combat power of the 24 restrictions. Soul points also increased to 95,000. The next morning Van Deep villagers buzzed about the shrieks from Lotus Village last night. They thought it was the thunder ancestor descending to banish the ghosts and demons. With things done Bach II Neok bid the villagers farewell and left Van Deep. Next he would kill Kwok Chin Duong. At midnight during a strong wind Bok Tu Neok came to his room. 
using light body art to leap onto the roof undetected. Charging in to kill Kwok Chin Duong would be too easy. Bok Tu Niok decided to play with him a little. He used the soul gathering flag to summon a master soul. At this time Kwok Chin Duong was in bed secretly delighted. Now his master was about to become chief. His own position in the sect would also greatly rise. Also according to plan Bok Tu Niok should have died by Lu Ha and Cao Van's hands already. Suddenly a cold chi appeared. Kwok Chin Duong opened his eyes and panicked fleeing. He was so frightened he nearly wet the bed. At this time Bok Tu Niok appeared senior brother Quach. Don't be afraid Quach Chin Duong trembled. Thinking Bok Tu Niok a ghost but Bok Tu Niok casually said seeing me you're very surprised. Twelve master souls appeared surrounding Quach Chin Duong. Bok Tu Niok said I have some questions I hope senior brother can answer. Quach Chin Duong frightened. Had no choice but to agree Bok Tu Niok didn't understand why Ta Hu Fap wanted to kill him. When he didn't threaten him at all. Quach Chin Duong explained it was Elder Li Chu of Go Jiang's scheme. He promised if Bok Tu Niok was eliminated. He would help Ta Hu Fap become Lu Duong's chief. The Li family's power dominated Go Jiang. Just Bok Tu Niok's death and his son could become top disciple. With a chance at librarian appointment. For this position other top disciples had been killed too. Bok Tu Niok was stunned to hear this. Unexpected the Li clan so formidable. Quach Chin Duong also only heard rumors. Unclear details according to rumors. Liet Duong Sek's former chief was once the Li family's housekeeper. Only after leaving their household. Did he become famous in Go Jiang? Liet Duong Sek's former chief shook the realm when establishing Liet Duong sect. With the Li family he could only be some housekeeper. Bok Tu Niok continued asking about Ta Hu Fap's abilities. Turns out he was a frog in a well. Apart from famous Eagle Assault 10 moves just a single palm blade art nothing else. Having learned all he needed. Quach Chin Duong was of no more use. Bok Tu Niok ordered the master souls to shred his corpse. With his current might Bok Tu Niok feared no one in Liet Duong sect. The next target for elimination was Ta Hu Fap. Bok Tu Niok again used light body art. Swiftly arriving at True Tin's place. Right as he still schemed inside with someone. Unexpected disaster silently approaching. Bok Tu Niok just suppressed the demon realm. Now came for vengeance he used sect leader Nu Thong's magic. Quickly reaching Trong Tin's residence. He hid behind the door eavesdropping. Turns out Ta Hu Fap had bribed four elders. Just needing the Li family's aid to certainly become chief. Just as the two secretly celebrated. The door automatically opened panicked. True Tin stood but saw nothing. Thinking it was sect leader Nu Thong's vengeful spirit. He knelt begging forgiveness. Bok Tu Niok sneered at his despicableness. He commanded the master souls to attack. Seeing pleading futile True Tin could only fight back. He used Eagle Assault 10 moves. A formidable energy erupting. A crack sounded as the female master soul split in half. Just finishing one move a swordsman ambushed from behind. Luckily True Tin turned dodging in time. He used single palm blade art. Ready to teach the enemy a lesson. But wave after wave attacked. A dagger flying over at astonishing speed. The constant ambush enraged him to near relapse. In fact True Tin had discovered the ambusher's hiding spot. He flung darts out the window but Bok Tu Niok prepared ahead. Using bright shield to block it. Seeing no reaction Trong Tin kept attacking. Unexpectedly a blade flew over from behind. The housekeeper used himself as a shield. An extremely loyal act. But before absolute might. All meaningless the blade pierced through both. Bok Tu Niok delighted eliminating the enemy so quickly. A disciple reported finding True Tin's treasures. The earlier commotion must be spread outside. Bok Tu Niok opened the soul system but saw it optimizing data. This confused him. After a night's raid Bok Tu Niok only returned at dawn. Long absent the pup must be very hungry. But entering the yard he couldn't find it. Only hoped it was inside. But opening the door the dog on his bed. Eating snakes sleeping in his bed. Happier than humans it dreamed. Probably of spring. Sleeping soundly the pup suddenly sensed great threatening chi. It jerked awake seeing a horrifying face like the reapers. Bok Tu Niok also panicked but couldn't do anything. Anyway it was a pup he took in. He had to be responsible. 
Today was the election for Liet Duong Sek's new chief. Very crowded with Ta Hu Fap assassinated last night. The leading candidate was Hu Ho Fap. As everyone discussed spiritedly, a stranger entered, promptly cursed at by disciples. Another disciple, unable to stand it, punched him, nearly beating him to death. The man ordered him to apologize immediately. Turned out he was Don Van Fong, the new chief appointed by the Go Jiang chief. Unexpected, he was berated upon entering. The disciple panicked and apologized profusely when learning his true identity. Don Van Fong reached inner power realm seven years ago. Now a top expert, his strength even greater than Tu Lu Dong's. The disciples were stunned, unable to react. Faced with Don Van Fong's magnificent power, they could only bow heads, accepting him as chief. Don Van Fong appointed Lu Duong as Ta Ho Fap and promoted Dam Seo Fam to Hu Ho Fap. With Bok Tu Niok going to Go Jiang County soon, Don Van Fong hoped he would look after Tan Ha Branch more later. As someone of Zhang Hu, Bok Tu Niok readily agreed. Before leaving, he arranged things for his parents, then went to the mountain to find Chu Hin Kai. Unexpectedly, he still had a senior brother in Go Jiang County, though not seeing each other for over ten years. He still introduced Bok Tu Niok and said to look for him if in trouble. The Go River was an important trade route for Vo Nation, spanning thousands of miles, flowing through most of Vo Nation cities. Early morning, Bok Tu Niok set off for Go Jiang, watching Tan Ha gradually disappear behind. His heart heavy with the pup having no one, he could only bring it along. The more prosperous, the fiercer the competition. That was the eternal law on the boat. A middle-aged man enthusiastically described Go Jiang. From him, Bok Tu Niok learned besides Liet Duong sect. Go Jiang also had Grand Sword sect and Nine Seals sect, three famous groups and four martial halls. Seeing his enthusiasm, Bok Tu Niok approached, asking about the martial arts assembly. But the man made excuses for his ignorance, saying he only cared for politics, so didn't pay attention just then. A stranger approached. He advised not looking down on the assembly, for gathering much talent. Including the recently emerged expert Tran Tan Van with no sect, relying only on his family sword art, yet still made a great fortune. Bok Tu Niok felt his hot blood surge. Indeed, Go Jiang was full of talent. The captain said the assembly hosted by three upscale taverns Hong Tu Hall, Thien Hong Residence Kuyat Lai Tower. Since last year, the beauties of Hong Tu Hall and Thien Hong Residence competed in beauty, changing the assembly from biannual to monthly. The ladies' participation made the assembly famous everywhere. Number one now was Tran Tan Van, though only twenty Tran Tan Van reached the expert third flow realm. Bok Tu Niok was stunned to hear this, though with the Soul System's aid, he only reached the peak of external cultivation, peak wind realm. After half a day's sail, he finally arrived in Go Jiang County. The big city was truly different. The majestic architecture, astounding. The bustling streets had many swordsmen. Bok Tu Niok went to the Liet Duong sect headquarters to report. He keenly felt the disciples' weak and strong chi, most around ten years, but full of passion. The sword wielders ruthless. If such talents came to Tan Ha sect, leaders would scramble to accept disciples. But in Go Jiang, they were just ordinary inner disciples. Bok Tu Niok went to Internal Affairs Hall to report. The man asked his name and background. After introducing himself, Bok Tu Niok took out a command token. This is my travel permit. The man's eyes widened as it was a top disciple's token. The man flipped through the ledger again and again. Indeed, finding Bok Tu Niok's name, three more late days, and he would have lost qualifications and had the rewards confiscated. The rewards included a marrow cleansing pill and 1,000 contribution points. Also, preferential treatment plus 20 tails monthly stipend. Bok Tu Niok was overjoyed. Almost a year's Tan Ha salary. The man gave him a new token, saying rewards given after three days. Use this token to get settled and arranged work. In other words, he had three days to establish connections. Regrettably, Bok Tu Niok had no relatives in Go Jiang. Next, he had to find lodging. Though the sect would arrange housing with many secrets, he decided to get a private place. With his savings over the years. He spent 1,500 tails on a villa near Liet Duong sect headquarters. Not only scenic, he could also practice on the balcony. Early next morning, Bok Tu Niok woke up to cultivate. He wanted to find sect mates here. 
see if they could help according to rumors. One died in battle half a year ago, the other now addicted to gambling and bankrupt. Not hard to find him, just ask the casino staff. The man before him was Duong Trien Phi. Engrossed in gambling, hearing someone mention Liet Duong sect, he felt a bit surprised. Bok Tu Niak came up to greet and introduce himself. Hearing he was Tu Lu Dong's disciple, Duong Trien Phi was moved to tears. Thinking he came to save him, he immediately asked to borrow money. Bok Tu Niak promptly turned to leave. But Duong Trien Phi didn't let this money source go. He asserted nothing and Go Jiang couldn't be done. Seeing him spirited, Bok Tu Niak temporarily believed him. He said he knew Supervisor Hua of Internal Affairs Hall. With him arranging work success certain. But now everyone realistic. No benefits, no work. He demanded 200 tails. Bok Tu Niak nearly slapped him. Seeing this, he lowered it to 100 tails. Though unwilling, Bok Tu Niak took it out. Duong Trien Phi pocketed the money, promising to complete the task after parting. Bok Tu Niak brought gifts to visit Elder Neep. Elder Neep didn't expect his last meeting with Tu Lu Dong in Tan Ha to be the final one. This time, Bok Tu Niak came to inquire about the Lam clan. Elder Neep only knew the clan passed down over 100 generations. Their power extremely mighty compared to Liet Duong sect like the glow of fireflies to the moon's light. The Lam clan's martial artists reached the innate realm. Showing their strength martial realms divided into external segment. Internal cultivation internal qi state above were three flows. Two flows one flow only surpassing one flow was innate. Even Liet Duong sect chief Jiang Ti only reached one flow. As librarian martial arts and secrets endless could study martial essence. The pinnacle of life Bok Tu Niak was enlightened. No wonder they valued this position so. Elder Neep hoped he would seize this rare chance. The selection criteria simple. Whoever contributed the most points in three months would become librarian. After leaving Elder Neep, Bok Tu Niak returned home just entering. A servant reported someone claiming to be Duong sect master of Liet Duong sect was looking for him. Bok Tu Niak went to the living room. Seeing a strange man, he politely greeted and introduced himself as newly arrived. Knowing no one the man stood up I am Li Chu vice sect master of Tui Vi Hall. Li Ung's father Bok Tu Niak was shocked. Wasn't this Li Ung's father? Why was he here now Li Chu's purpose only one? Namely to take Bok Tu Niak's marrow cleansing pill. He even brought 5,000 tails as gratitude gift. Promising to help him become librarian if he agreed to the pill trade. However Bok Tu Niak didn't care for fame or profit. He promptly declined saying the marrow cleansing pill was needed for cultivation. He didn't want to trade it he invited the disappointed Li Chu to leave. This was the first refusal had received. Li Chu raged to near heart attack. Before he could say more Bok Tu Niak ordered the servant to open the door and see off the guest. Having refused the wine now he had to drink bitter tea. Next morning Duong Trien Phi came to visit and gave Bok Tu Niak bad news. Supervisor Hua who promised to arrange a good job now changed his mind. Bok Tu Niak knew this was Li Chu's scheme. He asked Duong Trien Phi to help with something else. Investigating someone Duong Trien Phi confidently accepted. Bok Tu Niak gave Chu Heen Kai's letter. The soul system notified data optimization complete. After a whole month he could finally use the soul system again. Bok Tu Niak grinned. Immediately raising all martial arts. And magic to initial levels. Then he used the fusion function. Spending 10,000 soul points fusing indestructible divine skill external cultivation skill diamond tempering art. Zen cultivation diamond flowing jade body of internal cultivation skills. Next spending another 10,000 soul points fusing 18 link sabers. Executioner Saber Falling Leaf Saber Arts. Endless Saber Staff Arts. Next step cultivating inner power to enter the entering inner state realm. With current might he could now beat inner chi experts. Bok Tu Niak then went to Liet Duong sect Go Jiang headquarters to receive top disciple rewards. He got 30 tail silver. One marrow cleansing pill and 1000 contribution points. After accepting internal affairs gave him the token for his new assigned duties. As expected Li Chu arranged him to guard the remote Tan Sun Medicine Garden. Though fewer chances for contribution points more free time to cultivate inner power. Tan Sun was a place growing medicines. 
spanning thousands of acres Go Jiang's main provider. Most of the spirit herbs Liet Duong sect disciples used for cultivation came from here. As one of Liet Duong's four major industries, few dared make trouble here with the chief guard role. Bok Tu Nyaks worked quite leisurely. He just received the orders from internal affairs. Immediately went to Tan Sun to report. Bok Tu Nyak wasn't nervous at all. Seeing a strange man the guard quickly grabbed his club to hit but found it was a superior. He hurriedly dropped his club and respectfully bowed to Bok Tu Nyak. Bok Tu Nyak secretly rejoiced the boss feeling truly great. But as a newbie should NT be ostentatious. Must keep polite he said he just arrived to take up the post. Hoped later brother Nu would help more hearing this. Nu Nyi then respected him. As supervisor Trong often in the city. Everything handled by Li Van Fong. Nu Nyi led Bok Tu Nyak to the tea drying room to meet Li Van Fong. He was always frowning. Probably menopausal after Nu Nyi's introduction. Bok Tu Nyak politely showed his identity token. But Li Van Fong disliked superiors. Seeing a top disciple made him angry. He shouted I don't care what status you have. In the medicine garden you follow our rules. Bok Tu Nyak bowed his head saying head do his duty well. Right after someone entered reporting treasurer Tu's medicines prepared. Being far from Liet Duong sect headquarters. Bok Tu Nyak decided to return and prepare belongings. After touring the medicine garden. He returned home just entering the city. He encountered a familiar group. Seemingly nine seals sect disciples Bok Tu Nyak watched their backs with unease. Arriving at the villa at night. Two servants welcomed him in after years of effort. He finally attained a wealthy life. Truly great but knowing arrogance caused lagging behind. After dinner Bok Tu Nyak promptly began cultivating. He tried one marrow cleansing pill. The result like a battle tonic stronger with fighting. His body stimulated to purge toxins out. Compared to absorbing Yang Qi. Absorbing marrow cleansing pill had some effect but with his internal cultivation level not very effective. As still early Bok Tu Nyak decided to research the ancient clan's artifacts. Hoping to find operating principles to upgrade the soul gathering flag. A week passed Tan Sun peaceful. Daily Bok Tu Nyak just ate slept and read Jin Yang novels for entertainment. Lazily drifting when Nu Nyi ran over. Panting turned out someone damaged the west side protective fence. Manager Lee ordered catching the culprit in a day. Bok Tu Nyak immediately led disciples to the scene. Someone already gathered evidence. The two dogs still trembling. The culprit likely a blood evolved beast. Seeing the calm leader one guy grew dissatisfied. Called Chu V he disliked Bok Tu Nyak for taking his position. Chu V conspired with cronies to ruin Bok Tu Nyak's reputation. He led them to the rocky overgrown mountain forest. Saying clues here unrealistic. But Bok Tu Nyak persevered walking in the bushes. Just as Chu V decided to quit Bok Tu Nyak berated him for finding clues. The footprints and size matched the damaged crop. But Chu V still stubbornly denied the facts. Bok Tu Nyak ignored him just following the trail. The others could only follow after a while. A mysterious cave appeared ahead. Seeing the three arrogant guys Bok Tu Nyak gave a chance to show off. The three trembled at entering the cave. Suddenly a roar sounded from within. Before they could react a wild boar charged out attacking. Bok Tu Nyak jumped up dodging it. Leaving just a puff of smoke the three stunned. Thinking he fled now only self-reliance left. They surrounded attacking the boar but futile. The thick armor like hide rendered blades useless. Moreover the beast's aura frightened them to near peeing themselves. The boar roared and charged over stabbing. The disciples couldn't react. Knocked flying everywhere a burst of mighty power from the boar erupted. A disciple managed to grab its tail in time. The pain stimulated its nerves. The beast roared then thrashed about. Trying to shake him off Chu V called his cronies for aid. But another boar appeared behind them. They panicked frightened to trembling legs. At the crisis Bok Tu Nyak appeared mighty like an immortal. A crack sounded as the boar split in half. Finished one the other still approached. As one experienced in battle. This was Bok Tu Nyak's chance to test a new move. Taking a step his new saber move sliced off the boar's head. The powerful display stunned Chu V. One move one bore the top disciple's strength indeed not just reputation. Bok Tu Nyak ordered subordinates to carry the boars down. 
The simultaneous appearance of two mutated beasts. Something spiritually aware must be nearby. He decided to investigate the curious disciples wondered what else was in the cave. As expected fortune came to the sincere. In just half an hour they found much valuable herbs. Bach II Neok sent disciples to sell some and buy wine. Everyone greatly admired him. Afterwards the group carried the boars back. Concluding a fulfilling day. Next morning the sunshine brighter than normal. Tan Sun still peaceful as usual. Bach II Neok saw the boulder still had the boar's bite marks. Emitting some spirit chi like spirit infused stone. Perhaps the two evolved boars from eating this rock. Duong Trian Phi suddenly came visiting. Seeing him at such a remote place. He felt guilty if only he had begged for a better position Bach II Neok wouldn't have to go so far. But to him money was fleeting. Duong Trian Phi didn't lecture much. This time he came reporting finding details on the person Bach II Neok previously asked him to investigate. An immortal cultivator named Tako Thuong. Bak Tu Niok eagerly told him to elaborate. But Duong Trian Phi worried. Advising not to provoke the ancient clans. Bak Tu Niok didn't care. Thinking he worried too much reluctantly. Duong Trian Phi told all the information gathered. Thinking him careless unexpectedly he was so meticulous. Just about to invite him for a meal Duong Trian Phi already invited Bak Tu Niok to the martial arts assembly in half a month. Bok Tu Niok readily accepted. Busy gambling for money they only chatted a while before Duong Trian Phi hurried off. Bok Tu Niok idled not knowing what to do. He could only follow the pup catching butterflies in the backyard garden. It frolicked wildly in the vegetable patch. But Bok Tu Niok didn't mind. Letting it play freely he was daydreaming about a future life with the pup when it barked twice then ran out the gate. Bok Tu Niok promptly gave chase. Unexpectedly it ran straight to the beast's cave. With keen senses after a while. It dug up a spirit-infused stone fragment. So the pup not only had good smell but could sense objects with spirit chi. Indeed something strange. Meanwhile in the Liet Duong sect law enforcement hall conference hall. The leaders discussed the killed disciple. The chest wound was the seal of the Nine Seals sect. A few days ago some Nine Seals disciples were active in the South City. Surely they were involved. From south to north city only three routes but locals all said they saw no one. So the killer still in the south city. A disciple saw someone resembling Hung Chin Duck. Nine Seals sect leader chief guardian Hoang Kuang Chu gasped hearing this. Rumor said Hung Chin Duck reached second rank expert level. Now among the disciples someone volunteered to fight. One of the ten top disciples. Kung Tin Hua chief guardian Hoang Kuang Chu slammed the table. Ordering everyone strictly secretive guarding. Determined to uncover the truth he felt close to catching a big fish. Giving Kong Tin Hua full authority. This was a good chance to become the Lam clan's librarian. Meanwhile these days Bok Tu Niok went scavenging with the pup behind the mountain. Not only gaining much soul power but excavating many precious herbs. The pup's body also grew bigger. Its combat ability soon rivaling newly evolved beasts. About to leave suddenly a golden ray flashed in the distance. Bok Tu Niok immediately activated Spirit Eye Art. Looking closely ahead under a tree in Spirit Reach Valley was a group of Nine Seals sect disciples meditating. Probably cultivating according to the Treasure Saber's records. Golden Spirit Fruits not only increased inner power but made the skin rosy. Better than Vigor Pills for cultivation. Bok Tu Niok was currently struggling reaching inner power realm. So golden spirit fruits very beneficial however. Behind the tree was a giant skeleton. Showing they were very mighty. Bok Tu Niok guessed the old man certainly reached third flow expert level. The other two at least inner chi realm martial artists. Acting now too reckless. He decided to retreat first. Awaiting the chance for later extermination carrying the 100 jin wolf strolling the medicine garden. The disciples all admired Bok Tu Niok. He ordered selling the beast corpses at the monster market. Part for rewarding everyone. The rest given to him seeing the beast corpse. The Y died disciples guessed that to kill it. At least peak external cultivation needed. After instructing Bok Tu Niok decided to return to the city for an important matter. The vice internal affairs head looked at him wearily. Supervisor Trong would come tomorrow anyway. But Bok Tu Niok came to report a major discovery. 
For the rules, important reports got contribution rewards. He recounted discovering the Nine Seals sect. The shocked internal affairs head jumped up asking how many. Where Bok Tu Niok clearly detailed their numbers and might. Bok Tu Niok even suggested sending third rank experts leading the squad. Seeing the careful notes of internal affairs head, he felt at ease leaving, but they were naturally suspicious. Thinking he fabricated for contribution rewards. They disobeyed orders acting on their own then assigned tasks. Bok Tu Niok hurried back to Tan Sun. Just arriving to see disciples crowded together. Seeing him absent, Supervisor Trong slightly displeased. Disciples said he just left. With Li Van Fong leading back from the main path to the gate. Bok Tu Niok was puzzled since he just took that path without seeing them. Logically, they should have met. While pondering, a disciple reported a guest looking for him. It was Chief Guardian Hoang Kuang Chu leading some disciples here to capture the Nine Seals sect group. Bok Tu Niok came out to greet, seeing only five people. He wondered since the enemy had a third rank expert, two inner Qi realm martial artists, and six elites. These five were no different than suicide. Though he advised them, the group still thought he exaggerated. Cursing him, speaking nonsense, they ordered him to lead the way. They even took several Tan Sun disciples along. Bok Tu Nyak's face distorted, changing expressions. He said, Guardian Hoang, without my permission, arbitrarily mobilizing my men. Are you overstepping? The frowning man said, Per the rules. Only inner sect disciples or those of high position or mighty strength could mobilize ordinary disciples. That was the rule since ancient times. He said no need to argue. Whoever volunteered would get 50 tails silver. More contribution more rewards. The disciples eagerly scrambled to register. Seeing them eagerly suicide. Bok Tu Niok didn't stop them. He led the group up the mountain searching for the Nine Seals sect. The arrogant crowd drew blades charging ahead. Earlier Bok Tu Niok led them to the deep Tan Sun forest. Densely overgrown not an hour's walk. Chu V already endlessly complaining. Saying being sent to such desolate wilderness was an insult to the top disciple title. Bok Tu Niok still indifferent. Not minding such a person. Suddenly guardian Hoang Kuang Chu stopped. Sensing a martial artist's aura ahead. Everyone hid behind a boulder scouting. Having completed the guide duty. Bok Tu Niok decided to return with the Tan Sun disciples. After all they were still his men. He couldn't bear their meaningless deaths. But the disciples still wanted to stay for the rewards. Seeing he couldn't dissuade them. Bok Tu Niok could only leave alone. Only the loyal Nu Nyi followed guarding him. Meanwhile the Nine Seals sect group detected the approaching people. Li Van Fong recognized Hoang Kuang Chu as Liet Duong Bang. Already at the inner Qi realm. He warned everyone to be careful. If Liet Duong Bang found them here big trouble. Though the spirit fruit not fully ripe he couldn't wait any longer. After bidding them farewell he departed. Seeing someone flee. The law enforcement hall chief ordered disciples to pursue. Nu Nyi worried as the fleeing man resembled Li Van Fong. Tan Sun's manager Bok Tu Niok realized. No wonder they didn't meet on the main path. Turns out he was colluding with the Nine Seals sect. He told Nu Nyi to stay while he pursued to gather evidence. Seeing the enemy the law enforcement chief angrily. Ordered they were surrounded by Liet Duong Bang. Quickly surrender or die. But Hung Chin Duck didn't care. He ridiculed them as petty demons daring to arrogantly provoke in numbers. Now the old man picking fruit in the tree spoke up. He was the Nine Seals sex elder. Kone Nu Wei seeing the enemy arrive. He decided to keep everyone there Kone Nu Wei now reached third flow expert level. Hoang Kuang Chu frowned. Seeing the spirit fruit in the enemy's hand. His hot blood rushed to his brain just eating this fruit. He could instantly reach expert level. He immediately ordered attack but Bok Tu Niok thought they were like moths flying into flames. Facing this useless bunch Kone Nu Wei would teach them a lesson. He unleashed the heavenly radiant split sword. Slashing as swift as lightning wounding them all over. He charged straight at Hoang Kuang Chu. The sword about to pierce his chest. He had no time to think. Hurriedly pulling the disciple behind to block. The old man immediately used his innate move. The disciple's organs exploded Hoang Kuang Chu seized the chance darting to the tree. Using lightning speed to seize the spirit fruit. He unleashed his final move mad storm beheader. Cutting down the disciple holding the fruit box. 
After rummaging he finally obtained the spirit fruit box. The panicking guardian ordered immediate retreat. This move puzzled everyone. A disciple about to ask why was instantly stabbed through the throat. Seeing the disadvantaged guardian clutched the spirit fruit fleeing. All were shocked by this action. Suddenly realizing the enemy's might. They panicked discarding weapons and fleeing. But the enemy did not let up. Kung Tin Hua terrified to near soiling himself. Tears streaming he knelt begging for mercy but too late. The sharp blade decapitated Kung Tin Hua. Leaving Hoang Kuang Chu stunned not believing his eyes. The enemy gave him no chance to recover. Charging over slashing him nearly to death. Too pained to stand firmly. Hoang Kuang Chu could only lie awaiting the reaper. The disciples cared not for their leader's fate. Only thinking of escape but their speed no match. In a flash all perished. One tried to sneak attack but Bok Tu Neok sent him flying. Turning back he saw allies nearly all dead. No longer savable but the enemy sticky as glue. Relentlessly pursuing the nine seals disciples charged over. A saber nearly taking Bok Tu Nyak's head. Luckily he dodged just in time. The disciple still stubbornly charged up. Both sides fought fiercely. The air filled with the stench of blood. But before absolute might. All efforts futile the disciple unleashed the killing move nine seals palm forth form. A mighty force like Mount Tai pressing down on Bok Tu Neok. But he was battle hardened. Unafraid of such trifling tricks Bok Tu Neok leapt up. Unleashing Grand Saber Art forcing the enemy to bow in submission. Next a beheading strike separated the enemy's head. Blood spurting wildly after rummaging through. He had another unexpected discovery. When the enemy arrived Bok Tu Neok had escaped. The old man frowned at the disciple corpses with inner chi realm yet so easily handled by him truly frightening might. Now Bok Tu Neok escaped pursuit. Sitting catching his breath behind a boulder luckily he was the sole survivor. Though not fully ripe, the two fruits enough to surpass inner cultivation. Entering the inner chi realm. Just as he secretly rejoiced the bushes stirred. Turning back it was the heavily wounded Chu V. Though nearly beaten to death he still rejoiced at surviving and regretted not heeding Bok Tu Neok. Bok Tu Neok told him to hurry back for treatment. Afterwards Bok Tu Neok headed towards Go Jiang City. The southern gate still crowded with bustling people. But especially lively today. Perhaps Liet Duong Bang just received news and now dispatching men to Tan Sun to exterminate the Nine Seals sect. The leader was Elder Chu. Now at second flow expert level. Behind two servants whispered seeing someone resembling the bloodied guardian returning. Perhaps the wounded Hoang Kuang Chu. Meanwhile at Tan Sun Chu V arduously limped back. Just as he thought nearly there a familiar voice sounded behind. Li Van Fong's. The man limped towards Tan Sun. Just as he neared Li Van Fong blocked the path. Not knowing he was a Liet Duong Bang spy. Chu V recounted everything that happened. Shocked someone survived returning. Li Van Fong feared other survivors. Deciding to kill Chu V to avoid future trouble. Chu V blankly looked at Elder Li. Not understanding what was happening before he could react a 9 yin palm strike blasted Chu V into a tree trunk. He died not knowing why. The villain looked at the corpse sneering. Preparing for the next assassination plan. Meanwhile at Bok Tu Nyak's villa. Two maids were cleaning the yard. Just thinking of slacking when suddenly a loud boom sounded from the master's room. Turning back she saw a powerful energy erupted from Bok Tu Nyak's room. His whole body emitted blazing golden rays. Turns out Bok Tu Nyak was focused cultivating. Thanks to the two fruits Bok Tu Nyak surpassed inner cultivation. Entering the inner chi realm. Next morning Hoang Kuang Chu went to the Liet Duong Bang headquarters to plead guilty. Kung Tin Hua was the clan's hope. The whole family expected him. Before him was Elder Kung Trong Sin. Kung Tin Hoa's grandfather hearing his grandson was sacrificed. He erupted in rage Hoang Kuang Chu trembled. Nearly peeing himself he immediately blamed the intelligence provider. Elder Kung also believed him knowing the truth so Hoang Kuang Chu had no more use. Just leaving Elder Kung's room he ordered subordinates to kill Hoang Kuang Chu and follow the grandson. The Kung clan had the chance to rise as an ancient clan but ruined by these petty men. Elder Kung targeted internal affairs Duong and Bok Tu Neok, ordering to eliminate them to avenge his grandson. He did everything possible but could only do this. 
Bok Tu Niok went to Liat Duong Bang headquarters looking for internal affairs Duong but couldn't find him. A disciple reported heavy casualties. Only Bok Tu Niok and Hoang Kuang Chu survived. Bok Tu Niok was startled. There should have been Chu V2. Perhaps everyone met misfortune. This time returning to Liat Duong Bang he had another important matter. Exchanging inner Qi realm cultivation experiences at the library pavilion. Before him was Liet Duong Bang's elder Sao Nguyen. Seeing Bok Tu Niok just reached inner chi yet wanted to learn inner martial arts. The elder looked at him contemptuously. Bok Tu Niok immediately acted humble. Saying he was ignorant hoping the elder would instruct him. Along with some sincerity. Elder Sao's attitude instantly changed 180 degrees. He introduced the three strongest inner martial arts to Bok Tu Niok. First was Liet Duong Palace. High chance of injury to primordial spirit next was Nine Yang Palace. Mighty skills but must keep chastity. Finally was Death Mansion Genesis Palace. Most balanced but slower progress. After listening Bok Tu Niok had decided. Luckily he had cultivated sword restraining art to perfection. Otherwise elder would have noticed his skills. Truly worthy of Liet Duong Bang's elder equal to sect leaders. Pity illness forced him into seclusion. Bok Tu Niok thought Death Mansion Genesis Palace completely suited him, without the flaws of the other two arts. Moreover with the soul power system supporting cultivation speed was no issue. Elder Sao was astonished at his keen insight. Just then the bell rang signaling the start of the martial arts assembly. This was where talented youths gathered from all over. As Go Jiang's most outstanding top disciple, Bok Tu Niok couldn't miss this chance. Just entering a thick fragrance assaulted his nose. According to Duong Trian Phi it was the famous incense of Thien Hong Ku. Making one's spirit tranquil they passed through the hall to the central arena. Densely packed with people just ten match wins could become three great beauties. Or challenging three experts and winning also got the Wulin title. A youth named Duong Ho Ai Kai stepped out. Wanting a match against Go Van. The two fiercely fought. The beautiful movements made the audience loudly applaud. As expected superior martial arts still belonged to the veterans. In less than two rounds Go Van was victorious. But Bok Tu Niok didn't care. He only paid attention to the three girls upstairs. Thanks to spirit eye art he could see through the curtains. The three beauties were truly dazzling. As Lo Tan said beautiful women were always dangerous and vicious. Surely these girls were not to be trifled with. Just then two important people entered the hall. One was Liet Duong Bang's Jiang Ha Gongzi. Personal disciple of sect leader Jiang Ha Tan. Now at the inner Qi realm. The other was Nine Seals sect's Kim Ko Thong Gongzi. The third son of the sect leader. The two had equal might. Each Wulin assembly they fought a match. Now a familiar voice sounded. Making everyone stir half a year since his last appearance. When he defeated famous experts. Tran Tan Van's divine swordsmanship still awed everyone. The aura of an expert was truly different. Even Bok Tu Niok was moved. The three girls immediately ran down to greet the honored guest, hoping to accompany him upstairs. As today was Thien Hong Kus homeground, Tran Tan Van reluctantly indulged Wei Na. Bok Tu Niok was jealous below. Just then Li Ung Nyu appeared behind with two subordinates Bok Tu Niok reluctantly agreed saying he didn't blame his overstep. Please come up in turns to display your skills. First was Ung Nyu still confident in his own prowess. He contemptuously said Bok Tu Niok was only a myth. He leapt up unleashing the perfected coiling blade 13 sabers. Speed and momentum far surpassing before. However before absolute might all skills were useless. Bok Tu Niok seized the chance. Striking heaven in snaring hand sending Li Ung Nyu flying back. The blow precise with neither excess nor lack. Just enough to defeat the opponent Duong Trian Phi in the stands was stunned. Not expecting the junior to train heavenly palm to this level. Initially Bok Tu Niok only wanted a peaceful life. Diligently cultivating but now he decided to hide no more. Next was Kuang Nguyen Kone. He looked down on Bok Tu Niok. Thinking it just a trivial matter but Bok Tu Niok charged up lightning fast. A fist struck Kuang Nguyen Kone. The fearsome might shattering the ground. Now Bok Tu Niok pressed down like Mount Taishan. Making the opponent shiver despite his all. 
Before Quang Nguyen Khon could react, he was blasted away by Bok Tun Yak's one gathering profound palm. The beautiful display delighted the spectators. The excitement attracted the girl's attention upstairs. Wei Na's eyes lit up, gazing down enraptured, truly worthy of the youth prodigy title. Even the famed Tran Tan Van praised this boy's talent. Wei Na asked about Bok Tun Yak's saber art. Smiling Tran Tan Van replied it wasn't a Liat Duong Bang technique but self-taught through his ability and destiny. Such a pity not meeting sooner. Seeing his beaten friends. Another couldn't stand it. He challenged Bok Tu Niok for revenge. But Bok Tu Niok had entered the inner Qi realm. His martial arts no longer a threat. With the sword less than half a meter from his chest. Bok Tu Niok drew his saber striking back. Before absolute might. All techniques became outdated. Shortly Bok Tu Niok completely overturned the situation. Rampaging freely at this age. Perhaps only he could do this. He had no choice but to admit defeat. While Bok Tu Niok became famous. Just as he was leaving another jumped out challenging. In just two seconds he was felled by Bok Tu Niok in one move. The audience was dumbfounded next. Many young martial artists tried but all failed. In half an hour Bok Tu Niok had won 17 straight matches. With no opponents left he leisurely departed. Duong Trian Phi immediately approached. Full of praise and told him to wait for the beauties to bestow a title. Just then the bustling crowd suddenly stirred. The two young masters prepared for another decisive battle. The outcome was highly anticipated. Sure enough they immediately battled upon entering the arena. After dozens of rounds victory still undetermined. The highlight was the match between seven Prince Go Jiang. And this contest also greatly attracted interest. Last month Jiang Ha had defeated Ken Din Kong with Jing Hong Cross Heart Saber. Since that defeat Ken Din Kong trained tirelessly. This was not just a fight between two people. But also between two sects seeing a stalemate. Jiang Ha used his killer move Jing Hong 13 sabers. But Ken Din Kong remained calm. Blocking with radiant sword the two swords collided intensely. The powerful momentum stirring up a dust storm. Thinking Ken Din Kong would lose like before. The result was unexpected. Only saw Ken Din Kong flung his sword down making Jiang Ha think the opponent afraid. But it was just Ken Din Kong's plan. Jiang Ha suddenly felt uneasy. Hurriedly stopping but too late. Ken Din Kong had struck with lightning speed. Jiang Ha used the Liat Duong palm. But Ken Din Kong equally mighty. Countered with nine seals palm fifth form. The two forces collided violently exploding the air. Duong Trian Phi amazed at the beautiful exchange. While Bok Tu Niok already used to it. Clearly Ken Din Kong's nine seals palm superior. The outcome truly shocking the audience couldn't believe their eyes. Duong Trian Phi thought one needed third rank to wield that palm skillfully. But Bok Tu Niok disagreed. To him Ken Din Kong hadn't fully mastered that move yet. And Jiang has palm also not weak. But compared to Ken Din Kong Jiang Ha would need to recuperate a few days. This was Jiang has first serious injury having been pampered since young. Liet Duong Bang disciples immediately rushed over to examine the wound. Seeing the two young masters leave. The next match no longer alluring. As Bok Tu Niok and Duong Trian Phi were leaving a Liet Duong Bang disciple rushed over reporting Jiang Ha assassinated dead. Confused they thought it was due to the earlier palm strikes. But according to the disciple Jiang Ha didn't die from injuries but was stabbed to death. Though pursued he easily escaped thanks to the crowd. From the description the killer was at least third flow level. In all of Go Jiang only nine yin sect and Liat Duong Bang had such a figure besides three great villains and four great martial arts clubs. An expert assassinating Jiang Ha successor to the Liat Duong Bang leader. Certainly involved some secret. Bok Tu Niok investigated all night but reached a dead end. That evening returning to Bok Track suddenly. A cold aura attacked from behind. Turning a sword already swung towards him. Luckily dodging in time looking back it was a black clad assassin. Matching the Liat Duong Bang disciples description. Bok Tu Niok decided to strike fast then flee but unexpectedly his reactions were also too quick. He didn't expect this small boy to have such inner Qi realm skills. While Bok Tu Niok remained calm he had guessed the mon's true identity. From the sword swing speed impossible to be. The third flow expert who killed Jiang Ha. 
He must be an inner Qi realm junior intentionally disguising as the killer. In Go Jiang he could only think of one person. Tan Sun's manager Li Van Fong. But that was just his initial guess. To verify Bok Tu Niok immediately used Grand Saber art. Against absolute might. All resistance futile the assassin flew back like an insect. Without another word he went and unmasked him. Sure enough Li Van Fong Bok Tu Niok long disliked this manager. Now had the chance for revenge this deceitful merchant surely had much illegal wealth. After searching Bok Tu Niok found a martial arts manual. To eliminate evidence he used spirit fire art to burn the corpse and scene. In an instant only a pile of ashes remained on the scorched earth. Then he used a purification talisman. The surroundings instantly restored. In his Go Jiang hometown. True Quan Vo was the most outstanding in the past hundred years. A second rank official famed for real combat. A century later posthumously titled General of Wind and Clouds by the court. He had built a shrine for worship the current abbot was elder brother Chu Hin Kai of Tan Ha. With many dangerous occurrences recently. Bok Tu Niok decided to ask Elder Chu for help. Arriving at the temple he only saw a Taoist caretaker. Asking around he learned the abbot was elder brother Tako Thuong Elder Chu's senior brother. Hearing Bok Tu Niok was introduced by his junior brother. The Taoist immediately became wary. Without hesitation he used spirit eye art to inspect Bok Tu Niok. Luckily the boy had used restraining breath art to conceal information. Otherwise all secrets would be exposed. Though annoyed since he was introduced by his junior brother. The Taoist didn't pursue it further. Bok Tu Niok approached bowing. Saying his purpose was to inquire about the lower scroll of life and death body refining art. Additionally he asked if it was possible to switch to cultivating another art. The Taoist said rare cultivation manuals were not easily obtained. But switching arts was possible. Though having to start over from the beginning. Just as Bok Tu Niok thought the chance slim. The Taoist surprisingly revealed someone in Go Jiang Prefecture cultivated that art. It was the newly appointed prefect Li Huan whom he heard introduced at the cultivation convention. Additionally a clan in Thien Lin district also cultivated the same art. Bok Tu Niok listened confused. Asking what that convention was and if that clan was the Lam family. The Taoist explained the cultivation convention was for local cultivators to exchange information and materials. As for the mysterious clan it was not the Lam family. Prolonged cultivation required abundant natural resources. So the mountains rivers and farmlands became a contention between the two major clans in Thien Lin district. Bok Tu Niok had no interest in the district disputes. He only wanted to meet the cultivator Taoists through the convention to obtain the life and death body refining art lower scroll. The Taoist was very willing to introduce him. But whether he could get the attention of Elder Go or Elder Tu still depended on his own abilities. With the guidance of such masters cultivation would be much easier. Bok Tu Niok eagerly wanted to go to Li Huan immediately. But due to the distant relationship with Prefect Li Huan. He could only hope for the convention. Just about to head home to prepare spirit stones and talismans. A familiar voice sounded behind. What a fateful reunion with Duong Trian Fai here. The other two were also Liet Duong Bang experts. Lately they were busy searching for the assassin so had no time. From them Bok Tu Niok learned another young prodigy of Liet Duong Bang was murdered this morning hacked to death right in his home. One of the seven princes of Go Jiang Chu Min Hin. Liet Duong Bang had three Jiang Ha. Chu Min Hin and Ha Van Kuang. In just three days two had perished. Clearly Liet Duong Bang was being targeted. Liet Duong Bang offered rewards for useful clues. 500 contribution points for finding the assassin's whereabouts. 2000 points confirming their identity. 5000 for killing the assassin. From experience they suspected 9 seals sex plot. Meanwhile at an Go Jiang Inn. 3 9 seals sect members whispered 2 prominent Liet Duong Bang figures assassinated. We must do something according to the plan. Elder Kohn will purge the herb gardens and iron mines of Liet Duong Bang. He had secretly planted his men in Liet Duong Bang for over a decade. Go Jiang's port was Liet Duong Bang's main source of profit. Destroying it crucial finally. The Liet Duong Bang headquarters a frontal assault unfeasible. But internal affairs Duong still determined. Have you all heard of the thousand year tiger demon in Sun Trung? 
Next morning, Bok Tu Niok received an urgent mission from Liat Duong Bang to gather at Old Zhang's tavern near North City. Arriving, everyone was ready. The leader was Vong Bang, guardian of Liat Duong Bang's external affairs hall. Seeing everyone present, he immediately departed. Only two disciples accompanied Bok Tu Niok. Their lecherous gazes made him very uncomfortable. Running nearly half a hour, they finally reached the cave to Nine Seals Sex territory. It seemed Liat Duong Bang could endure no more. Beginning to retaliate against Nine Seals Sect, Vong Bang led them to the enemy's armory. According to the report, Kone Nu Wei had left some time ago. Now their vigilance lowest. This mission was to destroy the weapons and eliminate all enemies inside. Bok Tu Niok swiftly followed. The two disciples sticking to him like glue, these two also attended the Wulin assembly. Attracted by Bok Tu Nyak's skills wanting to befriend him. Usually they clung to internal affairs Duong. Today they also received the urgent order. After climbing mountains and crossing streams, they finally reached the enemy's location. They had to act swiftly. Bok Tu Nyak charged in with the disciples. The men inside still drowsy. Startled seeing the enemies appear. They hurriedly lit a fire to signal for reinforcements. Surely in less than half an hour. The enemy would arrive, they had to destroy the armory swiftly. Or it would be hard to retreat safely. Bok Tu Niok followed the disciples charging inside. Stepping through the door, one ambushed from behind, but he dodged in time. Pressing forward with heavenly soldier saber art to defeat them. However, the disciples might could not be underestimated either. They swung weapons, killing ruthlessly. Their imposing manner even made Bok Tu Niok admire. Their skills had reached third rank expert level. One carelessly almost suffered a fatal stab. Luckily, his teammate timely rescued him. As the three prepared to pursue, a large saber blocked their way. It was Nine Yin Sect's Kuang Trong Kuang. He ordered the three's death. But the Liat Duong Bang disciples were drunk on victory. One charged, but Kuang Trong Kuang batted him away with a palm. Seeing the enemy look down on the disciple, could only retreat cheering. Another volunteered to take his place. Though very mighty, he still fell far short of Kuang Trong Kuang. He was blasted back by the enemy's whirlwind might palm. Kuang Trong Kuang considered that just superficial moves. Sooner or later, flaws would be exposed. He exerted his might, wielding the huge saber, displaying his martial arts. But actually, it was the fat one's scheme to make Kuang Trong Kuang drop his guard for a fatal poisoned needle. As he perished, Kuang Trong Kuang still didn't understand what happened. His body already had many fatal wounds unknown to him. Spitting blood, he collapsed, making the fat one smile gleefully. The battle tested not just speed and might, but also ruthless schemes, seeing no more opponents in the room. The two disciples' beastly urges surfaced. Bok Tu Niok immediately frowned, asking what they intended. The two still acted sincerely, saying they wanted his head. Bok Tu Niok coldly refused, seeing he didn't cater to them. The two went mad seeing no saving them. Bok Tu Niok drew his saber to eliminate the scourge. With lightning speed he used hundred sabers art to help the skinny one reincarnate immediately. With a crack he was split in half. The fat one stood stunned at the display. One sword strike ended the fanatic. Bok Tu Niok's might had reached inner chi realm level. But faced with obvious proof. The fat one still deluded himself he gripped his weapon charging at Bok Tu Niok determined on life and death. Since it had come to this Bok Tu Niok decided to hide no more. A powerful energy exploded from his body. A killing aura like death itself pressed down. To avoid future trouble Bok Tu Niok decided to deal with the fat one. Casually taking care of him as he was leaving he heard whispers behind the door. Without hesitation Bok Tu Niok immediately struck a palm. Unexpectedly he dodged so quickly. What's more one suddenly jumped out from behind sneak attacking. Against these small fries. Bok Tu Nyak was long accustomed but the opponent drew out his spirit frost sword and sliced Bok Tu Nyak's saber in half. Bok Tu Nyak couldn't believe his eyes. It turned out the spirit frost sword was forged from celestial meteorite iron infused with spiritual chi. Extremely sharp Bok Tu Nyak's blade and even Liat Duong sect leader's void saber fell far short. The disciple was elated to obtain such a rare weapon. But Bok Tu Niok only felt revulsion at his shamelessness. Scornful of his shallow skills he nimbly regained the spirit frost sword. 
truly one of the four great famed swords. It truly suited Bak Tu Niok. Sensing someone's approach, he should NT linger here long his teammates had also finished the enemies. Seeing the mission accomplished, everyone hastily retreated among the few survivors. He asked confused why Bak Tu Niok was alone. Where were the other two Bak Tu Niok replied he let them go first. Not revealing what had transpired. The group felt the urgency was to swiftly leave this place. Bak Tu Niok gleefully held the spirit frost sword spoils. Though Bak Tu Niok clearly explained. Lee Luke still refused to believe he was sure Bak Tu Niok was their accomplice. Just as he decided to dispose of Bak Tu Niok as well Vong Bang stopped him. Saying the urgency was to retreat immediately. The four spurred their horses back to Zhang's old tavern. After Vong Bang gave the order. Everyone hurriedly left as Bak Tu Niok was leaving Vong stopped him. Staring fixedly at the spirit frost sword in his hand. Bak Tu Niok immediately frowned. Wary he meant harm but Vong Bang only wanted the spirit frost sword. Without hesitation Bak Tu Niok straight refused. Seeing he wouldn't cater. Vong threatened to make him regret it. But Bak Tu Niok scorned him only saying whoever offended him would not have peace. Vong Bang angrily had to give up to avoid trouble. This entire group was internal affairs Duong's men. He may be plotting something but Bak Tu Niok felt no fear. He decided to directly confront internal affairs Duong. Now Liet Duong Bang and Nine Seals sect were in open conflict. Many Liet Duong Bang bases were destroyed by Nine Seals sect. Nine Seals sect seemed to have the upper hand. The coming days would be very difficult for Liet Duong Bang. In the past five days the battle between Nine Seals sect and Liet Duong Bang was relentless. Both sides suffered heavy casualties. But through fierce combat, Liet Duong Bang destroyed some enemy armories. They also often intercepted convoys. Sparing neither women nor children three great villains and four great martial arts clubs also clashed. The major powers in Go Jiang were all dragged into the conflict. This was a national affair Bak Tu Niok had no right to intervene. He only needed to focus on raising his strength. Today was the cultivation convention so he prepared to set out immediately. This was the only chance to learn the rest of life and death body refining art. Thanks to eating Lu Hang's clear cloud pills. His strength reached third flow expert level. Arriving the Taoist already awaited. The two immediately departed for Golden Tower Inn. The convention venue just entering the door. Bak Tu Niok smelled the familiar mellow fragrance of purification incense. The Taoist said this was just ordinary medicine. Much simpler than real spirit fragrance. Upstairs the waiter hurriedly welcomed them. The Taoist asked around and learned Master Li had arrived early. Entering the conference room many important figures had already gathered. Bak Tu Niok analyzed they were all inner force masters beyond the seventh layer. The head seat was Golden Tower Inn's owner Chu Lap Tan. Who first noticed the two unfamiliar faces. Bak Tu Niok approached bowing. Introducing himself as Bak Tu Niok. An independent Taoist specializing in talisman making. From the Taoist Bak Tu Niok knew the middle one was Chu Lap. Golden Tower Inn's owner beside him several celestial beauties from Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion. Tu Bang Hung could also produce pills. Providing resources for the convention. Finally was Fairy Huyat Nun Tu. A terrifying old woman nearby was Imperial Prince Bui Nguyen Vo. And Bok Tu Nyak's target prefect Li Huan. Master alchemist Trong Dan Dao was on his way. Finally there was Elder Go founder of the convention. 130 years old yet still at stage 9 inner force realm. Speaking of Elder Go he and Master Trong arrived right after. Following convention they conducted transactions first. Elder Go needed an enlightenment pill to break through his realm. Willing to trade his life extending jade and longevity palace. However enlightenment pills were extremely rare. Only bestowed by the imperial court. Hard to find in Go Jiang. So everyone was silent. Elder Go could only trade his forbidden bronze mirror tool and 25 corpse soldiers for Chu Lap spirit stones and 100 year corpse slave. Master Trong was refining heart linking pills but lacked sorrow herb. So he traded 3 soul blossom pills for it. Luckily gentleman True knew Ken had one tree. But the Taoist demanded one heart linking pill back. Master Trong reluctantly agreed. Seeing the elders had finished trading. Bak Tu Niok began stating his purpose. 
He hoped to learn more about the life and death body refining art lower scroll from the masters through this chance. Then he took out some artifacts he personally crafted. The might of explosive fire talisman equal to a full force strike from a stage 5 inner force realm cultivator using the forbidden tool corp soldiers. The soul reflection talisman could see into the ethereal realm's wastelands. The divine light shield talisman could block a stage 5 inner force realm cultivator's strike. Everyone was intrigued by these novel creations. Bach 2 Neok secretly delighted that just changing the names made the techniques so attention grabbing. But Tu Bang Hung felt Bach 2 Neok exaggerated. Elder Go suggested testing his might on the spot. Elder Go had a very useful tool the profound orb shield. Able to form a Ling shield to block any attack below stage 5 inner force realm. Not waiting for Bach 2 Nyak's reply. He immediately activated the tool. A powerful spiritual force erupted, enveloping him like a steel shield. Bach 2 Neok immediately took out an explosive fire talisman. Fiercely flinging it forward the two forces collided violently the Ling shield instantly shattering. Everyone present was dumbfounded. Clearly the power far exceeded stage 5 inner force realm. Elder Go was truly surprised estimating this artifact worth 15 spirit stones. After testing the other two artifacts also intrigued everyone. Elder Go eagerly offered 20 spirit stones for the soul reflection talisman. Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion's madam agreed to buy all the talismans as she was poor with only money left. Bach 2 Neok became the focus of the meeting. Much more confident he decided to hide his abilities no more. At that moment the other Taoists also vied to purchase Bach 2 Nyak's artifacts. Seeing his position threatened. Tu Bang Hung could only swallow the bitterness. Seeing the two masters still silent he spoke up first the talismans are good indeed. But not necessarily made by this boy. The two had no reaction. Also having doubts about these talismans of unknown origin right. Actually the two were silent as they had nothing the boy wanted to trade. Tu Bang Hung was mocked in front of everyone. Feeling very embarrassed Tu Bang Hung wished for a hole to crawl into. The Taoist also coveted those artifacts. If only he knew earlier to ask Bak Tu Niok to bring more. Seeing he lost his standing Tu Bang Hung was furious. But actually Bak Tu Niok only wanted to trade for the lower scroll of life and death body refining art. He thanked them for the enthusiastic support but only wanted to trade for that art. Disappointing everyone. Li Huan remained silent seeming to be thinking about something. Sensing the somber atmosphere. Fairy Huyat Nun 2 offered the three-colored original source smooth mirror for Bak Tu Nyak's artifacts. Suddenly Li Huan stood and said Brother Bak. This one is cultivating life and death body refining art. May I know if you're interested in talking? Bak Tu Nyak was overjoyed finally the big fish took the bait. He said he was willing to be taught by Brother Li. Li Huan said life and death body refining art was from Sunrise Great Sect. Extremely powerful the lower scroll was far more valuable than the upper. At least 600 spirit stones. Bak Tu Niok immediately agreed. Luckily he had 35 spirit talismans and a golden sunblade. Precisely equal value the two sides sealed the deal on the spot. After much effort Bak Tu Niok finally obtained the lower scroll of life and death body refining art. With the manual in hand he could begin a new cultivation phase. This book was truly special. Not only containing arts from levels 6 through 9, but also an exclusive sword art. Bak Tu Niok was extremely satisfied. Li Huan felt as if he had met Bak Tu Niok before. The boy also did not hide anything. They had met in Tan Ha. Obtaining life and death body refining art in such a small place. Truly had deep affinity. Bak Tu Niok revealed he learned it after picking up Li Huan's brother's belongings. Still meeting in Tan Ha was destined. Everyone continued exchanging. Fairy Huyat Nun 2 still wanted to trade her blood coagulation art. This tree didn't directly increase might. Needing to fuse with a spirit beast's essence blood then refine into a blood essence pill to use. As Bak Tu Niok had just graduated his purse was very thin. Only 10 some spirit stones. But Fairy Huyat Nun 2 still agreed to trade with him due to her poverty. The convention's trading had finished. Next Chu Lap stated his wish. He discovered a rare silver ore mine but it was occupied by a huge monkey troop as their territory. 
Heavenly fragrance pavilions, madam smiled meaningfully, saying Chu Lap's might was famous. Why fear some monkeys? But actually, he worried about the perilous ravine and traces of magic within. Chu Lap suspected it was an ancient cultivator's cave. He asked who dared to join him exploring, offering 200 spirit stones per person. The Taoist didn't understand why, with Chu Lap's might, he had to recruit like this. Surely something secret was afoot. Seeing he couldn't fool everyone, Chu Lap had to admit the truth. Aside from the giant apes, the ape king had become a demon. And there was a thousand-year tiger demon too. Though an ideal site for mining and cultivating, it was too dangerous. Though already old, Elder Go still wished to fulfill his dream of becoming martial world overlord. An opportunity appearing must be seized. Fairy Huyet Nun too also volunteered as she only cared for cultivation arts now. Seeing two masters support, Chu Lap was very happy. He promised two hundred spirit stones, plus demon beast blood and flesh pills. This was truly a rare chance. Everyone hurriedly signed up. Bok Tu Niok also greatly desired to join. Ancient caves were extremely rare, containing many treasures like demon pills. Demon beast blood not participating would be a pity. Moreover, now having life and death body refining art in hand, this was a chance to display might, captivating the myriad beauties after the convention ended. Bok Tu Niok borrowed a low-level artifact similar to a smartphone. Elder Go warned him to be careful before leaving, emitting the aura of a Stage Nine Inner Force cultivator. The bustling streets' festive aura made Bok Tu Niok eager to explore the valley immediately. Suddenly, he noticed a familiar figure in the crowd, Tran Tan Van Conqueror of Myriad Hearts. But why did he look furtive, evading something? Intuition warned Bok Tu Niok something was amiss. He swiftly followed behind Tran Tan Van. The scene before his eyes stunned Bok Tu Niok. It turned out Tran Tan Van entered a dead end, then vanished without a trace. More crafty than the best time manager, Bok Tu Niok painfully realized his mistake. From the luggage shape, it could be guessed. About to return, seeking other clues, seeing his tense expression, surely something serious happened. Indeed, the assassin reappeared, killing one of three elites of Liet Duong Bang Ha Van Kuang. He struck too swiftly, completing the assassination in less than half an incense stick. At that time, Ha Van Kuang had just finished drinking, leaving the tavern. With some young masters, they discovered the assassin's traces at Lu Dong Pier Tan Fuang. So hurriedly pursued here. After thinking, Bok Tu Niok guessed the culprit's identity. Brother Duong gaped, urging him to speak. But uncertain, Bok Tu Niok needed to gather more information first. From Brother Duong, he learned the two victims were Kuang Nguyen Kone and Li Ung Nu. Liet Duong Bang now resented the assassin, mobilizing thousands to hunt him. The reward also doubled. Discussing as they walked, they swiftly reached Internal Affairs Duong's intel center. The leader was Tru Loi. Internal Affairs Duong's chief, hearing Bok Tu Niok knew the culprit's identity, he couldn't believe it. Bok Tu Niok asserted it was Tran Tan Van. Since Jiang has death, he had suspected Tran Tan Van's mysterious disappearance. Today he loitered at the scene, so must be involved. But Tru Loi couldn't believe it. Still, they couldn't let the suspect slip away. Now they could only desperately pursue him. Wind and Cloud residence used to house an imperial judicial official, but 20 years ago, due to political turmoil, the official was imprisoned a few years later. The house was purchased by a merchant. After several transfers. The house fell into Tran Tan Van's hands. Everyone impatiently wanted to arrest him, nearly bursting in angrily. After a while, an old man slowly opened the door. When he knew the officials sought the owner, he panicked, breaking into a sweat. Before they could react, he slammed the door shut. Vong Bang kicked it open, yelling for Tran Tan Van to come on a trip. The murderer who killed Liet Duong Bang members is wanted. All who are here must not make trouble. The stifling gunpowder smell. A heaven-shaking, earth-shattering battle was about to erupt. Bok Tu smiled, the huge saber in his hand already boiling for battle. The old servant didn't look back, desperately fleeing inside. Young master, run! Liet Duong Bang's men are here. Young master, hurry and run! Tran Tan Van flung a rock, knocking down the Liet Duong Bang disciple. Next, Tran Tan Van impressively appeared. In the crowd, all recognized the two behind him as the Liao father and son. Underlings of Demon Head Village since being destroyed, 
They vanished from the martial world Liao Tan arrogantly said they were now Deech clan's followers. Not bothering with petty people. Vong Bang was shocked it was actually Deech clan. The mighty cultivator clan in Thien Lin district. Suddenly a familiar voice rang out. It was Li Duong Chu Li Chu Duong. Once famed everywhere also leader of water realm Duong Lu Duong. Tran Tan Van smiled hearing Li Chu. Since their sect leader also came from a cultivator sect. Li Chu Duong didn't want to hear them. He only thought of his departed son. Be it Deech clan Lam clan or even gods and demons of hell. He was determined to avenge him. Seeing his son killed he burned in fury. At lightning speed he charged slashing at Tran Tan Van. But with Tran Tan Van's experience. These small fries were nothing. He swung his blade leaping up today no one can escape death. Other Liat Duong Bang disciples also charged to assist. Both sides had masters an intense battle erupted. Getting to battle many experts. Bok Tu Niok also broadened his horizons. Li Chu and Tran Tan Van were both at third flow level. Among them Tru Loi was the strongest. Second in Liat Duong Bang having opened nine apertures divine sutra. The rest were much weaker. An old man yet the group couldn't beat him. Some still stood behind observing. Fearing to step forward they'd be sent flying back. To conceal his might Bok Tu Niok could only create chances to sneak attack. Liao Tan appeared calm. Wanting to crush the rebels but he didn't know youth were the nation's hope. Bok Tu Niok used new blade art. One slash cutting the enemy in half the observing group was stunned. Not expecting his small stature yet ruthlessly able to kill. Seeing his father slain Lu Veen Thang cried in anger. Rage erupted the small cosmos within him exploded out. He howled you little demon. Die for me but Bok Tu Niok was still calm as usual. In his eyes the enraged one was just a furious boar. But his comrades behind weren't so fortunate. Knocked down in just two seconds. Before they could react a stream of sword chi cut across the blue sky flying over. By now the Liao father and son were dealt with. Leaving only the swordsman Tran Tan Van. Though both third flow he couldn't beat Li Duong Chu. He could only desperately resist in despair. Li Chu gave him no chance. Relentlessly attacking viciously if it continued. Tran Tan Van would surely be destroyed. He decided to hide no more. Using all his martial arts to fly up. At lightning speed he unleashed the one origin two doubt splitting sword. Bok Tu Niok still scorned this move. Though bold its essence showed his exhausted strength. The sharp sword stabs forced Li Chu to prepare to face them. But surprisingly those moves all dissipated into thin air. By the time Li Chu reacted his opponent had vanished. Unable to let him escape before his eyes. He swiftly gave chase. After pursuing him a stretch. He decided to use empty cloud palm. Destroy Liat Duong Bang's traitor once for all and accomplish justice. Tran Tan Van turned back stabbing with his sword. But Li Chu easily grabbed the blade crushing it. Then followed up with some moves. Li Tan Van used heart piercing chi to block the attack. Rage blinded Li Chu. He only thought of avenging his son. Heartrending pain helped him erupt his potential might. Shattering Tran Tan Van's shield. A terrifying punch that could pierce through boulders. Tran Tan Van lost his ability to resist. But Li Chu didn't stop. Unleashing Dragon Birth Fist suddenly a loud boom sounded in the sky. The legendary killer had fallen. He sobbed looking up at the sky Ung Nyu. Father has avenged you. Unexpectedly a treasured sword flew over. Luckily he managed to use Tran Tan Van's corpse to block it. Didn't expect his power to be so great. Piercing straight through both. Bok Tu Niok sensed trouble. This was an expert cultivator suddenly an old man appeared behind. With a cold solemn face full of might. Lu Veen Thang half dead called hopefully Elder Deech. You came too late Bok Tu Niok hurriedly activated his spirit vision art. Turns out he was at inner force realm stage 7. True Loy also recognized the opponent's might. Not daring to take risks everyone retreated from wind cloud residence. Now Vong Bang and Bok Tu Niok prepared to leave celebrating. Meanwhile at Liat Duong Bang's headquarters. A swordsman was practicing by the lake. A disciple rushed over reporting Deech Kat Sex attack. The swordsman wasn't surprised since Kuan Sect had a backing Grand Sect. He ordered gathering intel on the enemy. Also sending word to Lam Clan in Thien Lin District. Summoning assistance that man was Jiang Dao. 
Liet Duong Bang's leader. The next morning, sunshine suffused the mountains and forests, bringing vitality to all creatures. Hearing of the wild beasts here, Bok Tu Niok led disciples up the mountain to explore. Not long after, an enormous python leapt out attacking, but in a flash, it was bisected by Bok Tu Niok. Unable to pass up this precious specimen, he decided to test blood coagulation art on the snake corpse. Sure enough, after extracting for a while, he obtained its essence, blood and flesh. Bok Tu Niok and puppy penetrated deep into the forest. Soon he encountered a savage ox fur brimming with vitality, though lacking the conditions for ice seal art, celestial shift talismans, and lightning transform talismans. He could still transform fire talismans. Bok Tu Niok lightly flew up. His carefree air making myriad beauties' hearts flutter. But the ox demon king sensed the evil aura from him. It angrily glared eyes bloodshot. Exuding killing intent the sharp horn stabbed towards Bok Tu Nyak's chest. But he dodged just in time. Leaving only afterimages appearing behind the ox demon. Bok Tu Nyak shouted saber art. His blade flashed beheading the ox demon. The thick fur and precious flesh was enough for hundreds of talismans. The whole day in the mountain he only met a few harmless lesser demons. Just when heading back a ferocious leopard suddenly blocked the path. It growled menacingly exuding confidence. What Bok Tu Niok hoped for had come. This was a top grade demon beast. Indeed everything came right on time without effort. The beast attacked first with lightning speed. Bok Tu Niok smiled knowing he was about to gain big spoils. But unexpectedly the leopard stopped mid pounce. It turned out its power wasn't exaggerated at all. Before Bok Tu Nyak's supreme might, all moves were rendered useless. The wind force blade swung up, but the leopard dodged the fatal blow thanks to superhuman reflexes. Bok Tu Nyak charged up again, using his unique art lightning shift. Even a top grade demon beast before such superior might, it was just a lesser demon. The sharp claws seemed to want to caress Bok Tu Nyak's cheek. But he easily defeated it with a troop maneuvering art. Its lightning strike power was nothing compared to lightning seal. This was just a beast. Couldn't compare to him after gathering the necessary spoils. Bok Tu Niok didn't forget to reward his four legged disciple as well. Meanwhile, True Loy hurriedly went to the Lamb Clan for help. Knowing his purpose, Ku and Sect had ambushed along the way to obstruct him. He was heavily injured but still tried to hide in the forest to complete his duty. The situation was extremely dangerous. One misstep could mean death. Luckily he grabbed onto a tree branch. Avoiding falling into the deep ravine just when in despair. True Loy saw an extremely rare spirit fruit. In this state escaping was nearly impossible. True Loy recklessly used the spirit fruit. Unexpectedly it truly worked. What fortune in the deep mountains and forests. At this time Bok Tu Niok and his disciples were on the way back after a day of hunting. Midway two Ku and Sect underlings suddenly appeared. They hid behind a boulder their fake hateful gazes disgusted people. Bok Tu Niok immediately asked in a vigilant tone who are you? The two petty demons were Ku and Sect disciples. Ordered to come reclaim the mystic blade he held. Bok Tu Niok sneered black jade blade. Nice name but now it's the black divine blade. The two angrily drew their weapons charging over. But in a flash Bok Tu Niok used the Black Divine Blade bisecting their swords. One was stunned and promptly killed. His comrade behind also didn't dare move. Bok Tu Niok gave them no chance. Continuing to charge slashing his sword. One luckily avoided it thanks to peerless skill. But before the superior might. All resistance was futile Bok Tu Niok swiftly used severing blade. The enemy had no time to react before collapsing. After searching the corpse he found a strange map fragment. Seemingly a piece matching the one from 5th Ancestor. Comparing closely Bok Tu Niok realized this was indeed a fragment of the map found at 5th Ancestors. Just as Bok Tu Niok was going to examine it further. The communication device alerted an urgent meeting tomorrow morning at Southern City 10 Mile Slope. He was overjoyed finally able to explore the mysterious cave. The next morning Bok Tu Niok arrived at the meeting point early. Unexpectedly the cultivators were all very punctual. Already present in full force he started feeling thrilled and excited about the upcoming journey. Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion's madam was smitten seeing Bok Tu Niok. Wanting to trade privately with him. His adorableness made hearts flutter. 
Even the rival wanted to obtain some artifacts for research. Previously, Tran Tan Van succeeded in his assassination with her aid. So she certainly was no good person. Selling her burning fire talismans. He might end up killed by it instead. Though unable to sell the lethal burning fire talismans, Bok Tu Niok agreed to share divine vision talismans with Elder Go. Heavenly Fragrance Pavilions Madam and Elder Chu. In this perilous ravine, talismans were crucial with trading done. Everyone set off at once in just half an hour. They reached Mystic Fog Ravine just stepping in. The swirling aura made Elder Go suspect this was a hidden village. That was a spirit attracting formation. Anywhere it existed heaven and earth energies would gather. Seemingly a guiding spirit formation but to achieve this effect required at least a hundred years of accumulation. Before they could react shadows appeared. Followed by a hail attack must be the buffalo-headed monkeys occupying this place. The foolish monkeys only knew to defend without understanding reason. Bok Tu Niok summoned the lucid sword. But the monkeys dodged the fatal blow thanks to their agility. However they couldn't evade forever. Sooner or later they would be destroyed. Seeing more comrades fall more monkeys joined the fight. But before Bok Tu Niok's overwhelming might. In less than two minutes the silly buffalo-headed apes were annihilated. The masses of dead monkeys horrified everyone. But Bok Tu Niok was still calm. Swiftly gathering the valuable materials from them. They penetrated deeper into the ravine. Countless bizarre plants amazed them. Suddenly beast roars rang out. The number of monsters was hundreds of times expected. The evil aura exuded was on par with Supreme Realm. Elder Go worried there were at least over 80. Suddenly a gigantic demon monkey appeared. The men were excited, hurriedly charging up in an instant. They were surrounded and trapped according to legend. Each monkey troop only had one king yet now there were two already. Surely an even more fearsome monkey king yet to appear. Indeed great might ape king emerged amidst everyone's shocked gazes. Elder Go promptly assigned roles he and Elder Ta would handle the three monkey kings. The rest deal with the common ones. He began unleashing the magical Great Wheel Buddhist Palm. A powerful spiritual force erupting. A giant ring of flying daggers appeared. Slicing the mountain splitting the earth in the ravine. The Great Might Ape King charged attacking him. The four ferocious beasts fiercely clashed. Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion's Madam unleashed hundreds of needles. Flying swift as lightning before the monkeys could react. They were pierced through the forehead. Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion's Madam smiled charmingly. Meanwhile Bok Tu Niok slaughtered relentlessly with his back turned. His handsome looks captivating countless women. Dozens of apes were impaled through the chest. The ghastly scene like a zombie horror film. But they were tenacious like ghosts. Wave after wave. At this rate who knew how long the battle would drag on. Bok Tu Niok decided to hide no more. Taking out the soul gathering banner cultivators often had protective artifacts so using it a couple times should be fine. He summoned dozens of specters. They charged the monkeys looking completely real. After a vicious clash Bok Tu Nyak's soul force sharply rose. Suddenly a roar rang out. Elder Go was still locked in fierce battle with the great might ape king. The swiftly spinning flying rings beside enraged it tremendously. A surge of mighty force erupted. The heavy pressure like the arrival of death god. The air abruptly exploded loudly. The ground smashed down several meters. The ferocious beast charged in fury. But Elder Go was still calm. Having already laid down the quicksand art beneath his feet. The great might ape king was promptly trapped. Only able to howl uselessly giving it no chance. He maneuvered the flying daggers to attack. Thanks to sublime reflexes the beast dodged the fatal blow. But everything was within the old mons calculations. After a supreme maneuver. The flying daggers spun back 180 degrees. Next was the loud crash. The great might ape king collapsed right there. With the monkey king fallen. The monkey horde was thrown into chaos everyone seized the chance to wipe them out even more. But the situation was more complicated than expected. Suddenly a chill swept over. Turns out it was a hundred meter long snake. After that an enormous brown bear also simultaneously appeared. At the same time there was a millennium demon tiger. A heaven shocking earth shattering battle was about to start. Who would be the winner? Huang Chu Tian Nam attacked first. The flying daggers flew at the snake at 100 meters per second. The snake is mine the rest handle yourselves. 
He ordered Chu Lap to battle the bear. Determined to display peerless martial arts, the demon tiger had two female cultivators against it. Bok Tu Niok would support them facing the sinister foe. He decided to hide no more. Thiet Nun Tu took out the lower bloodshed bottle collected over the years. Just contact could reduce one to dust. But the tiger used magic transforming its blood into a shield. Simultaneously it summoned some ghost soldiers. Displaying frightening power. However in controlling ghosts and creatures. Bok Tu Niok was number one in this situation. He had to use the soul gathering banner. At lightning speed Bok Tu Niok charged up. Brandishing the banner in the demon tiger's face. Countless specters rushed out following his command. Taking advantage of its weakness he maneuvered his blade charging at it the saber stabbed into the demon tiger's front leg. Unexpectedly it contained mysteries. The blade basically had no effect on its body. Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion's madam seized the chance. Shooting the bamboo seal straight at its forehead. Bok Tu Niok also made his move controlling the burning fire talismans to attack the large cat before him. Seeing the huge tiger burning Thiet Nun Tu delivered another slash sending it swiftly down the yellow springs. Next the brown bear and snake demon were also wiped out in succession. After the series of exquisite moves. Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion's madam had to acknowledge Bok Tu Niok's capabilities. Everyone was exhausted after the harrowing battle. Needing rest before continuing. Just now after defeating the three beasts. Everyone stopped to rest. After days of continuous demon slaying. Bok Tu Nyak's soul points were only about 2000 away from 15000. Enough to raise the life gate to level 7. And current realm to second flow. But it wasn't time to use it yet. After half an hour everyone set off again. But the temperature suddenly dropped low. Fog obscuring vision in the mist. The lurking shadows made Bok Tu Niok feel uneasy. Elder Go recognized they had entered a perilous formation. Very prone to lose their lives fortunately Bok Tu Niok still had divine flame talismans. Vision immediately became clear. Taking advantage of Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion Madam's lapse. A shadow appeared behind her. Luckily Elder Go reacted in time. Lending a hand to help the flying dagger shot at cloud slicing speed. Striking the black eagle's head making it dissipate into black smoke. Heavenly Fragrance nearly lost her life if not for Elder NGO's timely rescue. Bok Tu Niok stayed vigilant. Not letting the ghosts have a chance to ambush. This perilous and complex formation made it hard for them to escape if they couldn't see clearly. After hundreds of years with no visitors. The combination of earth energies and formations gained such horrifying might. Rumor said the way to break the encirclement was destroy all the ghosts and demons inside. Hoang Chu Tian Nam didn't hesitate charging up destroying the ghosts. As they dissipated the mist gradually vanished. The scene truly mystifying while everyone still marveled. An ancient architecture appeared. It was precisely the ancient cultivator relic site the aura exuding proved this was the legendary ruin. All kinds of spiritual herbs grew everywhere. Absorbing heaven and earth essences for hundreds of years thus extremely precious. Each plant was worth thousands in gold. But what intrigued everyone most was the interior of the relic. Elder Go was excited to explore it. For his dream of ruling the martial world was here. Meanwhile Bok Tu Niok was indifferent since his goal was only accumulating soul force. With his current might he couldn't compete with the immortal clans. Seeing this heavenly fragrance pavilion's madam approached him. She felt the youth who overcame temptation was the ideal husband she sought. But Bok Tu Niok didn't waver at all. He only thought of raising his might. Even before a peerless beauty like a celestial maiden. In Bok Tu Nyak's eyes this was just a minor obstacle on his path to success. Instead of wasting time with women. He became more adept at alchemy and cultivation. But Ki Fuang stubbornly clung on. She suggested Bok Tu Nyak join Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion. Since the vice leader role was vacant. But Bok Tu Nyak immediately declined. He wasn't an unfaithful man Ki Fuang was enraged at his indifference. If she couldn't have him then no one could. Just as she was about to make her move. Suddenly loud crashes came from inside startling them both. The palace collapsed into ruins. Luckily the cultivators timely escaped. Not so for unfortunate fifth elder Can. A bald head with sharp fangs strangled his neck. Looking closely it was a bloodthirsty zombie. Before he could react. The monster bit his neck to suck blood. 
Its might was too great he couldn't resist. Everyone horrifyingly realized this was no ordinary zombie. But the famous cultivator elder Kun Van. Theat Nun Tu recalled a hundred years ago this elder had seized ancient immortal pavilion in Thien Lin district. Then he exterminated the bandits who opposed him in just five years. Turns out he had secluded here likely cultivating some secret art. If he failed he would directly draw aid from the formation. Transforming himself into the undead. With his previous inner force stage 9 cultivation. Then breaking through to Genesis realm. Now as a zombie he was extremely dangerous. Bok Tu Nyak's might was still far from his. Though already a zombie. His strength didn't diminish at all. He charged attacking Elder Ta with lightning speed. But with battle experience. Elder Ta summoned the Gale Blade to block it. Didn't expect his might to be so great. Easily stopping the lethal blow. Knowing weapons were useless Elder Ta decided to use Talisman summoning soul scattering incense. He charged wanting to kick Elder Tush head off. Elder Ta unleashed the soul scattering incense. White smoke rose enveloping the zombie. But it had no effect. He easily broke free seeing this Elder Go didn't hesitate. Directing the flying daggers over. Theat Nun too also charged up. Trying her best to control the foe. But the zombie avoided every fatal blow. Elder Go persisted continuing to attack with burning fire talismans. Explosions rang out fire blazing over his body. While the zombie was struggling to cope. Bok Tu Niok noticed the pouch at his waist was the same as Elder Ngo's. That must be the treasure he was trying to seize. But suddenly he felt danger. Hurriedly using the spirit light bracer to block it. Looking back the assailant was Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion's madam. Following that hurried footsteps rang out. It was Elder Deech of Deech Sect appearing. Heaven helps my Deech Sect this spirit sight now belongs to my sect. He asserted firmly Bok Tu Niok frowned. This was the man who appeared at Tran Ton Van's massacre scene yesterday. Didn't expect they would know his whereabouts. Certainly there was a traitor in his fury. Elder Go searched for the one who leaked the info. Theat Nun Tu recognized Tu Bang hung among them. The bastard sneered threatening shed regret this implying they may have come alive but might not leave alive. Bok Tu Niok decided to eliminate from the weakest first. But Bok Tu Niok calmly replied you want to take things from my hands. Let's see if you have the ability. Without another word he summoned the heavenly mountain ice blade talismans to punish them. If you want to harm me then try and see if you have the ability. A barrage of icy daggers flew out. Tu Bang Hung couldn't react in time. Only able to use a mid-grade artifact to defend. But before the mid-grade artifact. It swiftly shattered in an instant. He was annihilated next. It was Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion Madam's turn. Seeing the icy blades shooting over swiftly. She used her own skills to defend. But before the overwhelming amount. She had no choice but to take out her treasure a gigantic black shadow emerged. Flattening her to the ground it was the Gold Spirit Bell Artifact. Rendering all attacks useless. But Bok Tu Niok was no ordinary man. He summoned the Gale Force Blade continuously attacking. After several strikes the impenetrable shield began cracking. Knowing Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion Madam had allied with the enemy. If the root wasn't thoroughly eliminated there'd be trouble later. Sensing the dire circumstances. She begged for her life willing to do anything to live. But with the crimes she committed. That was impossible Bok Tu Niok didn't waver before her pleas. The Gale Force Blade pierced straight through the girl's forehead. Just as Bok Tu Niok lowered his guard. An old man suddenly charged attacking him. Looking back it was Elder Deech at True Chi 7th layer. Though a dragon and phoenix of the Jonghu. Bok Tu Niok knew he was no match. He used light body art to retreat for now. Presently he could only seize the chance to take the enemy's artifacts. Seeing Bok Tu Niok fleeing. Elder Deech furiously roared die for me. But at true chi fifth layer. Bok Tu Niok of course wasn't easily killed. He summoned three disciples a swordsman and two eagles. Then said my life and death isn't for you to decide. Seeing his prey escape. Elder Deech summoned his sword shooting it out. The shadow of sword union's chief appeared blocking Bok Tu Niok's path luckily one of his disciples was fighting nearby. He promptly stepped up to hinder Bok Tu Niok. Though the disciples' martial arts were far below the cultivators. His saber skills were superior. He utilized the hundred thunder twin sabers. Determined to stop Bok Tu Niok. 
But Bok Tu Neok showed no mercy. Striking directly with decisive blade art. The old disciple didn't even have time to react. Before collapsing with a fatal chest wound. Elder Deech had never been fooled before. Let alone by a junior cultivator like Bok Tu Neok. The second disciple was even more furious. For the black blade Bok Tu Neok held was the weapon just seized from them. Bok Tu Neok used ice rain to kill the man beside Elder Deech. Then he turned to the remaining disciple. Determined to leave none alive previously. Bok Tu Neok had seized the black jade blade before fleeing. Two Deech sect members relentlessly pursued since it was one of the four great famed swords. Though Bok Tu Neok desperately fled. They stuck tight as chewing gum. To shake them off Bok Tu Neok decided to hide no more. He took out the soul gathering banner summoning specters as subordinates. But the two Deech sect members were no ordinary foes. Easily annihilating the puny ghosts. Seeing the petty skills. Elder Deech scornfully mocked. In despair the old man flung out three copper coins. Piercing through the specters now. The only path was raising his might. Seeing head be caught in time. Bok Tu Neok swiftly raised seven star lamp to consummation stage. After a bout of frenzied cultivation. He felt power surging through his body. But Bok Tu Nyak's current speed could only match the foe. To leave them behind he decided he must unblock his leg meridians. Immediately his martial arts reached the pinnacle third flow realm. Seeing Bok Tu Nyak's might skyrocket. Elder Deech angrily thought he took immortal pills. But Bok Tu Nyak didn't stop. Continuing to burn 90,000 spirit points to raise life gate art to level 7. A terrifying energy erupted. Stunning the two Deech sect members. Surely Bok Tu Neok was hiding some secret. But he couldn't expose the power system. That was the foundation of his existence with his current level. He could now confront Elder Deech. Elder Deech took out his last fireball pearl. Threatening to smash his head finally. He could go all out. Without hesitation Bok Tu Neok unleashed heavenly mountain ice blade art. Thousands of icy swords shot out swift as lightning. Seeing Elder Deech sneak attack with his sword. Bok Tu Neok maneuvered Lucid Sword to meet it. The two swords collided violently. Sparks flying everywhere seeing the blade about to pierce his chest. Elder Deech hurled some fireball pearls. The air exploded loudly. The battlefield filled with smoke. But the icy swords kept steadily falling like pouring rain. The old man was forced to take out his protective artifact to block. Though confident he could reverse the situation. They couldn't withstand the ice blade's continuous assault. In an instant thousands of sabers had pierced through his chest. The panicked disciple had never seen anyone so reckless. Before this third flow expert. Only fleeing could ensure survival. Bok Tu Neok of course gave no one a chance. Immediately maneuvering Lucid Sword charging over. Seeing the blade about to pierce his chest. The foe decided to risk it all. Fortunately thanks to unmatched reflexes. He dodged the lethal blow. But Bok Tu Neok showed no mercy. Immediately striking again the opponent drew his greatsword. Leaping up to block Bok Tu Nyak's terrifying attack. His arms shook from the tremendous might. But before the overwhelming power. All resistance was futile moreover. Bok Tu Neok was wielding the black jade blade. One of the four great famed swords. In less than three exchanges his opponent's weapon was seized. Now with no way out he was like a lamb waiting for slaughter. Next was a loud crash. The blocking arm chopped in two. Sensing Bok Tu Neok had no intention of letting him live. The opponent decided to risk it all. By burning his vitality. He erupted his latent might. Body doubling in size but Bok Tu Neok remained calm. Furiously slashing his blade stepping forward. He struck heaven opening earth splitting at the foe's shoulder. About to continue attacking he was suddenly immobilized. Turns out the other had awaited this chance. A terrifying energy amassed in his right hand. Sensing the time had come he unleashed the Nine Seals palm of Nine Seals sect. Bok Tu Neok was shocked a truly top-notch expert. But heaven burst the antidote along with the poison. Celestial seal palm helped nullify the fierce blow. A loud explosion rang out the opponent sent flying far away. Though a second flow master. Only a wisp of life remained. Bok Tu Neok had no choice but to use a fire talisman. Sending him away from this world. Luckily the precious pouch automatically fell into his hands. Earlier he had incinerated the zombie to ashes with soul fire art. 
After the battle Bok Tu Neok approached Elder Deech's corpse to search it. After combing the battlefield, everything was pristine like before. Bok Tu Neok prepared to leave when he suddenly heard odd noises. Using his divine sight he spotted limping Yang Sek disciples, led by Grand Elder Tu Trong Zan. To avoid unnecessary conflict, Bok Tu Neok quietly slipped away. But unexpectedly Elder Kun Van appeared. Blocking his path his presence here showed the Nine Seals sect incompetence also came. But Bok Tu Neok didn't care about them. He only thought of the precious pouch on the zombie's body. Didn't expect Elder Kun Van to move swift as lightning. Even with all his might Bok Tu Neok couldn't catch up. Forced to summon specters from the Soul Gathering Banner. Using 100 meters per second speed to fly up. Thanks to Keen Sense's Elder Kun Van detected the danger. Turning back to unleash Dragon Soaring Strike. But the specters couldn't react in time. Instantly annihilated more shocking. He could absorb spirit energy from specters to boost his might. Bok Tu Neok recognized a rare chance. Promptly unsheathing Lucid Sword. The pouch seemed very important to the zombie. He was determined to protect it with his life. The silver blade lashed out followed by a loud crash as Elder Kun Van fell. Bok Tu Neok ordered the female specter to take the pouch. Leaving the groaning zombie on the ground. Now the treasure was in hand. The world was his Bok Tu Neok prepared to leave this perilous place. But the zombie was truly enraged now. It roared furiously as a horrifying power erupted from within. Bok Tu Neok frowned this fierce battle was now unavoidable. Bok Tu Neok leapt up with lightning speed. Summoning heavenly mountain ice saber talismans. Rows of icy daggers shot out. Raining down on the zombie like pouring rain. It howled painfully but Bok Tu Neok didn't dare be complacent. To completely destroy this monster. Bok Tu Neok decided to hide no more. Using lightning transformation talismans crackling thunder rang out. The sky started to darken while the zombie struggled to withstand it. Bok Tu Nyak's lightning art was ready. A colossal lightning bolt struck down on the zombie's head. Didn't expect it to block the lethal blow with its bare hands. Bok Tu Nyak was undaunted. Determined to keep attacking the zombie's body seemed unable to endure. Wounds all over starting to bleed. Though the lightning was effective its might was still limited. To maximize the lightning art's power. Bok Tu Nyak needed to expend more spirit force. But at his current true Chi 7th layer realm. Had be exhausted attacking again. If he didn't kill it had end up slaughtered. With no other choice. Bok Tu Neok focused all his energy. A gigantic lightning bolt cleaved the heavens. Knowing it couldn't escape. The panicked zombie fled but it was too late. It was blasted into pieces right there. The terrifying might blasted a two meter deep crater. Causing such great commotion. Would surely attract others attention. He should nt linger here long Bok Tu Neok decided to leave. Let's shift the scene to Fu Lam village in Thien Lin district. After a long night's journey True Loy had arrived in the morning. The one who welcomed him was the Lam family steward. After explaining his trip's purpose. The steward invited him inside. Hearing this the steward's expression changed. Immediately taking True Loy to see the master. True to a large cultivator family of Thien Lin district. Even their garden kept many strange beasts. The Lam family elders were flirting with maid servants. Seeing a guest they hurriedly acted dignified. First time interacting with a cultivator. True Loy immediately knelt and bowed in greeting. Though plain looking. Beside him were innate realm guards. Indeed can't judge by appearances. After hearing the steward's account. The old man frowned you're surely from Deech sect. You personally took action right best you tell the truth. His sharp gaze emitted golden rays. Just meeting it could pierce everything. True Lois' spine tingled before his aura but still insisted I wouldn't dare deceive the master. I am absolutely certain Deech Sect has sent people to Go Jiang County area. True Loy explained Deech Sect's reason for joining the battle was to ally with Nine Seals Sect. Seizing Go Jiang County and its resources. After some thought the old man decided alright. I understand seems the Lam family has been silent for too long. Then he took out the divine travel artifact. Riding it flying away after knowing Deech Sect intervened in the battle. He immediately used the divine travel artifact. Flying over here right away wait a moment for me. I'll be right back he said his powerful aura amazed and impressed True Loy. 
Instead of waiting, he decided to seize the chance to consult the innate realm cultivator nearby. Though reaching innate realm, he still had to serve as attendant here. Making True Loy curious. To surpass innate realm, martial artists only had two ways one was relying on cultivation efforts to reach innate realm. But without aptitude and destiny, that was as unrealistic as a dream. Two was taking innate pills to break limits. This pill could only be found in large cultivator clans like the Lamb family. They'd have to trade 50 years of servitude for one pill. The value depended on each person. Finally, the steward reminded if stuck at first flow realm. Joining a major organization was a decent choice. The advice startled True Loy. Indeed, behind the glamour always lay much suffering. When he was about to ask more, Elder Lamb of the Lamb family returned. Elder Lamb guaranteed Deech Sect could no longer send anyone to step into Go Jiang County. He also promised no more interfering in Go Jiang County affairs. In exchange the Lamb family also wouldn't participate in the conflict there. Meanwhile in Bok Track Bok Tu Neok was training in his manor. To reach second flow master realm, he had to unblock eight other meridians. Each time cost 30,000 soul force points to hasten cultivation. He had to utilize the artifacts obtained. The storage pouch surely contained treasures. After channeling some spirit force into it, he was surprised to find it sealed. Not knowing how to open it the only way was using spirit. And aura to slowly erode the seal. Bak Tu Neok had exhausted three spirit arts in half an hour. The seal started loosening a bit. Just as he prepared to intensify might. The transmission device suddenly rang. On the other end was Elder Go didn't expect he was still alive. Hearing the familiar voice, Elder Go was extremely moved. Apart from Bak Tu Neok only he Elder Ta and senior disciple Trong survived and returned. The rest had all perished Bak Tu Neok couldn't believe his ears. His Theat Nun Tu was slain by a ninth layer inner force cultivator from Deech sect with one blow. Luckily Elder Ta summoned a god to save her. Otherwise both would have died. In exchange Deech Sect also suffered heavy losses being ambushed by zombie elder Kun Van and limping Yang Sect members. The reason for the mishap was the betrayal of Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion Madam and Tu Bang Hung. Elder Go would take over their assets and give Bok Tu Neok a share. Due to the massive damage the plan to establish an alchemy sect would probably be postponed. He also decided to go into seclusion and cultivate. Hoping to reach Genesis Realm. If he failed he'd have to pay with his life. The outcome of this seclusion was truly hard to predict. Three days later a stranger brought many assets to Bok Tu Nyak's manor some houses in Go Jiang County. Over 20 shops 700 acres of farmland outside town. And a large estate down south altogether. The value was nearly 100,000 tails. Didn't expect Elder Go to be so generous. But the joy wasn't over when another guest arrived. In these chaotic times. An uninvited guest surely didn't bring good news. At first glance Bok Tu Neok was startled to recognize Elder Neep whom he hadn't seen in a while. He invited Bok Tu Neok to Limping Yang sect urgently. To avoid delays Elder Neep didn't explain much. Not until arriving at Limping Yang sect headquarters. The main hall was already packed when Bok Tu Neok got there. Seeing everyone had gathered. Jiang Dao explained the meeting's purpose due to the recent constant conflicts with Nine Seal Sect. He decided to soon conclude the outstanding disciples' assessment. Whoever contributed the most points to the sect would become the Lamb family's attendant. He looked to records keeper beside Tell Me. Who has the highest contribution points? The young masters immediately concentrated. Only Bok Tu Neok remained aloof. According to the sect's contribution rankings third place was to Q Lin with 178 points. Second place was Go Tuan Hao with 182 points. First place was Bok Tu Neok with 200 points. Everyone unanimously agreed without objection. Bok Wei had won the Lam family attendant position with the highest points. Though surprised by his own result he had contributed his utmost during this time. Jiang Dao quickly congratulated Bok Tu Neok on becoming the Lam family's attendant. The elders also agreed, just hoping he wouldn't forget his roots amid glory and wealth. But contrary to everyone's joy, Bok Tu Neok was very solemn. After careful thought he decided to decline the position. Jiang Dao couldn't believe his ears. His two friends beside were also extremely surprised. 
This was a rare chance to advance, yet he refused it. Many officials hardly got such a chance, though not knowing the meaning behind the refusal. Bak Tu Niok knew he wouldn't regret this decision. The other elders were secretly delighted since the chance would go to their disciples. Jiang Dao had no choice but to give the attendant position to someone else but promised he could fulfill one request from Bak Tu Niok if within his ability. Bak Tu Niok pondered there was no reason for such generosity. However, he had recently heard of a body refinement technique that could make one's skin as hard as iron. Impervious to blades. Legend said at the pinnacle one could attain an indestructible body. But Jiang Dao spent 20 years just reaching the seventh layer. Still very far from the pinnacle ninth layer, still. Bak Tu Niok decided to trade for the techniques manual. This pleased Jiang Dao very much. To gain acknowledgement from Elder Li of White Villa and Elder Bui of Enlightenment Pavilion. He figured Bak Tu Niok wouldn't be an ungrateful traitor. As Bak Tu Niok prepared to thank him, suddenly a familiar footstep sounded. It was True Loi sect leader True had returned to report completing his task. To avoid getting embroiled in conflicts between sects, Bak Tu Niok decided to leave. In the following days he persevered practicing the new technique Golden Bell Cover. Opening all body meridians required three days. If not for his current might at Inner Force Realm ITD take half a month. Now the pouch's seal had nearly vanished. During his break Bak Tu Niok continued exploring the pouch. Unexpectedly the seal was broken inside were some gold paper talismans resembling those he had collected before. Around 12 sheets though the images were unclear. They were surely a set he decided to go to the archives pavilion in the sect to investigate further clues. Apart from the gold paper were seven artifacts and five bronze jade tablets. Thirteen formation flags the remainder were medicinal herbs. Precious gems for artifact crafting what excited him most was the mountain river seal artifact. The five bronze jade tablets were also rare artifacts. Among them were ascending cloud fist. Five elements original energy skill. Formations true earth core fire. Ascending Cloud Fist was a cultivation technique like Life Gate Divine Art. Able to cultivate to Genesis Realm's peak. While Five Elements original energy greatly increased the odds of breaking through to Genesis Realm multiple times. Its effect surpassing breaking obstruction pill. Just as Bak Tu Niok was secretly delighted. The maid announced a guest it was his senior brother Duong Trian Phi. With a sorrowful expression according to him. Due to the conflict between the two major sects, the external situation had completely changed. Half of the three bandit gangs and four martial halls had been wiped out. Currently Limping Yang sect was sweeping the remaining remnants. A friend of senior brother Duong's in Hurricane Bandits was in danger. He hoped Bak Tu Niok could help save a life. Though Hurricane Bandits belonged to Nine Seals sect, as his senior's junior brother, Bak Tu Niok thought he should try to help unless the person was too powerful or had a special status. Seeing Bak Tu Niok hesitate Duong Trian Phi decided to be direct she was his childhood sweetheart. Now wife of deceased hurricane bandit chief Vong Kai Tiu. With her husband dead she was captured and detained. Duong Trian Phi had tried his best but couldn't rescue her. She might be exiled to the frigid Yen Hua region. Didn't realize senior brother Duong had such deep feelings. He said she was imprisoned in the Bronze Heart Institute of Enforcement Hall. Where Bak Tu Niok had conflicted before. Still perhaps Protector Vong Bang of Water Affairs Enforcement Hall could help. As long as there was hope Duong Trian Phi wouldn't give up. He immediately went to see Vong Bang. Of course not empty-handed. Bak Tu Niok accompanied Duong Trian Phi bringing gifts on a visit. Vong Bang was delighted to see Bak Tu Niok. Thinking he had come to hand over the black jade blade. Bak Tu Niok shook his head the blade protected his life. How could he casually give it away? The reason for my visit today is actually a matter I hope you can assist with. Hearing this Vong Bang immediately turned to leave declining the guests. But Bak Tu Niok had prepared gifts. He said though the long blade on me. Couldn't be given over to you. But there is a long blade. I am sure you'll be interested. Opening at Vong Bang was shocked to see the legendary splitting cloud blade the treasured sidearm of Nine Seals sect sect leader Duong Qian. Turns out Bak Tu Niok had just handed over splitting cloud blade. The blade always by the Nine Seals elder's side missing for a month now. That confirmed the rumors of his death were true. 
Afraid of misunderstanding, Bok Tu Niok explained he had obtained it by chance. Vong Bang didn't inquire further. After hearing Bok Tu Niok's request, he agreed to help with his ties to Enforcement Hall's protector Trang. Releasing the person would be easy. The three promptly went to Bronze Heart Institute. Two limping Yang disciples were guarding the door. Seeing Duong Tri and Phi, they cursed. Vong Bang spoke up I am Vong Bang. Protector of Water Affairs Hall beside me. Is Bok Tu Niok new protector of Internal Affairs Hall? Due to a minor misunderstanding, our friend is locked in Bronze Heart Institute. I hope both brothers can show restraint first. And let us bring our friend out. My rapport with Protector Trang isn't bad either. If he was here, I'd tell him about this small matter. Old Trang would surely agree to help. Hearing his account, the two disciples felt regret, saying as long as not an important figure they could decide themselves to release her. Hearing this, Duong Trian Phi promptly said her name was True Nyan Nhi. The disciples' attitude immediately shifted. Faces fierce Duong had a bad premonition. Didn't know what had happened to True Nyan Nhi. In panic, Duong Trian Phi rushed into the prison cell unthinkingly. Everyone was stunned by this rash action. This was enforcement hall they wouldn't forgive this offense. Vong Bang was also surprised by the completely unexpected development. Before he could react noisy sounds came from the prison cell. Two people were locked in fierce struggle. Duong Trian Phi clearly had the upper hand when his opponent collapsed after one move. If it continued someone would surely die. Vong Bang hurriedly rushed over to intervene. Must not let murder happen. Shouts rang out right after. Other disciples swarmed over surrounding the group. Vong Bang yelled halt. Only now did Duong Trian Phi gradually calm down. Now there was no other choice. He rushed into the cell and brought out an injured woman. The warden pointed at Vong Bang's nose cursing Protector Vong. What are you all thinking robbing the enforcement grounds? Knowing he was wrong Vong Bang kept apologizing. But the warden was still furious. Yelling Protector Vong enough pretense. Make amends or get lost from their earlier actions. There was reason to suspect Duong Tri and Phi's ties to the gangs. Seeing the other unwilling to compromise, Vong Bang grew angry, but the warden also didn't back down, insisting no one was leaving alive today. Bok Tu Niok couldn't endure this arrogance, such big talk. Today we must take our friend out. Let's see if you can stop us. The warden angrily slashed his weapon at Bok Tu Niok, but as a hero of the Zhang Hu, Bok Tu Niok wasn't afraid of such mediocre moves. He used one word penetration fist. The warden immediately collapsed, nearly dying on the spot seeing their boss felled in one move. The other disciples didn't dare act rashly. The three escorted True Nyan Nhi away under everyone's shocked gazes. Vong Bang doubted Bok Tu Niok's might. Because such a vicious inner force attack yet he could still withstand it. But Bok Tu Niok was used to others' doubts. He tactfully dispelled Vong Bang's suspicions. Though succeeding in the rescue there would surely be trouble later. Because the warden relied on Enforcement Hall's elder who had ruled for over 20 years. While discussing the next plan, a distress flare suddenly fired into the sky from Limping Yang sect. Following the red smoke's direction something happened in Water Affairs Hall's jurisdiction. After bidding them farewell Vong Bang promptly went to the scene. Duong Trian Phi also had to quickly leave with True Nyan Nhi. As time passed the conflict between Limping Yang sect and Nine Seals sect escalated. Nine Seals sect kept attacking Go Jiang Harbor and assassinating Limping Yang members. Bok Tu Niok was ordered to investigate the Vo brothers' deaths. In Nine Seals sect's territory. Could be ambushed anytime. Just arriving at the village two filthy ragged beggars charged out the two shred their already tattered clothes running out the village gate. The stench made the three turn away. But they immediately showed their true selves. Catching the two disciples completely off guard and unprepared. In the critical moment, Bok Tu Niok stepped in to help. A loud crash sounded. Two heads severed from necks the two disciples hurriedly thanked Bok Tu Niok. The three promptly went to the scene. Maximum alertness en route. After dealing with the fake beggars at the village gate, they had just set off when a group claiming to be limping young disciples approached. They asked for names and identity. Bok Tu Niok politely replied this humble one is Bok Tu Niok protector of internal affairs hall. Hearing this the group lowered their guard. Then they went on introducing themselves. 
saying they had killed three Nine Seals disciples today. The two disciples bragged Bak Tu Niak had dispatched two assassins disguised as beggars with one move. Hearing the resounding fame, the group wanted to take their leave, but Bak Tu Niak stopped them, seeing through their schemes. The two disciples were even more confused, not understanding what was happening. They thought they could fool Bak Tu Niak, but their ill fitting clothes had exposed their false identities. Just that alone was proof they weren't limping young disciples. Seeing their cover blown, the fat one yelled, Brothers, our covers blown kill them. They drew weapons charging over. But Bak Tu Niak had experienced endless situations. He sneered today, meeting me spells your misfortune. Didn't expect good friends of past days to be spies. The man under Bak Tu Niak was determined to uproot the traitor. But the opponent was too strong. He was knocked flying before even drawing his sword. The spy seized the chance to attack. The blade about to slash his face. Bak Tu Niak appeared at the crucial moment, still refusing to surrender. With one peerless strike, the spy was sliced in half on the spot. Next, Bak Tu Niak rushed before the last one good blade work. Pity it seems rather impractical. Bak Tu Niak could only sneer at those sloppy moves. With one eight cent sword strike, the spy collapsed. The two disciples beside were shocked, speechless. Seeing his close friend killed, the fat one was furious but knew he was no match. Despite innate might and extreme inner force, one sword stroke had forced him to retreat. Still young and impulsive, running was the wisest of the 36 stratagems against one of the four great famed blades and Bak Tu Nyak's extraordinary power, he couldn't compete. The fat one fled desperately but was unexpectedly stabbed through the chest from behind. It was Water Affairs Hall's protector Vong Bang. Didn't expect the fat one to still be easily defeated by Bak Tu Nyak. Bak Tu Nyak casually denied it, saying it was all thanks to luck. Vong Bang revealed he had gotten secret intel. And happening by invited Bak Tu Nyak along. This was a heaven sent chance that couldn't be missed. Hearing the explanation, the two disciples' eyes lit up. With Bak Tu Nyak, the raid would surely succeed. They swiftly set off target the enemy's manor. Though in enemy lands, not a soul was seen. Bak Tu Nyak and Vong Bang both felt it was abnormal. From battle experience, this was usually the calm before the storm. Vong Bang yelled, Stop hiding. Come out and face us like men. Hearing no response, he threw a kick. Immediately, several figures emerged, seizing the chance to attack. Kill the brothers, they were determined to fight to the end. But the limping Yang disciples weren't easy pickings either. A fierce battle was about to erupt. But they swarmed Bak Tu Niak like flies. Heaven has many paths you don't take. Hell has no road yet you head there. Time to show them your might. Bak Tu Niak leapt up. Using the sect's eight cent sword technique. Didn't expect the foe to also withstand a vicious blow. He must have an extraordinary weapon. Otherwise, would have been sliced by Bak Tu Niak long ago. But before absolute might, all resistance was futile. A terrifying energy surged from Bak Tu Niak. As if the Grim Reaper descended, the foe broke out in cold sweat. Unable to believe this was real. A master yet dominated by an inner force realm boy since when? If this spread, how could he still show his face next came a loud bang? He vomited fresh blood, Bak Tu Niak sneered, What can't be done? Just as he finished, beside came loud crashes. It was Vong Bang locked in fierce combat. The rear disciple's situation grew dire. Seeing this, the Nine Seals disciple immediately struck the limping Yang disciple's shoulder. The blow caused immense pain, nearly reducing him to piteous wails, but the foe gave no respite. Continuing to attack with Nine Seals Palm. In the life or death moment, Bak Tu Niak appeared just in time. He drew bright light sword shooting forward at lightning speed. Bright light sword rocketed towards the enemy dizzyingly fast like a laser beam. Clearly, he was no easy foe, easily evading the lethal slash. From combat experience, Bak Tu Niak knew at close range the whip was useless. The opponent also realized this weakness, continuously retreating while counter attacking. But as Bak Tu Niak predicted, he quickly grabbed the whip and both struggled fiercely. A fierce interior battle of strength ensued, but victory and defeat were still undetermined. The opponent knitted his brows in alarmed expression, sensing Bak Tu Niak's slightly superior might. He decided to flee, but suddenly a piercing pain came from his chest. Ambushed from behind by a disciple. Suddenly a loud bang sounded. 
It was Vong Bang felling the enemy chief with a kick. Nine seals sect remnants still want to resist. Seeing their leader's miserable defeat the disciples fled in panic. Suddenly an unfamiliar figure appeared. One slap sending the disciple flying afar. It was Nine Seals Sect's Elder Quach Van Peek Master Tier Expert. Who had lost to Elder Neep in a previous duel. Didn't expect he had recovered so quickly. Hearing Neep Van how Quach Van went mad. Saying if the opponent hadn't reached three streams tier he couldn't have been defeated. Seeing this Vong Bang grew worried. With their current strength they couldn't compete. The only chance was trying to scatter and flee. But Bok Tu Neok remained calm. He spoke in a firm tone. Now Bok Tu Neok decided to hide no more. He undid the limiters on his face. A terrifying energy surged forth. Quach Van was stunned Bok Tu Nyak's aura was at least second stream middle stage. Vong Bang behind goggled in shock. My dad only recently reached three streams middle stage. Didn't expect this brat to conceal his true strength so much. Victory had shifted to their side. Bok Tu Neok advanced threateningly I intended to mingle with you all with an ordinary identity. But now I've revealed my hand. Quach Van fled in terror shouting for help. HMPH today ill spare your worthless lives. Seeing their leader flee. The disciples swarmed to massacre the Nine Seals remnants. Bok Tu Neok panted heavily. Exhausted like a deflated balloon. Everyone was still dumbfounded by his might. In the sect only four had reached that level. But Bok Tu Neok shook his head you really think I am at second stream realm. Then he revealed everything was just an illusion from him reversing his inner energy flow to increase his aura five times briefly. Hearing this the two breathed a sigh of relief. Hurrying to retreat from the dangerous spot. But suddenly crazed laughter sounded behind them. Looking back Quach Van had returned. Laughing mockingly ha 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 so that's how it was. Fooled for the first time he nearly lost face. Quach Van leapt over shouting the mighty can't endure humiliation. Much less being fooled daring to trick me will cost you. The sudden action left everyone frightened stiff. Only Bok Tu Neok was calm. He had prepared accordingly next. He reached into his chest rummaging a while before pulling out a mysterious talisman. Bok Tu Neok exerted himself flinging it skyward at lightning speed. Instantly dark clouds gathered and thunder rumbled. Quach Van was stunned by the talisman's terrifying power. Without hesitation he turned to flee. But the lightning was swifter than thunder's roar. Quach Van was immediately struck into flying ash. The lightning summoning talisman was a fearsome weapon. Tearing open a huge crater in the ground. Before leaving Bok Tu Neok explained it was a traditional treasure he had kept for years. Didn't expect to have to use it all here. Hearing this Vong Bang was extremely grateful and decided to gift Bok Tu Neok 70 of the spoils. Bok Tu Neok was secretly delighted but still suggested splitting it evenly for fairness. The next morning everyone brought Bok Tu Neok a great many spoils. Trading one talisman for all this. Truly too generous but while laughing happily. The communication device on the table suddenly rang. Looking at the device, it was not just cracked but also faded. Losing all luster according to legend. Artifacts bear the spiritual imprint of their owner. This sudden shattering meant Grandmaster NGO's lifespan had run out. Truly unexpected that even adept cultivators like him couldn't transcend Genesis Realm. In chaotic times strength was always the best assurance. Bok Tu Neok didn't know with the soul system support. If he could surpass it. Without hesitation Bok Tu Neok spent 60,000 soul points to upgrade his body refining skill set and golden bell shield introductory skills. Breakthrough at the first layer after a night's relentless cultivation. He finally attained second stream realm. With his current strength even Quach Van or the Nine Seals sect leader would be fearful. The next morning after washing up. Bok Tu Neok went to the Limping Yang sect headquarters. As he had other important business. Yesterday the elders and grandmasters had wiped out all nine seals sect influence within Gojiang County. Now only Jade Flower Mountain remained as their foothold. The Limping Yang disciples were all eager to attack. Seizing the momentum of victory to completely annihilate nine seals sect. But Jiang Dao fearing pointless casualties had sent a death duel invitation to nine seals sect leader Ta Tan Duang. Before open conflict erupted Bok Tu Neok made use of the time to research in the archives pavilion. 
Looking through the classifications he discovered much information related to the twelve gold papers. According to records only when all twelve were gathered would the treasure hoard's location appear. The treasure was called Immortal Marshal the place where Immortal Marshal sect had buried their hoard 300 years ago. Legend said Immortal Marshal sect was founded 800 years ago. The patriarch was combined cultivation Immortal Marshal Wa Shwat Tran titled Shwat Tran the man. With seven disciples who were all innate martial artists. Creating peerless might for Immortal Marshal sect. But it was destroyed in one night due to infighting. Presently Bach Tu Niok only had seven pages. Finding all twelve was nearly impossible. When at a dead end he suddenly had a strange idea. Without hesitation Bach Tu Niok promptly returned to Bach Track. If this plan succeeded. With this method the twelve gold papers would soon be in his hands. The tracking art passed on by Tu Bang Hung could locate objects of the same origin. Just upgrading it to introductory level. Bach Tu Niok would be able to sense the remaining page's locations. After a period of concentration Bach Tu Niok truly felt some of their presences. But to search further required elevating this art. That was easy as pie for him. He spent 5,315 soul points to attain the consummate stage. This time the search range expanded to 108,000 li. Bach Tu Niok closed his eyes focusing his aura. Immediately sensing two pages together in one spot. Based on the direction and distance. They were at the Limping Yang sect headquarters. Thanks to the tracking art Bach Tu Niok pinpointed the two gold papers location. Without hesitation he promptly went to the Limping Yang sect headquarters. With his internal affairs hall protector status. The disciples led him to the valuables vault in the rear. Taking them was simple just trading contribution points. But to conceal things Bach Tu Niok deliberately chose. To pretend having difficulty before finally finding the two pages. Then he feigned ignorance. Asking them to explain the information. The clerk said this might just be a legend from hundreds of years ago. Unsure if real or not rather than wasting contribution points on such vague things. Best to exchange them for origin restoring pills to increase cultivation. Bach Tu Niok thanked him for the sound advice. Bach Tu Niok said he was very curious about this mysterious treasure hoard. Presently there were nine pages just lacking three more. He continued using the tracking art and found one page in the Go Jiang County's government office. Obtaining it from officials' hands wouldn't be easy at all. Next Bach Tu Niok needed to pinpoint the last two pages' locations. These past days he had scoured all of Go Jiang County but found no clues beyond the government office. Only one place had high probability Jade Flower Mountain. The Nine Seals sect's main base. When Bak Tu Niok arrived. The Limping Yang disciples had the mountain surrounded. With his protector status his appearance was nothing suspicious. Bak Tu Niok used the tracking art and as expected. The remaining two pages were in Nine Seals sect's hands. Now he needed to find a way to obtain them. Everything would be clear after tomorrow's major battle between the two sects. The next morning both sides beat war drums. Tense atmosphere blanketed the region. A earth-shaking heaven-shocking battle was about to erupt. The two opposing sides for hundreds of years. Now was the chance to resolve this feud. Judging by the formation's nine seals sect seemed very well prepared. Limping Yang sect's leader Jiang Dao finally appeared. Nine seals sect's leader leapt up. Laughing brother Jiang long time no see. Precisely three years and five months since our last duel. Without further ado he immediately used the ninth palm of nine seals palm infinite diamond. But Jiang Dao had been through endless battlefields. He disdained such mediocre moves. He directly countered with seventh form of heavenly saber meeting the blow head on. The two forces collided violently. The surrounding air exploding loudly. Nine seals sect's leader was shocked. Didn't expect Jiang Dao to have progressed so swiftly. If not for the heavenly heart jade meditation arm guards. He surely would have been defeated Jiang Dao smiled faintly. Truly different with superior equipment. Elder nine seals went mad yelling at the same time. He rained down the ninth palm of nine seals palm moving nine heavens. But before absolute might. All techniques were futile. As the gigantic palm was about to make contact. One heaven opening cleave sent him flying back thousands of miles. The limping young disciples were excited about to kneel in awe. But Bak Tu Niok suddenly frowned. Sensing someone approaching rapidly. 
Without hesitation he used the tracking art and realized it was that nine refinement realm elder who had appeared in the misty ravine half a month ago. Analyzing it his reason for appearing this time was surely targeting Jiang Dao. With first class might he was no match for Jiang Dao. Though gravely injured the nine seals sect leader still hadn't given up. Things between the two sects had reached life or death. He took out the ruthless pill dirty move. Tossing it straight at Jiang Dao's face. This was a dangerous assassination weapon. The slightest carelessness could cost a life. With so many Jiang Dao couldn't evade them all. In the life or death moment he activated golden bell shield to block. The enemy seized that opening to attack continuously. Everyone knew he favored ambush attacks so Jiang Dao had prepared accordingly. The enemy feared being struck even once would send him skyward. Nine seals sects leader called behind seniors quickly come save me. Just as Jiang Dao was about to deal the decisive blow. A sword unexpectedly flew over from behind. Finally the nine refinement realm elder appeared. He had been lying in ambush from the rear. Sword energy rushed to impale Jiang Dao through the chest. At the crucial moment Bok Tu Niok appeared flinging out a fire thunder pearl. A loud explosion thundering. The blade was blasted into fragments scattering in all directions. The old man was dumbfounded a fire thunder pearl. That is to say Dick and Gao originally died by your hand. Bok Tu Niok smiled faintly so it turned out the slain Taoist was his younger brother. Truly unexpected the Nine Seals bunch still hadn't changed their backstabbing ways. Determined to massacre them all. He raised his sword earlier upon seeing you. Chief Li already suspected you were a cultivator. Now it turns out he wasn't wrong at all Bok Tu Niok said I am both cultivator. And limping young disciple. But the old man gave no chance. Summoning heavenly saber seventh form to attack again. Though a war master before his heaven splitting seventh form. The elder could only struggle to defend. But how could mortal strength contend against immortal arts? The old mont's sword energy seemed to have endless might. Moreover his sword energy had reached the ethereal transformation stage. Bok Tu Niok felt the situation was critical. If this continued Jiang Dao would surely be defeated. Without hesitation he flung out five lightning summoning talismans. The number to call down lightning strikes the sky darkened. The crowd at the mountain foot stunned and shocked. Bok Tu Niok ordered a massive lightning bolt to tear through the dark clouds and strike the nine refinement elders head. But he was also prepared. Immediately taking out a spirit gathering azure radiance mat to block before him. Bok Tu Niok angrily ground his teeth. It seemed using thunder arts against a nine refinement master was slightly beyond him. Though unable to exert full power. Defeating this old codger wasn't difficult. Five talismans weren't enough keep going with 1020 until he couldn't withstand it. The old man was fearful never seen such a shameless brat. Talismans didn't need money. If he was truly defeated by it. How could he still show his face he flung all his fire thunder pearls then took advantage of that opening to flee. He angrily ground his teeth hating most those who pretended to comply when intending to defy. Without hesitation Bok Tu Niok spent 10,354 soul points bringing God's stunning art to consummate stage. Then combining it with fire thunder pearls. The total effect increased manifold. With an order the fire thunder pearls shot forth with God's stunning art and a loud bang sounded. The terrifying might knocked the old man to the ground. Indeed consummate stage God's stunning art was much stronger. If the spirit attribute was raised another level. The old codger would have been blasted from the start Bok Tu Niok seized the moment of the other's disorientation. To immediately attack a lightning bolt tore the heavens striking the old mon's brain directly. The once resounding fame of the nine refinement elder formally collapsed. Luckily the gold paper remained intact. Now only two were beyond reach. With the old mon's death the greater situation had shifted completely to limping yang sect. Under Jiang Dao's command. The limping Yang disciples swarmed up to annihilate Nine Seals sect. But Bok Tu Niok didn't care about Nine Seals sect's fate. His mind only focused on the final gold paper. Amidst the others pillaging, Bok Tu Niok slaughtered madly yet kept observing the target's every move. Following the traces he was in a secret cave not far away. Bok Tu Niok closed in suddenly seeing the man running towards him. A Nine Seals disciple carrying a loot chest ran past only to be chopped down instantly by another. Bok Tu Niok calmly analyzed. 
Based on that earlier move he was only a third-rate master. He shouted don't block my way. I said don't block my way. With his might he disdained such mediocre moves. 118 linked Saber's move felled the man on the spot. Next came a loud bang. The chest shattered and a crystal sphere rolled out. Bach 2 Neok was stunned it was the rare material for forging divine swords. Just as he was about to seize it a familiar voice sounded from behind. Looking back it was Elder Kung. He said all spoils had to be registered. Including this spirit sphere iron core. Bach 2 Neok refused to back down. Laughing loudly if it truly needs recording. Of course I wouldn't conceal it as my own. Seeing his stubborn attitude Elder Kung raged insolent brat you dare defy me. Bok Tu Niok had just dealt with that nine seals guy. Now having to face this obstinate old codger. Didn't expect Bok Tu Niok to obtain the rare spirit sphere iron core. But midway Elder Kung appeared demanding to rob it. Or he would kill him seeing the old man was eager for reincarnation. Bok Tu Niok decided to lend a hand. As the blade was about to pierce his chest. He swiftly activated God's stunning art. When the old man awoke he realized Bok Tu Niok was behind him ready to attack. A loud bang sounded. Elder Kung collapsed on the spot. The Jade Flower Mountain trip was truly worthwhile. Bok Tu Niok not only got two more gold papers but also the Spirit Sphere Iron Core. And looted many treasures from the old Mont's corpse too. He gleefully brought the spoils back to Bok Track. But unexpectedly met a limping Yang disciple at the mountain foot. He said Jiang Dao had summoned him to headquarters immediately. Bok Tu Niok promptly obeyed. Upon arriving at the council hall all the limping Yang leaders had already gathered in full force. Bok Tu Niok stepped forward bowing in greeting. In fact Jiang Dao's reason for summoning was to win him over by promotion and raise. But Bok Tu Niok had no interest in fame or gain. He intended to leave Go Jiang to seek greater opportunities. Which shocked everyone. Jiang Dao was unwilling to lose such talent. So offered that if he stayed he would be appointed deputy sect leader. Though not top rank enough to enjoy wealth and nobility. But Bok Tu Niok firmly declined. He would embark on a long journey. Jiang Dao could only accept the wide sea where fish frolic freely. The open sky where birds soar unhindered with Bok Tu Niok's might. Go Jiang was far too small however. He still hoped he would leave behind a helping hand. After all his parents still lived in Go Jiang. With this position it could help protect them. Ensure his parents safety Bok Tu Niok reluctantly accepted seeing it as a good opportunity too. Now just one word and the death warrant for senior brother Duong Trian Phi could be rescinded. In the battle with Nine Seals sect. He had obtained many treasures. Time to research them 6 layers green radiant swordplay weaponry rank 66 forbidden. Spirit Gathering Azure Radiance Mat Rank 68 Forbidden Defensive Weaponry. Spirit Tool Rank 45 Forbidden. One Block of Spirit Sphere Iron Core 750 Caddies Heavy. One Forbidden Record of Neighboring Mountains and Rivers Around Go Jiang County. Also Many Secret Martial Arts Manuals. Especially the Two Mysterious Gold Papers. Now only lacking the final page besides seizing by force. He couldn't obtain it from the officials. To ensure success Bok Tu Niok needed to increase his strength. Without hesitation he raised life seizing divine art to level 8. Then brought high tide young swordplay to consummate level. After a night of ceaseless cultivation. All Bok Tu Niok's arts and martial skills strengthened. With his current might he could easily ransack the government office. But just then while dozing. Chief Li and Elder Bui suddenly came visiting. Having heard of Bok Tu Niok's promotion they came to congratulate. The mountain ravine accident made many Taoists worried. Fearing the convention for exchanging immortal arts would cease. Grandmaster Ngo's death was truly unfortunate. But they were more concerned with the thunder talisman on Bok Tu Niok. The flower mountain battle made the might of his lightning transform talisman spread everywhere. Li was eager to learn from it. Bok Tu Niok had seen through their schemes. Initially he intended to ask their help obtaining the final page. But now they knew of it. Surely they had other intentions he decided to keep feigning ignorance. Saying this talisman was just a fortunate coincidence. Wanting to refine one like this with his current ability. Would take at least another 2030 years. Hearing this Li was secretly delighted and requested Bok Tu Niok sell him one. Bok Tu Niok naturally agreed to the sale. 
After a period of deep discussion, the two left satisfied as soon as they departed. Duong Trian Phi and Vong Bang promptly arrived. The three close friends went out partying and drinking freely. Bok Tu Niok took the chance to ask about the government office's news. As a knowledgeable person, senior brother Duong recounted five years ago, a first class expert broke in to assassinate the prefect. But the next day, his corpse was hung in Go Gate Square. Rumor said when he died, he encountered a ghost in the prison. Vong Bang related the government office gathered top martial talent. There was an expert named Duong Chan permanently stationed there, reputedly even stronger than Jiang Dao. Moreover, Transcension Pavilion was also near the government office. The two forces combined formed a sturdy defense line. At Bok Tu Nyak's level, apart from the extremely rare innate, almost no one could rival him. But in a tiny place like Go Jiang, it was unlikely one of innate level existed. The dark windy night was the optimal time to act. Bok Tu Niok had prepared meticulously. Determined to break in and take the final gold paper, he summoned the wraith and charged in. But suddenly a loud bang sounded. The wraith destroyed by the magic formation. Bok Tu Niok had read a book describing how to break magic formations, either minimizing aura to the tiniest degree or channeling vast spiritual power into the formation surface. The two forces' interaction would gradually dissolve the formation, creating a path though confident in his stealth. Bok Tu Niok still chose the first method as precaution. After a period of focusing his strength, he successfully shattered the formation. But this was only the outer layer. He had to be vigilant at every inch. The wraith swiftly glided atop the rafters, startling the two guards below. Luckily, it was just a false alarm, they chatted, then resumed patrol. Bok Tu Niok was drenched in cold sweat. The guards were truly alert. He continued moving, guided by the tracking art. Always prepared to meet the expert Duong Chan. The plan was to take the paper, then immediately withdraw. Not revealing identity with hundred pace free roaming art. He could silently move atop the roof. But just as he arrived, loud sounds came from behind. Bok Tu Niok drew the Azure Radiant Sword. Leaping up in a flash. With his skill, he had the absolute advantage. He ordered the Azure Radiant Sword to stab forth. The other was stunned, realizing Bok Tu Niok was a cultivator. Though forced by circumstances, mediocre martial arts could hardly withstand him. Luckily, he occasionally practiced some defensive arts. But before true might, all resistance was futile, the sharp sword pierced his chest. Another strike would surely bring death. Didn't expect he was too slow to react to the decisive sword stroke. Now he had to meet the King of Hell. He truly couldn't resign himself, but in fact, Bok Tu Niok had no intention of killing him. Following the tracking arts guidance, the gold paper was right under the floor. Heaven helps the sincere. All efforts were rewarded. Finally, the twelve mysterious gold papers were complete. But while Bok Tu Niok still rejoiced, suddenly clamor arose outside. The troops acted truly swift as lightning, swiftly surrounding Bok Tu Niok. Facing the injured cultivator Duong Chan didn't dare be negligent. Bok Tu Niok immediately threatened to summon Heavenly Mountain Ice Path Art, forcing them to retreat if they wished to live. But danger still lurked. If this dragged on, his identity would surely be exposed. Fleeing was the best option, but just as he climbed atop the roof, he saw a formidable figure blocking the way. May I ask where Taoist friend comes from? Why have you trespassed on Transcension Pavilion? Bok Tu Niok was trapped by the formation. But one Tai Yang sword stroke shattered it. A transcension pavilion master. Knowing retreat would be difficult recognizing the timing. Bok Tu Niok ordered the ghost soldiers to withdraw. Though he had tried his utmost to maintain secrecy. Some losses were unavoidable. Luckily everything still went according to plan. With such heavy wounds without timely treatment. Duong Chan would soon perish the transcension man could only helplessly watch Bok Tu Nyak's retreat. Only upon rechecking did Duong Chan startle realizing the truth. How unfortunate the gold paper beneath the floor had vanished. Letting another risk death to seize it. Showed it possessed extraordinary allure. Meanwhile Bok Tu Nyak anxiously wanted to uncover its secret. Indeed when the twelve pages were combined. The treasure map appeared. A silver brilliance flared up. Mysterious energy surging. The pages on the table lifted up. Automatically joining into a magnificent landscape painting. Just as Bok Tu Niok guessed. 
It pointed to a location right in Gojiang County. But before he could react, the map automatically rolled up into a book. Ordinary on the outside but concealing secrets within. Legend said just injecting energy into it. The treasure location would appear. More surprising the light dot showed the treasure was near here. After defeating Duong Chan and the Transcension Grandmaster, Bok Tu Niok finally had all 12 gold papers to set off in search of the treasure. The next morning the government office ordered a full hunt for the brazen nighttime intruder. Meanwhile at Limping Yang sect headquarters, everyone discussed the incident spiritedly. One who could escape the government office. Moreover a cultivator even Limping Yang sect would find hard to confront. Jiang Dao instructed subordinates to gather information. To report immediately if any clues. At this time Bok Tu Niok sent for his parents to come to Bok Track. As he had important matters to discuss. The two were extremely surprised at their son's transformation. Even lifelong farming his parents couldn't buy such a huge mansion. Since Bok Wei would soon travel. He handed over all assets for his parents to manage. He even helped get his father the status of outer official for social standing. But his parents worried he was doing illegal deeds. The disciples promptly explained all wealth was earned legitimately. Bok Tu Niok wasn't surprised. He had long understood this sudden rich feeling. But now wasn't the time for detailed explanation. As a more pressing matter needed resolving. Before leaving Go Jiang County. He had to inform Jiang Dao first to avoid trouble for his family. Night fell Jiang Dao was practicing his swordplay in Limping Yang Sex courtyard. Abruptly an odd aura startled him. But it was just Bok Tu Niok come to bid farewell. Tonight he would set off out of concern for his parents. He hoped Jiang Dao would care for them. Protect them after he left Jiang Dao promised to ensure their safety at any cost. Bok Tu Niok left reassured Jiang Dao stared blankly as his figure gradually faded. That traceless aura movement could only be done by a cultivator. Turned out it really was him and the earlier gesture was also intentional to reveal might. Like carrying a warning implication suddenly. A gasping disciple ran over. Saying this was Deputy Chief Bok's gift. Jiang Dao was shocked seeing the secret arts and talismans inside. Just these alone were enough for Jiang Dao to willingly sacrifice his life. Truly a priceless gift three days later. Bok Tu Niok arrived at Dark Rock Mountain as the gold book guided. The immortal warrior treasure was hidden at a secluded spot here. This mountain's gloomy yin chi made it year-round snake infested. Just halfway up he encountered demonic grade poisonous snakes. Going deeper snake demons were certain. With his skill Bok Tu Niok decided to capitalize on collecting soul points. Just entering the valley. Hundreds of snakes swarmed forth attacking like a Hollywood zombie horror flick. But with superior might. Bok Tu Niok easily dealt with them. He swung his sword massacring them. But they clung like lice. Bok Tu Niok took out the mountains and rivers map summoning three disciples and the ghost army. Just when confident of winning a golden snake shot out biting sword attendants head off. Its power was surely peak demonic grade. Next it attacked again aimed at his puppy. Bok Tu Niok swiftly slashed severing the snake's tongue. At the same time he sensed a strange energy stirring. Due to the excessive poisonous snakes Dark Rock Mountain was virtually unexplored. But at Bok Tu Niok's level. Even demons were negligible. Analyzing the earlier energy. Perhaps it was near the immortal warrior treasure. And the deeper they went. The more frigid the chi became all signs indicated the snake king's formation related to the treasure. Bok Tu Niok continued penetrating. Poisonous snakes appearing everywhere along the way. In caves and even the pond. This was truly a snake paradise. Due to the puppy accidentally making noise. Awakening the sleeping snake swarm. They rushed out attacking like zombies spewing venom. As they eagerly sought rebirth Bok Tu Niok could only help fulfill their wish. He took out the prepared wind saber talisman. Razor sharp gusts slicing snake necks. Bok Tu Niok swung his sword determined to uproot them completely. Sweeping the creatures clean then. He used a military talisman the pained roar of the snake king echoing through the hills and woods. Having gathered ample spirit chi. Bok Tu Niok raised life seizing divine art to level 9 and death manners creation skill to consummate stage. Mysterious power surged forth. He felt relaxed and spiritually exhilarated. Now he was a second class master and level 9 mystic. 
no matter how strong demons no longer frightened him. Along with his own strength growth, his comrades had also become much stronger. In a flash they swept the poisonous snakes clean. However relying solely on superior inner force. Fighting the snake king would still be difficult. But for Bak Tu Niok it was extremely simple. He ordered the azure radiant sword to stab forth a loud bang sounding. The sword pierced the snake's head. Driving them into frenzy. Demons gathered from all around. Swiftly encircling Bak Tu Niok. Before he could react a fiery stream spewed directly at him. But with his skill. Bak Tu Niok wasn't flustered by such mediocre moves. Didn't expect they would become more ferocious. Wanting to swallow their prey however. Before Bak Tu Niok's absolute might. All resistance was futile just as he readied the decisive blow. A snake suddenly attacked from behind. But he was far too used to such petty tricks. With unstoppable momentum no element could hinder his advance. Only regret was they were all mediocre demons. Not one formidable now. After clearing the outer ring, he would find their leader. Though the cave was fraught with danger, it prevented the demons from escaping. Upon entering Bak Tu Niok saw a winged snake. Truly a bizarre creature, but he still wasn't moved. He ordered the azure radiant sword to stab forth the snake's agonized wails echoing through the hills and woods. After dealing with the small fry, three more snakes appeared continuing the fight. Bak Tu Niok truly didn't expect they had thousand year cultivated icy venom. Nearly met danger but luckily before they could unleash the second volley he deployed the golden bell shield to block. He realized the poison had peerless efficacy. The golden shield alone was insufficient. He swiftly combined it with spirit light golden bell shield into an absolute barrier. Allowing him to freely discharge power within. After a bout of fierce attacks. All demons in the cave were annihilated. Suddenly a vicious aura surged over. Startling Bak Tu Niok. A colossal snake demon king appeared. Making one tremble in fear moreover. It had already started morphing into a flood dragon. Just one step away from ascending to a higher level. He ordered the azure radiant sword to stab forth and teach it the might of a supreme ruler. But unexpectedly the snake made a bizarre sound. Freezing the sword right there. Bak Tu Niok was shocked didn't expect it to have such an unexpected move. Before he could react its gaping mouth hurtled forth to swallow him whole. Luckily Bak Tu Niok timely used cloud soaring steps to swiftly retreat. But its sharp tail whipped over in a flash. If not for reflexively deploying the spirit light shield to block. He surely would have been smashed to bits now Bak Tu Niok didn't dare be complacent. Drawing his saber and charging up in a flash. Though slashing continuously he still couldn't sever the demonic snakeskin. He realized its scales could withstand innate physics. Moreover the freezing venom could even freeze him. What Bak Tu Niok found unbelievable was the venom could also freeze. But with his skill, he swiftly responded by deploying spirit net. Restraining the snake right there next. He took out the mountains and river seal obtained earlier from old Taoist Kone Van's pouch. Preparing to unleash the decisive blow. Bak Tu Niok flung the mountains and river seal aloft. The gigantic seal like Mount Taishan pressed down. He commanded the statue to crash down directly at the snake's tongue with lightning speed. Seeing one blow couldn't immediately defeat it. Bak Tu Niok prepared to unleash a second. The demonic snake spat out the demon core it had painstakingly cultivated. Finally shattered by the seal it too was then killed. After Bak Tu Niok checked his system repeatedly. He finally harvested over 600,000 new soul points. But calculating it the snakes he killed only numbered 14. Even if each gave 10,000 it still couldn't reach 600000. Seeing the snake eggs inside the cave shattered he tried smashing a few more. Indeed they were all converted into soul points. Thought in a short time reaching 100,000 would be very difficult. But now thinking again it wasn't that hard. Bak Tu Niok used spirit fire talismans to burn them to ashes for soul points. Just when about to reach 100,000 the system got busy upgrading again. Bak Tu Niok didn't want to waste the precious snake meat so put it all in his bag. Only regret was the excessive demonic snake meat couldn't all fit. Little black beside Bak Tu Niok from eating some of the demonic snake core was also about to evolve. After evolving it would probably adapt then be able to create magic like that snake king. Clever little black took the remaining cores stuffed them in his ears then brought them along. 
Bach 2 Neok then followed the map deeper finally reaching the stone door location. Inserting the 12 gold papers into the door's crevice allowed it to easily open. Inside was the immortal warrior. Though his body remained intact he was no longer alive. 